All right, I think you can hear me. Tell me if everything is okay. I'm gonna switch to that. And of course, of course, I didn't think about that. I am so stupid. Which means that my overlay is not showing the chat. <laughs> I'm incredibly, <laughs> I'm incredibly stupid. Incredibly stupid, but it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna put the music a bit lower. Welcome everyone, thank you so much for being with us today. My name is Mr. Elliptic, and I will be your host today on the Godot Engine channel. You're on stupid, you didn't think about it, that's all. Yes, yes. Um, we might, we might fix it. We might fix it, I don't know. I don't think we can, uh, but it's okay. It's okay. You know what? I might as well... I might as well do what? I might as well um, go into here and that way I can show you that. Okay, it's gonna be roughly the same. Are you walking? I don't know. Maybe you are. I always make this stupid joke, but you know about the two trains? When you're walking, uh, when, you, when you're sitting in a train and there's someone else, there's another train uh, departing. You feel like you're moving, but you're not. Maybe that's what's happening. You are moving and I'm not. So, welcome everyone. Uh, increment. <laughs> Unfortunately, or fortunately for me, uh, the treadmill is not connected to the internet. And especially not to Twitch. <laughs> it would be cool, but it would also be horrible. So, I don't think I want that. Uh, welcome everyone, I am pleased to be here today with you, um, this is going to be very cool. Why didn't, I didn't think about the chat, why? I mean, to my defense, for my defense, to my defense, I don't know, it's the first time I'm, I'm streaming on another channel. <sighs> and so a lot of things are broken, like my avatar overlay at the bottom, you know what, I think we can kill it. Um, I think we can kill it because it's not connecting to the to the channel. I hoped it would be able because I have a bot um, that would connect, but yeah, maybe it's on someone else. It usually works exactly. <laughs> we didn't do the chat. Okay, okay, Nat. No one asked for it. Okay, okay. I mean, it's cool. I I think it's cool for the for the vods though. Having the chat on the overlay can be cool for the VODs, depending on where people watch it or like they don't want to they don't want to have the chat also on screen. They want to have it directly on the, the video itself. Could be useful, but hey, it's not it's not a big deal. Next time, yeah, exactly, exactly. I think they should to be honest, I think they should do a better job of um, allowing people to stream on another channel, like with a better integration and not just have um and not just have like a stream key i think there should be a like a host system where you can use your you can use your own system but you the the video is going to be hosted on another channel it should be something like that um there is chat yes but it depends on where you watch it i guess and so imagine you re-upload that somewhere well, you don't have the chat anymore, so I don't know. I used to, I'm used to having the chat, but it's it's not a big deal. Um, welcome everyone. My name is Mr. Elliptic. I didn't do the full presentation. Uh, Victor uh, is my real name. I'm a French uh, indie game dev working in Godot. Um, I've been uh, working with Godot for about four years now, maybe a bit more, but we'll go. Uh, I think we'll, we'll talk about that a bit if you want. I can. Uh, give you a quick story of uh, like what I was doing before, how I discovered Game Dev and Godot, and uh, what I worked on. I worked on Dashpong, and now I'm working on Hyperslice. You can find the games uh, using the comments in the chat. Uh, we can also talk about that if you want. And today, Baguette Team Assemble, exactly. And today we are going to prototype some stuff, which is always cool. Um, I used to do Prototype Fridays, the idea being, uh, when you start working with an engine and when you start working, it becomes difficult sometimes to take time to experiment with stuff, like try new things and, and things like that. And so, 
I think it's important to, to force yourself in a way to take time to prototype things. And so Prototype Fridays uh, was, was just about that, like trying new things. And it doesn't mean necessarily trying to make games. It can be trying a new art style. It can be um, trying shaders, particles, whatever. Just uh, looking at another engine, maybe even more. We don't know. But no, we don't do that in here. The rare alert happened. Uh, why is it rare? I didn't didn't see it. Uh, Furet, welcome. I can see some uh, some people that are usually with me on on in the chat. First time we saw it live. Really? What was it? I didn't see. Why do I have I have no information about what's going on? I have no information about what's going on. This is not great. Welcome, Aramis. How are you doing? It was a pleasure. Aramis was live yesterday. Um, he was doing the uh, um, he was doing the ranking of the 2D nodes. It was really fun. I participated a lot, um, and and I did my own ranking after that with, of course, Polygon 2D at the top and everything in the lowest tier because, of course, it has to be that way, right? Has to be that way. <laughs> I wouldn't do that, Thibaut. I wouldn't do that. This one, I guess. Okay. It was a blast. Ranking was hilarious. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, it was really fun yesterday. Today is going to be about prototyping, and it's something I really love. Prototyping is really fun. Uh, it's where you can explore stuff, you can try new things. You can also sometimes just speedrun a game dev, right? You don't have to necessarily do new things. Uh, you can try try ideas. Prototyping is an ess essential phase to see if something works or not. And uh, sometimes an idea is good, sometimes it's not. And today it might be the case. Today it might be that at the end of the stream we realize that the the idea is is not good. It it happens, right? Um, I think it's going to be cool though, and I'm going to tell you in just a second what I'm thinking about. Uh, but yeah, this is this is going to be what we're going to do. Um, I'm aiming for, I don't know, four hours, but it might be a bit more, might be a bit less, depending on what we do. But let's say four hours. And um, for those of you that are joining now, yes, I am walking, just in case. I want to make things clear. I'm not going to walk the whole time, but... Um, game dev is a very sedentary, is that how you say it? It's a very sedentary... Uh, uh, job, and so I'm trying to walk a bit more, and so having that little treadmill under my desk is is helping. Uh, I want to make coffee. Don't worry, you're not going to you're not going to uh, miss anything. This is just the beginning, so I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna try to talk a bit about myself. If you're interested, we can start by a a, a, a more a deeper intro, and not just hey, I'm Mr. Elliptic and and I'm a game dev. I can go into um, my story real quick if you want and if you have any questions please don't hesitate um, it can be it can be about game dev itself it can be about Godot it can be about whatever and it can also be about like being an indie game dev if you want like I we usually talk about pretty much everything on stream and there's no problem so you can do that I'm gonna live for the next hours no 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 I don't do that I don't do that anymore uh, using GDScript or C-Sharp today, so do you have a preference? GDScript, all the way. Uh, C-Sharp, I used C-Sharp in my life when I was forced. So now that I am my own boss and I have the choice, <laughs> I'm going to use GDScript for sure. Uh, honestly, I think I think both are fine. It's just that GDScript for me, it makes more sense because it's tightly integrated into the engine. And I love languages that are like easy to work with. And I think GDScript is exactly is doing exactly that like it, it's python but even even a bit better than python in a way like i like the fact that you can have the language be completely dynamic but also um but also completely like fully typed and stuff this is just great i enjoy it i do have a question how old how old were you in that on this peak we are going to talk about that um i'm going to send you the link i guess i can do that right if you have Twitter, you can go on that on that thread, um, on that tweet, sorry. I'm not going to reveal the answer to that question right now, because I want to give people another chance. Maybe some of you didn't see that. You can go on this tweet, and basically what you have to do is look at this photo, okay? This is going to be easier for you, because you are live, 
And thank you for joining the community. Uh, Voltex, I can't really see the... I don't have the events. I should put the events somewhere, because I can't, can't really see. Um, you have you have both both picks, okay? You have me, right there, 28 years old. And you have me. What is my age here, okay? You have to guess my age. So you go on the tweet, you guess my age. And if you have the right, the right answer, I give you a key for Dash Pong, my previous game, okay? And I guess we can do that at the end of the stream. That way we have time to... Uh, we let people guess a bit more. And uh, and we can do a reveal at the end, okay? Welcome, Woltex. I didn't sew your shirt. Where can buy the same one? Look at that. Can you see it? Is it reversed? Mr. Elliptic. You can't buy it, unfortunately for you. Because it's made... It's handmade by a friend. It was a gift for Christmas, I think. So unfortunately for you, mm, you can't do that. And honestly, I don't really want to do merch. Um, there are too many, too many clothes, clothes, clothes out there, and uh, I don't want to put more clothes out there, especially if it's branded with my name and stuff on it. I'm afraid people will simply throw them out at some point, and it'll just create more garbage. So I'm not really, I'm not really uh, doing that. So yeah, the photo was taken tomorrow. You're a time traveler. I won. You never know. That might be an answer. That might be an answer. So you have to guess my age, right? Um, you have to guess my age. Do you think I look the same? Do you think I look the same? I think I look pretty much the same, to be honest. I look pretty much the same, right? Basically, yeah. I have I have slightly more facial hair, but also I'm not like I shaved like two days ago or something. So it's uh, everything is the same. <laughs> Age 35. You look like 24 years old. 32. Right now, you think I look like that? Okay. Interesting. But you should not guess my age, my current age, because my current age is known. You should you should guess my age on that photo. Which is giving you a hint, maybe, that my age on this photo is not the same as my current age, which is 28. Uh, that's Natty, hello. But... Of course. But yeah. Uh, it's going to be fun. 15? 15, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I would be allowed to stream. No, maybe you are allowed to stream. On the photo, 23. I have no idea what your age is. Okay. Um, please go on the go on the tweet and reply to the tweet if you want a chance to win uh, to win Dash Pong. Um, I mean, you if, if you don't care, it's it's fine. But if you want a chance to win the to win a key. Um, you can you can put your your guess on the on the tweet, okay? Four team sent us the engine clearly. Godot is fourteen. Can you believe that? I think this is the perfect segue into how I discovered Godot four years ago. So Godot was ten years old when I when I discovered Godot, right? This is crazy. Fourteen. Has it been has it been open source for fourteen years, or was it like the creation of it? before it was even open source. I don't I don't have the full history uh, to be honest. It was seven or eight years ago I guess. okay yeah probably something like that. but it was open source from the start. 10 years open source was the anniversary we just celebrated. That's true. that's true. I don't think it was open source from the start. Uh, because it used to be it used to be a project for them, right? Like they used that to create games and then to create games for others. Arrest was a guess. Okay. So, um, as I said, my name is Mr. Elliptic. I discovered Godot about four years ago, at the end of 2019. Uh, I was a software engineer uh, working in embedded computing. Um, I was not doing exactly embedded computing. I was close to embedded, but also computer vision and things like that. My goal was to develop more towards computer vision and machine learning. Um, and so I was working as a software engineer and I had a habit of browsing Reddit. So I know it's weird. Some people don't, don't like browsing Reddit. But you can find cool stuff on Reddit, to be honest. Um, so 
I want I had a goal. I can I can go like that if you want. Yeah, I can go like that. Maybe it makes more sense. But I don't have the Godot alert right there. Maybe I should put it. Okay, give me a second. Uh Godot alert. Copy. And where is paste? Paste reference. Yes? Okay. Yeah, let's go like that. Why not? Um Today we clearly feel the weight of indie dev's workload before you seem cheerful. <laughs> I found Godot by browsing Reddit and syncing after that. See? So I was browsing uh, GitHub and GitHub, there's a page where uh, you have GitHub trending. So it's basically all of the um, all of the projects that are receiving a lot of stars during that day, but also week and stuff like that. And browsing Reddit was honestly super interesting. Uh, browsing GitHub, sorry, was super interesting because you see a ton of cool and interesting open source projects uh, there. And because they are, they're shown through their interest, it, it's surfacing a lot of cool tools that you might not be aware of. And so I see, I see Godot and I'm like, what is that? The, the, the name is, is weird. So I, I click on it and I see open source game engine and I'm like, okay, interesting. Uh, what is it? So I, I start looking at it and it, and it looks interesting. I'm like, okay, node based, there are scenes. That seems, that seems cool. Uh, before that, I've always been a gamer, but I I was not thinking about making games, to be honest. I always thought this was simply way too difficult, way too big, right? So I, I started looking at the, at, at the project and the documentation is one of the first thing I saw. And in the documentation, you have a nice little tutorial, which is your first go to game or something like that. And so I started reading that. When was that? Uh, end of 2019. So it was Godot 3.0 probably. I'm not exactly sure to be honest. I don't remember, but it was probably 3.0 or 3.1, something like that. And so I started looking at the documentation. I started reading the documentation, your first 2D game. So I, remember, I was, I was at work, so I didn't have Godot yet. I was just looking at the documentation. And it was basically saying, okay, uh, use a sprite, uh, then you put an image on the sprite, you put uh, a kinematic body, it was a kinematic body uh, before, and you assemble all of that and you create a player. And I don't even remember if it was a kinematic body, to be honest, but I was like, okay, that suddenly it seemed approachable. Whereas before, I was like, wow, making a game, it seems to be so complicated. And especially if you think about a AAA 3D game, it's like so much work. It's impossible to think about doing that yourself. But when you see that documentation on the Godot, on the Godot GitHub, you're like, okay, maybe I can actually, I can actually do something. And I think I was very lucky because at the same time, there was the GitHub Game Off 2019. So it's a game jam where you have to make a game, you have one month to make a game, I think, and it has to be open source. I was really into open source and stuff, and so I saw this game jam, and I was like, wow, okay, uh, it's one month long, so of course I was a beginner and I was very optimistic, so I was like, hey, one month seems to be a very, very long time. I'm pretty sure I can make something. Of course, when you start, one month is not a lot. Even when, you, when, when you're experienced, one month is not a lot. It depends what you want to do. And so I started. I started working uh, on a game. It was Flamer, and it's still available on my Itch page, actually. I, I remade it for a video a few months ago, or even maybe longer than that. Um, but so I made a game, and it worked. Like, I, I managed to make something. It was a platformer. The concept was not incredible, the idea was that your field of view would reduce over time and you had to move to constantly make your field of view bigger. My, my idea was not too stupid, it was I want to, I want to encourage people to speedrun and to go as fast as possible. So by reducing your field of view, if you don't move or if you don't jump or whatever, I'm forcing you to be constantly moving. The execution was not super, super good, but anyway. It, it doesn't it didn't really matter the, the goal was to make something and I made something uh, I was quite happy with that it was a pixel art game it was the first time and the last time I did a pixel art game I think uh, I did a pixel art game but I was using an HD canvas so it didn't make any sense 
it was messy, but I discovered so many things. I learned so many things and I think it got me hooked. Uh, finally, I had something that was super interesting. It like game dev is so many things at once. It's creative, but it's also very technical. Um, you can you you can do sounds, you can do music, you can do so many things. It was just I, I I loved it. I think I was finding some of what I I was having with my programming job, but in in a way more interesting way, right? Um, I love computer vision because basically you program something, and then you give the ability to the computer uh, to see something about the real world. And I thought this was amazing, right? I always loved when you program something and you see something happening on screen or in the real world. Um, I, I did a lot of robotics. The the drone that you can see behind me, how, where should I go? The drone that you can see behind me is made with an Arduino. I made it uh, simply because this is what I like. When you program something and you have a, a result, and game dev is a bit like that, right? In game dev, you program something and you have a result. You have visual results. You have feedback. You can and you can experience the what you're creating. I think that's what that's why I realized I really really enjoyed that. So fast forward, I continued working a bit. Um, I continued working on like on the side. I was working in the job. My job wasn't really super interesting. Um, it wasn't really what they promised, and so the pandemic arrived in 2020, I think. And I think a lot of people were reflecting on their lives at that moment. Uh, when you have the pandemic, you're like... You're confined, you're, you have to think about stuff a lot, right? At least you have the chance to think about stuff a lot. And so I was using that time to do much more game dev. Uh, sometimes I was not really working a lot and I was doing much more game dev. And so... At some point, I said, okay, I don't want that job anymore. I'm going to do freelance. So I did a bit of that uh, for a moment. And at the same time, I, I was doing more and more game dev. Um, and at some point, I just said, okay, I'm in a very lucky position. Uh, I was living with my mom at that time. Basically, I went back. I'm going to be fully transparent with you guys because I don't want you to... F I, want, I don't want you to have uh, the wrong image. Like, being an indie game dev is super difficult. And most of us are able to do it because we have a very um, special situation, right? In terms of money and different things. So I'm, I'm, I want to be fully honest with you. I was living with my mom because my goal before that was to work for a while to gather some money and then go and do a big trip around the world. I wanted to do a big bike, bike trip around the world. But then all of my plans changed. And so I was still living with my mom and I had to make a decision. Do I want to continue like that or do I want to find another job and do something else or maybe do more freelance and, and, and have my apartment or whatever? And so I, at that point I was more and more interested in game dev and I said, maybe this is the time, right? I was still very much a beginner, to be honest, but I said, you know what? I have this opportunity right now where I can live basically rent free with my mom. Um, maybe I should take that opportunity to try and start being an indie. And I realized this is not possible for most people. It's also probably not the best idea um, because you make a lot of mistakes at the beginning and it takes a lot of time. And so it might be better to just have a, have a job and then do other things on the side, like do your game dev on the side. And at some point when you're well, uh, when you're doing well with game dev, you might go full time, but anyway. It's so intuitive. I think we've learned subjects like math a lot better if it has more visual suits like programming. S exactly, uh, Thibaut. Um, I used to hate math in a way. I used to be really bad at math. Not that I'm good now, but math is just... It's a bunch of different tools that you need to use, right? So if you don't have anything specific to use them, it's not really interesting. And this is exactly how I felt during my studies. Uh, I have an engineering degree and most of the time it was just boring because it was it was very abstract and what I like is I have a problem I need to solve that problem what are the tools and what can I do and what can I learn to resolve that problem to fix that problem this is what this is what I want Yeah, interesting kangaroo using AI. Yeah, okay. We're not we're not probably not going to discuss AI too much. I mean, 
We can, but yeah. Where are you from? I'm from France. Yeah, thank you, uh, Jokovex. Uh, web programmer for 24 years now and decided to start programming game programming four years ago to work on a game I always wanted to do. I still my uh, job working as a web dev. I think it's I think it's a safe bet, uh, but also it's it's like everything in life. Giving advice on 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 life situations is impossible because we don't know your life situation, and it depends on you uh, how much risk you can take. And it's not just about willpower. Some people have more money than others. Some people have wealthy parents that can help them, or at least that can provide the shelter and stuff like that. Like that. So honestly. We can't talk about life situations too much, we can't give advice, but what we can do though is give what we what we did. We can we can talk about that, our experience. Trying to be trying to be transparent also, because if I only say, hey, I'm a full-time indie game dev and I don't tell you where I'm coming from, you might feel like it's easy in a way. But what you don't realize is what I did and the the, the luck I had to be able to do that. So anyway, uh, going back to what I was saying. Um, I went, I went full time. Basically, I tried to win full time, and so I started making a game. I made Dash Pong, my first game. It's it sold, but of course, it didn't sell enough to make enough money. Um, so I started also doing YouTube at the same time. Now I have two YouTube channels, uh, Mr. Ellipti Mr. Elliptic, and Mr. Elliptic, where I talk about game dev, and the other one I talk about Godot specific things, uh, tutorials, and things like that. Um, I stream on Twitch. I do course, I have a course on Juice, uh, which is making a bit of money also, and I do freelance. Just like many other game devs, to be honest. I think people don't necessarily realize how many studios and game devs are there are doing freelance, basically, or some sort of work to make sure that they have enough money. Because making games only, I, I thought from the beginning that it would never be enough. Um, so... My my idea was, okay, I'm going to... Don't put all of my eggs into one basket. I'm going to try to do different things. And hopefully, all of that is going to make enough money so that I can sustain myself. And that's the idea. The, the goal is just to, first of all, have enough money to survive, basically, right? Pay rent, pay pay for that, uh, pay for everything that I need to, to use and, and, and eat and whatever. And then we can think about something else. But the goal is try to find a sustainable way to have this lifestyle and continue to make games. That's the idea. And I would love to have a huge success like what we've seen recently, like Backpack Battles, uh, Balletro, uh, Man of Lords, whatever. There are plenty of incredible successes out there. But it's not being, it's not being realistic to think like that, I think. So I much prefer to think that I'm going to do small games, Maybe small, medium successes, and then if I need to, I'm going to find money uh, elsewhere. Maybe I, I need to read the chat a bit more. You perform well on video, socials at the same time, on the dev you project, you manage all front wells. Thank you so much, uh, Solo. I hear AI <laughs> gets the pitchfork. Yeah, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complex topic, right? Never really thought about going full-time indie dev, it's too risky for me, so I'm doing this in my spare time, and this is my way. I, I guess I totally understand that, and honestly, I recommend that for a lot of people. There's a lot of uh, luck when you are in the right situation and context. Stuff just happen. People achieving things don't realize. Exactly. Totally. Totally. How old are you? I'm 28 now. 28. Using AI to solve your problems in an idiotic way. How to develop. Using AI to get an idea of what you're missing as a tool. Hire people to actually do the thing is good. Just my two cents. Yeah. Why not? Why not? I, I can see that. I can see the, uh, the idea of using AI as a tool. I, c I can definitely see that. And we use AI as a tool pretty much every day without realizing it, for example. You're 28, good on you. <laughs> okay. Bellatro had an insane boom, totally deserved though. I, I totally agree with you. I enjoyed the game uh, a lot. I have a full-time job in AAA studio and do solo game dev on the side. That's really cool. You have, and uh, that's really cool. And you find time for that because you do, you do game dev and game dev, I guess. Maybe you're not doing game dev in AAA. AI is a tool. I do agree. Um, and so all of that, all of that from 20, the end of 2019, let's say, when I discovered Godot, um, is leading us to today, where I've been using Godot pretty much every day since then. And I have done tutorials, projects, games, videos, 
streams, whatever, a bunch of things. You can find all of them if you want. There are, there are a bunch of uh, comments that you can use. And, and yeah, it's leading us to today, where Godot is now organizing this creator takeover. And honestly, I want to, I want to uh, thank them a lot, especially Nat, for organizing this. Um, I don't know if you I don't know if you realize, but since Godot has like a real community manager, they were way more active on socials and and like everything, and and this wouldn't be possible without uh, without their work. And so this is incredible. Uh, I think Godot Godot is an amazing tool that probably is changing lives out there. To be honest, I don't think I would be here without Godot because I discovered game dev with Godot and. I've been loving it since since then. It's just it's just an amazing tool, and uh, and the community around it. Let's talk about that. The community around Godot is also incredible. I know that the I, I think the game dev community in general is is really cool. Like people are super super friendly. They're always always giving advice. Like very supportive. Uh, you know, people say that Twitter is 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 a bad place. To be honest, when you are in the Twitter game dev, most of the time, it's just fantastic. People are sharing cool stuff, being very really supportive. It's been a, it's been a, it's been amazing, and in the, the good old community, it's even even more true. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for uh, all of the contributors that are doing the work on the actual engine, and a special thanks to to Nat for for that. Uh, you look 21. Yeah, I, I, I think I, do. You, I look a bit young, apparently. But that's good, right? I guess. I'm 41 and I wish I'd gotten into game dev when I was in my 20s. Uh, now, just a hobby to try and learn new things. Um, but Godot makes it much easier than it was 20 years ago. I can totally imagine that. This is crazy how easy it is, in a way, right? Um, it's funny that you say that at, at 41, because when I started game dev, uh, few few... When you start game dev, you, you go online, you look at other people, you see other YouTubers maybe that are doing game dev, and you see that, be, that they've been doing game dev for like 10 years. They've been starting game dev at like 10, 13, whatever. So I was the same. I was thinking the same as you. And even today, I'm like, oh, I wish I started game dev at like, I don't know, 15 instead of playing Dofus. But at the same time, at the same time, you can't change the past. And, and I wouldn't be me without that. And I'm glad that I played a lot of games because I also think I've learned I've learned a ton of stuff. I had good times, and I and I met people. So it is what it is, right? Uh, but we can we can make stuff happen now. So it's cool that you're starting. It's cool that you're doing game dev now. If 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 it's something that you like, it made me go into uh, my first game jams. It was so fun. I want to do it again soon. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of people coming from. Uh, Unity mostly recently and we have a lot of people now that are using Godot as their primary tool and I think it's amazing I think people now realize even more that the engine can be really really powerful and also I guess the open source aspect is a huge bonus for everyone right you can see what's happening you have transparency um, you can you can commit you can actually do work if you need to you can report things maybe more Easily, like it's it's so cool. And look at Kebabscal. Kebabscal was on stream. Uh, Kebabscal was on stream on Wednesday. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw his stream. Kebabscal was working with Unity before and has switched to Godot a few months ago. I would say he's now working on Ocean Mirror, and 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 he's loving it. So yeah, Godot is is really really cool, and I'm and I'm really happy to be part of that community. Perfect engine for solo dev and small team? Yeah. Coming back to the way you replied to my comment about using Suno. Just have a baseline, huh? I make games. Okay. No, but I totally understand that. I'm, I'm not I'm not judging you or anything. Don't worry. I'm not judging you. Uh, I just know that AI can be a touchy subject, uh, especially in the creative uh, in the creative fields, right? I started with Game Maker Studio, had a learning curve with Godot, but I would not go back anymore. Interesting. Yeah, lots of people were starting with uh, Game Maker also. When did you start considering yourself doing game dev? Do you mean when you started working on a project, commercial project? That is interesting, I think. That's an interesting question. Um, to be honest, labels 
labels don't don't really mean a lot, right? So I think I started considering myself a game dev as soon as I was making games. And because the first thing I made was a game, I made a game for the uh, um, for the game jam, for the GitHub game off. I considered myself a game dev. Of course, I was a hobbyist. It was like the beginning. I was a very, very beginner game dev. And still nowadays, I, I know how to do stuff, but I still have like so many things to know. Like there are way better game devs out there. And very often, um, the best game devs, you, you don't necessarily hear about them because they just make their thing on their on their um on their uh, apartment and their garage i don't know but they don't necessarily talk about it a lot right they just do their stuff so i think you can consider yourself a, a, a game dev the moment you start making games right it doesn't have to be commercial or not if you're if you're making stuff you can be considered a game dev right have you tried developing xr we can talk about XR really, whoops, we can talk about XR really briefly if you want, because as you can see right there, sorry, it's it's opposite. I have a Quest 2 and a Quest 1. We can talk about that if you want. I'm making a VR project for a client. What did you start? Uh, no, I, I already read that. Uh, but it is, but I prefer Godot 4 now. Yeah. I follow coding quests for tutorials. Godot also, so Brackies is also starting to teach Godot. Brackies is now starting to use Godot. This is so cool. I think this is cool for people. More, more teachers, more content, more people considering Godot a, a viable tool. It's, it's just amazing. Uh, honestly, the only thing that's better than Godot 4 is Unreal Engine 5. I mean, there's no point in comparing tools, to be honest, because it depends so much on what you want to do. Uh, Godot 4 might be way, way more suited for whatever. If you're making a 2D game or whatever, it might be so much, so much better. Yeah, our geniuses uh, are always overlooked. I'm also interested in VR. I want to dive into Godot for it. Many engines for game dev. Yeah. What's the project about? If you can talk about it. I can't talk about it much. It's a somewhat a meditative app, let's say. Somewhat a meditative app, which is using... Uh, hand tracking only, no controllers, uh, which has been a challenge for some things, especially since I'm using, I started doing the project uh, some time ago, and I was using Godot 3, and the support for VR was, it was there, and, it, and there was work from the community, which honestly was really good, but lots of things were missing, and also simply because the, the API evolved, the, the quests are always evolving, and Godot didn't have a partnership with like Meta or anything to have their SDKs. So for example, recently, um, Meta introduced, I mean recently, it was a while ago already, but Meta introduced um, colliding with stuff with your hands, right? Which is amazing to interact with things in VR. But I didn't have that because I'm not using the SDK, unfortunately. So I had to recreate it myself, which is a bit painful, but this is going to change, I think, because uh, they're partnering with W4, and W4 is going to integrate the SDK, if I'm correct. Uh, I, need to, I need to talk about that with them, I'm interested, I have ideas. But anyway, not going to spoil anything. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm using VR, meditative app, um, and that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool using Godot in VR. Um, I have to do a lot of stuff myself, unfortunately, as I said. Uh, but honestly, I've tried Godot 4 uh, uh, some time ago. It was on stream, I think. Hey, Elisa. And it was better. Um, some tools were missing because I was relying on the XR, XR toolkit made by... I don't remember, but there's a guy that was really, really uh, doing a lot of stuff, especially in VR. And he made a toolkit with a bunch of helper functions and, and, and cool, cool things. So unfortunately, some of those were missing, but I think it's working. They're working hard on that, uh, especially Bastion. Uh, he was there on Wednesday on Kebab Scout stream, I think. Um, He's working hard on, on VR support, and it's going in the right direction, honestly. I really need to try again to see how it works, because um, I, I still want to make VR games. I think there's... I, I think it can be interesting. Even as an indie, 
I'm still convinced that there's something to be to be done in the VR space. It's still a very it's still a new it's still a new thing in a way. Even though it has been there for a while, the fact that the quest was made so cheap, I think it helped um it, it helped like onboarding a more way more people than it used to be. You used to have a headset that was very costly, a very good uh PC connect a bunch of things, uh, connect a bunch of, of sensors everywhere and stuff. Now you can just, you can just buy a Quest. The Quest 2 is dropping in price. I think it's 200 now, 200 US dollars. You, you buy that and you have everything you need. There's, there's nothing like that. There's, there's nothing comparable. It's, it's, it's even cheaper than some, um, that some consoles out there. So, and this, this is crazy when you think about it. So let's not go into the details about how Meta is doing that, because I know it can be discussed, right? They're, they're probably not making a lot of profit on that. Um, but anyway, in terms of being a client and, and wanting to discover VR, I think it has never been a better time. Like, it's, it's incredible. Uh, and you can play VR games from your computer if you need to. Totally agree, it's a new field that can be explored more, the public eye is more onto VR. Developing what headset would you recommend? MQ2? I'm using, I'm using the Quest 2, uh, mostly because the Quest 1 is now pretty old, right? Uh, the Quest 1 is pretty old, it's very, it's lacking in terms of performance and stuff. And I think it has been shut down in a way, like it's not going to be supported. It is still like supported in, in the sense that you can you can push updates and stuff, but it's not supported in the sense that going forward, it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be present, right? Uh, and the Quest Two is so much better compared to the One that I think it makes sense to start with the Two, and maybe you you have the Three if you need to. But the Three is like the Three is like a better version of the Two. I feel like there's there's nothing, and I mean the Two is the same for the One, but. Uh, Beat Saber dropped Quest 1. This means a lot. Yeah, okay. Because Beat Saber used to be everywhere. And again, it's, a, it's an Android-based device, so you can probably find a way to uh, find the APK and whatever. If you have it, if you have the APK, you can probably drop it and, and reuse it yourself, whatever. I, I don't know. It's probably possible to sideload, right? Um, and sideloading has been a thing for a while. Not, not, to, not to pirate stuff, right? I'm not talking about that. But simply because the, the, the store for the Quest was relatively closed, right? It was difficult to get on the store. And so a lot of projects were simply uh, available as sideloading. And, and I think Beat Saber has been like that for a while, maybe? No, it was Gorilla Tag. I think Gorilla Tag was like that for a while. It has like 4 million people and it was still a, a, a sideload thingy. Quest 1 is so good with vir virtual desktop. Yeah, female friend thought Quest 2 was a lot heavier than expected. Okay, interesting. I think the Quest 3, honestly, if you can buy it in terms of the price, it's a bit it's a bit more expensive, but I've been working with the Quest 3 also for uh, developing the the app I talked about. And it's and it's even better because it's slimmer. You have pancake lenses, so the lenses are super small. It feels so it feels so good. Uh, it's it's really impressive what they're pulling off for that price. It's very very impressive. And moving forward, using OpenXR, um, having the ability to have, like, now uh, Meta is, is having an OS that other people can use to develop their headset and stuff, I think we are going to see that a bit more. I think what people should, should understand, though, about VR is that um, it's not going to be mainstream, I think. I think it's still going to be relatively niche, simply because you have to put something on your head and that alone even though with the quest is super easy that alone is is friction right and and when you have friction it's it's more difficult to do something i can i can i can speak for my experience i i've been playing some games in vr and i enjoy them but at the end of the day i've been working in front of the computer in front of a computer for like hours and at the end of the day, maybe I want to do something else. And even if, okay, maybe I'm going to play another game, which is going to be on the TV or on my Steam Deck or whatever, I'm still going to be playing like in the living room or whatever. Whereas if you put a headset, you're completely 
um, enclosed in that space. You have to be standing for most games. You have to be active. You're enclosed in that space, so you're alone again. I think that's why it's it's difficult, right? And I think the Apple Vision Pro is not going to solve any problems around that, simply because as humans, we need to have direct connection, I think. And and still you don't you can't share easily. Like when I'm working, when I'm working or when I'm playing a game on, on the TV, my girlfriend can can come and, and see what I'm looking at and might start playing with me in a way, right? This is how we played Balatro together. I started playing Balatro. And she looked at the game, and she was interested, and so we played uh, together. How do you do that in VR? It's not, it's not possible. So even if with the Vision Pro, you can see your surrounding, and you can play with other people, you can discuss with other people, sorry, they can't see what you're doing. So instantly, it's creating a barrier, a barrier between you and them. So I still think it's not going to be a, a solution. My wife, is it, it's worth the upgrade for developing then. Quest 3? Yeah, yeah. But I think for developing... You should have the um, the smallest version you want to support, right? So if you're intending of supporting the Quest One, you should have it because you you will need to do some optimizations for the Quest One. It is really, really not powerful. It is horrible how unpowerful it is. A bit like the Switch, to be honest. If you know the Switch, this is the Switch the Switch Dev Kit right there. We can talk about that also if you want. This is the Switch dev kit. This is very, very underpowered. This is horrible. Uh, but yeah, uh, my wife gets well, motion sickness. Uh, way too easy with VR. Even if we play, it costs problems more than an hour. Yeah, I think it's also a problem for a lot of people. To be honest, for most people, it gets better. Motion sickness, you... you even if you're not experiencing motion sickness, like in cars or, or stuff, you can feel that in VR, but it gets better. But still, it feels weird, right? It feels weird to have to go through that to be able to enjoy VR. I don't know about that. I work at a VR company where you talk with the headset and I've been seeing uh, too many non-gamers coming to play more than people who usually play games. Okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, in my opinion, it feels weird and maybe it's just because we're not used to it. And think about the cost. It's not a universal price, different country, different price. And for them, uh, then for them that have glasses. Yeah, 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 totally. You need a peripheral to play the game. Most people don't like that aside from their keyboard and mouse joystick. True, true. It's still it's still niche. To be honest, it's been a while, right? It's been it's been it's been a while. I don't know what when was the first uh, when was the first VR headset, but it's been a while. It's sticking its time. It's sticking its time. Does the Switch dev have Joy-Con drift? I don't have them for I I, I had the the dev kit like. I purchased it, I purchased it, ah, I bought it, I mean, it's gonna be easier, I, I bought it like two months ago, I guess, so I, I, I don't know yet. Display mesh, quest one, coffee, exactly. I can't play Half-Life because of motion sickness, not in VR. Okay, yeah, I didn't think about that, yeah, yeah, some people it's going to be way harder. It's gonna be way harder. Um, just make a monitor on the outside of your VR headset so people can see what you're playing, yeah, of course. I mean... On the Quest, that solution was was uh, thought about from the beginning. You were able to stream your uh, your headset to a TV or whatever. That way people can still enjoy what you're doing. But have you ever looked at, at someone playing VR? It's not fun. The the head movement, it's horrible. Because when you're, when you're experiencing it, it's okay. But when someone else is seeing you with your head, it's like moving all the time. And it's also a relatively small field of, uh, field of vision. It's not amazing. My biggest issue with the VR, with VR is that it often pushes your glasses in, in your nose. It's just not super comfortable. I can definitely imagine that. I don't have glasses, but even like just having a headset on, on my head for a while is not uh, amazing. Streaming from a treadmill. Yeah, I have a treadmill uh, on my desk. PS, PSVR 2, it shows on the TV as well, yeah. Quality is kind of bad as well from the outside. It's kind of bad, yeah, true. Projectors are getting pretty small, so everyone can get motion sickness together with the visual flying all over the walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many screens have been destroyed by people in VR headsets. Yeah, but also maybe they were not, they were not doing things correctly, to be honest. Um, especially nowadays, like the, 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 the detection inside of the headset is pretty good. And so it's going to show you... 
uh, whenever someone is going to enter the space or if there's an obstacle, you can even map your couch and stuff nowadays on the on the quest. Like it's it's pretty advanced. So honestly, it's the same that uh, with the, the Nintendo Wii, right? People were just not careful and they were throwing the 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 controller on the screen. You can't use uh, Windows Mixed Reality anymore because it, I changed my glasses and I can't see shit without them. My games are blurry and I can't handle it. And so, and so, why can't you use the, the Windows Mixed Reality? Because you had special prescri prescription lenses inside of it, or what? KV, hello KV, how are you doing? Totally agree. So, that is it. I guess it's been an hour of presentation, so I think we kind of have a general idea of uh, who I am and, 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 and what I've been doing uh, those past years with Godot. Hello Zaft. And so I guess it's gonna be time to start prototyping and maybe I'm gonna stop walking a bit. I've been walking for an hour, it's, it's, it's good. It's good, right? Dropping you a follow, thank you! Thank you guys, I thought you were going to code stuff. I am, I am, don't worry, don't worry. So we didn't really talk about uh, we didn't really talk about the Switch stuff. I don't have a lot of experience with the Switch and Godot, but if you are interested, if you have questions, I can answer some of them. Uh, be aware that I am under NDA, of course. Wow, it sounds fancy and stuff, but don't worry. It's just that I don't have I, I can't reveal everything, but I can still discuss some things if you want. Um. Uh, yeah, VR is going to, to be better. I like that presentation. Thank you. It was a long presentation, right? But it was also a discussion at the same time, I guess. Uh, no, don't sit after a workout. I mean, I'm not going to call that a workout. <laughs> it's just walking at two kilometers per hour, so it's not really a workout. It's like what, human, uh, what humans are made for. <laughs> Uh, it has been more challenging to develop a Switch than you previously anticipated. Uh, it has been easier so far. Um, where are you under NDA? Switch. Nintendo Switch. Um, it's... Um, so, I'm using, the, I'm using the port from our friend Roar Labs, I think. Uh, you probably know them. Roar Labs. I can show you at the same time. I mean, I'm, I'm the streamer, right? I can do whatever I want. So let's go. Uh, Roar Labs Games, and um, they didn't do it themselves. They are continuing the work of someone else. I don't remember his name, I'm sorry. Uh, and so they're making the, the Godot port available for all the, all the persons that are Nintendo developers, basically. So if you are accepted as a Nintendo developer, you can get access to the, to the port which is basically a modified version of the engine, right? You have the source code, you can compile it, you have to compile it. Um, and you can use your game, you can do your game stuff. Um, and I've I've ported Dashpong, so my first game Dashpong, uh, I've ported it without any problems so far. From what I tested, it works. Like, it, it worked out of the box, okay? Um, important to know, though, in handheld, the performances are not good enough. Uh, I think by default, in handheld, it was running at like 30 FPS or something, maybe even less. And I don't know what is the common accepted frame rate. Maybe people accept, I think, if you're playing something like Zelda or whatever, you accept playing at 30 FPS uh, when you're not plugged in. But... I think my game is not complex enough for that, so... On the Switch, yes. And so... I looked at it a bit, and basically it's coming from the lights. Um, it was coming from the glow, lights, and... Um, I think that's mainly it. And that was tanking performance. Like, it was... Uh, just just removing the high-quality setting and bicubic upscale on glow. I think I went from, like, 20 FPS to 40 or something. It was crazy. Um, and then lights are also uh, very performance heavy, performance hungry on Godot. Godot is not super good at, li at lighting stuff, I think, in 2D, in Godot 3. 
um, at least in terms of performance. And so lots of the, what you don't realize is that lots of the things that you see on screen are actually made with lights. I'm using a lot of, uh, I'm using a lot of lights to light up the scene in different ways and do and create effects instead of creating shaders. Uh, because at the time I was, I was not good with shaders and, and I'm still not, but I was even even less good <laughs> and so um basically what i need to do is is rework some of those into um into shaders to gain more performance and honestly i think with a bit of work it should be doable like i i estimate probably i don't know one week of work um and then you have to take into account the specifics of the switch like reacting to a joy con being connected reacting to a joy con uh orientation and things like that right which is not obvious by default you have to do all of these all of these things right um and i guess this is the most painful stuff because you have to do them nintendo will look at that when they when you want to publish your game so you need to have it uh you not you need to have that working correctly but honestly apart from that my game is not super complex my game is not using incredible features of godot and it has been relatively easy to to port, right? I basically did nothing by default, and it and it worked. So that's pretty cool. Um, the glasses don't go into the eye slot. Oh, okay. It was long, but you were presented it and talked with us in an interesting way. So I'm hyped for coding. Let's go. I walked two kilometers to my kitchen. You live in a mansion. Uh, is there a way to preview the scene live as the game runs? Uh, for the Switch, you mean? Winter coding? Sorry, I missed your thing. Uh, is that for the Switch? Uh, maybe with Vulcan now, it, it would be faster. Uh, Thibaut, I don't think so. It would be actually uh, worse. Um, uh, there was actually a video, an interesting video I saw. I saw that video this morning, I think. It was optimizing my game so it can run on a potato and it's someone i don't remember i'm sorry i don't remember the creator or the game but they were discussing the idea of um working on their they're working on an fps uh, speed running fps something like that and basically the idea was they had they have an old pc and they want to be able to run the game on there um and the performances are incredibly bad so they're discussing all of the things that they're doing to make it better and they realized that just by switching from Vulcan to OpenGL, they were gaining like, I don't know, 50 FPS or something. So depending on your GPU, depending on how old it is, uh, the thing is OpenGL might be better simply because it has been there for a while and um, it might be more optimized in some ways, right? Um, Vulcan might be better for better rendering. OpenGL might run better, older stuff. Yeah, and you have to remember that the Switch is... The Switch is, is what? Eight years old, maybe? And the GPU inside of the Switch, it, it was already outdated when the Switch came out. So the, the GPU inside of the Switch is just completely underpowered. Completely. So I don't think you can run Vulkan really nicely. And also the Switch port that I'm using, the Godot Switch port that I'm using, um, was not ready for Godot 4 when I started working with it. It was ready for Godot 3.5 with OpenGL, but it was not yet ready for Godot 4. So I don't know how easy it's going to be for them. For Switch Mobile, you need to optimize for fill rate. So you want to avoid transparencies, especially full screen effects, like big transparencies, small but very near the camera as much as possible. Interesting, iProch. Thank you for that. Um, I... Yeah, some of the shaders, for example, some of the shaders were uh, really eating the performance. What is the game displayed? It is Dash Pong. It is my first game uh, made in Godot. And I'm talking about it because um, uh, because I started porting it to Switch. Uh, to be honest, right now, I'm not working on it uh, simply because I'm doing something else. I'm working on, on my new game and porting is not super fun, <laughs> so I will do it later. I think the repo for Switch for Godot 4, it is only or mostly Vulcan. Okay, interesting. Yeah, probably. It, I mean, it's probably so much work to... I don't know the internals good um, good enough to know exactly what needs to be done. But it's probably too much work to port everything. I don't know. It's crazy to me. Sometimes it's crazy. I don't know how, how you guys... Uh, how familiar you are with the engine. With, like, the source code. 
I I did two th two fixes in my life on the source code, and so I'm I'm really not familiar with it a lot. And one of the fix I need to do a PR for that. I don't know if if it has been fixed or not, but I need to do a PR for that. And I might make a video about it because I think this is a subject that people are are very interested in. Like they want to contribute, they want to know how the engine works. But first of all, they might be afraid because of C++, which I totally understand. And also the project is big, like Godot is huge. It's a huge project. And so it's kind of overwhelming um, when you want to, to start looking at the, the source code, right? Um, but for from my experience, it's not as bad as you think. Like you can figure it out. I just opened the repo for testing UI stuff and it was already a lot. Yes, yes, it's, it's difficult, right? So yeah, I might, I might do a video about that. If you're interested, let me know. Um, and so before we start, maybe I can show you that really quickly. Hyperslice is my second game. Whoops, it's the wrong thing that I did. Hyperslice is my second game. Uh, don't judge my itch page too hard. Uh, my itch page. Don't judge my Steam page too hard, please. Uh, it's very, 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 very work in progress. I wanted to have my Steam page as soon as possible. Uh, but the game is, is evolving fast and even the visuals and stuff, everything is... The game already looks different now, but anyway. Uh, the game is going to be a roguelike. Um, basically an arena survival top-down game. Survival? Maybe not. Arena action game where you only have two dashes. The only weapon that you have are dashes. You can uh, dash slice, which kills enemies, like you can slice them. Or you can push them, and so we are. I'm building the gameplay around that, and I'm adding upgrades and different enemies, bosses, and special events and stuff like that. I might put the the thing a bit lower because it's on my face, and around here it should be good. Looks awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and so if you saw, if you saw the where is it? Uh, Mr. Elliptic, can I find that? If you saw the... Um, uh, how is it called? The showreel, the Godot showreel, if you saw it, I... Uh, color Space was showcased in that showreel, uh, but Color Space, I'm not working on it anymore. And basically, I'm, re I'm reusing a lot of stuff that I created with Color Space to make Hyperslice. Uh, that's why they look so similar. You will see this, like, neon... Um, a bit sci-fi art style, very simple, but simply because I had many things that were already created, so I just I went to whoop, and I just uh, I just reused them. So hopefully it's going to turn into a cool game. If you are interested, you can go on the page. Uh, you can also playtest it. You can join my Discord and you can playtest the game if you want to give me feedback and stuff. And I'm going to have a, a demo. Probably during summer, I guess. I don't think I can do it earlier than that. It's just going to be too early. Um, my goal is to release after the next fest in October. I'm not sure it's going to be feasible, to be honest. But yeah, we can. I can show you that in more detail if you want at some point. Raw Labs, and yes, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the link again. On this image, right on this image, you need to guess my age. If you want to guess my age. You can go on that link, um, guess my age on the image, and you might win a key for Dashpong, which is the first game that I showed you earlier. Um, yeah, if you are interested, please feel free to, to try to guess. I'm currently 28. 28. And this is this is me. And, and I'm not 28 here. This is what I can tell you. I'm not 28. You can judge. Alright, that was a lot. 27. Yeah, maybe. 22. Please respond to the tweet if you want a chance to enter. Um, I went straight to 28. 23. Okay, interesting, interesting. You can you can vote on the on the tweet below. Um I'm 28 now. And I can pin the message for a while. Yeah, I can pin the message for a while. Alright. I'm also moderator. And so you can go on the tweet that is linked at the top of the chat. You you guess your age. Some of them have guessed already. For example, 21, 17, 19, 22, 20. 
uh 23 24 you can try you can try your guess when we will know the results at the end of the stream at the end of the stream i will uh, take like five minutes to reveal and um and also make a tweet maybe to tell uh who won like because you're going to win a key right let's put that on the side let's put that on the side i feel like it's nearly all already time for a coffee but i don't know that might be a bad idea Thank you, Zong, Zong guy, Zonggu. Oh, bags. We don't have an, an alert for raids, no? I feel like we don't have an alert for raids. Is that, is that true? Oh, we, we don't have the chat on that thingy. I didn't think about that. Oh, that is so bad. Um, bags, should I call you bags or bigs? Ba I don't know how to call you. I don't know how to call you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Beegs. Oh, it's Beegs. Okay, yeah, because it's an E. Welcome, Raiders. Welcome, everyone. Don't listen to chat. Welcome, everyone. Uh, bags? It's Bags or Beegs? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Dartboard. Yeah, and also a, uh, a Kendama right there. And the banana is usually blinking when you do stuff, but I'm not on my channel, so of course, all of the integrations are, are broken. Uh, that's why the, the, the streaming looks a bit different. It is Beegs. Bugs, <laughs> hello bag. <laughs> I prototype sometimes with job family. Life never finished something. Hope to learn a lot. Zengai, I do hope you're going to learn also, and I totally understand that. I will go do uh, Mr. Elliptic to redeem Banana Blink. I, I, it's not going to work, KV, unfortunately, uh, because I didn't launch the streaming stuff to avoid having uh, too many things running for, for no reason. It's actually beans. Well, the thing is, I'm French, so I don't know the difference between all of those pronunciations, so I'm just going to say... I'm just going to say Bigs. Bigs. Bigs should be fine, right? <laughs> we troll him by altering his name. Pentacoder, I can I can see that. Beans. I could, I could call you Beans. That's right. Anyway, thank you so, so much for the raid. What were you doing? Use his foreign speaker card. Exactly, that's the best card. That's the GameCube. Yeah, the GameCube. Look at that. Uh, Nintendo 64, GameCube, the uh, Steel Like an Artist, and the Nintendo Switch dev kit right there. Pretty cool stuff, right? I'm not using them most of the time, to be honest. At this point, I just respond to anything starting with B. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call you B then. That's gonna be easier. He's building Minecraft. You're building Minecraft? With galvanized steel? Or, or what? An ecological wood? I hope you have the, the reference. <laughs> Maybe you don't. <laughs> I was doing... Uh, Overdate and pixel art. Oh, pixel art. Cool. No camera transformation on this channel. No, uh, no machette. Unfortunately, this is a very serious, serious chat today. Uh, no, no fancy stuff. No banana blinking. No kendama challenge. No transformation. I'm not going to turn into a clown. I mean, I am going to turn into a clown, but... Not that way. Galvanized square steel and eco-friendly wood veneer. <laughs> Perfect. That's important for the hundred children that uh, they're having, right? Uh, overlay dev. Okay, okay, overlay dev. We were working on my stream overlay game engine based. What are you using? I also have a, a game engine overlay using Godot. But unfortunately, it's not, it's not here, right? Uh, I'm not using it because I'm not on my channel. Oh yeah, for those of you that are that are new here and that are confused, my name is Mr. Elliptic. I'm a full-time indie game dev, and today I'm streaming on the Godot channel, but I'm usually streaming on my own channel, Mr. Elliptic, of course. It's a it's the Godot takeover, and I'm the last one this week. Every day of the week there was a creator uh, streaming on that channel. It was really, really cool. I can show you. What am I doing? I'm not even doing the promo in a in a good way. Like look at that. Boom. This was, this was the lineup for the, for this week. I c can't say what I use for my overlay here, but I'm building a game in... Okay, you're not using, you're not using Godot, I can understand. But we can talk freely about other engines, there's no problem, there's no, there's no problem. You're building a game into, in Godot though, that's pretty cool. I thought you were Mr. Godot Engine official. I don't think I have that role yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> Emphasis on, on yet. 
Uh, it's been using the dill and U word. Ah, oh, U word. I'm helping choose the best one. The best one is the one with the gun, I think, because it's the one I, I'm using the most. It's Zangi pour la prononciation. Okay. No French lesson either. Michette, you, we can definitely do uh, French lessons if you, if you want. If you have ideas. But <laughs> compared to usual, we might tune it down a bit from like... We, we're we are probably, probably not going to swear as much. I know, I know we have the right to swear. But, <laughs> but usually we swear a fuck ton, okay? Let's say that. So we are probably going to <laughs> lower it down. I need English lessons. <laughs> I can't help you with that. Why Polygon 2D is S tier for you? Oh my god. Uh, Emo, if you're going to stay here, we are going to prototype some stuff, okay? I'm going to show you why Polygon 2D is incredible, because we are going to use the Polygon 2D for prototyping. Ah! How comfortable is it to develop while walking? Um, honestly, it's pretty much like you're not walking. If you walk slow enough, and so I use, uh, I use this remote, and I use... The preset two kilometers per hour it is it is like you're not walking it is completely fine the only problem is when you're trying to do something very precise like if you're trying to draw like even even like draw something on a tape on a tablet or whatever it's going to be difficult because you're moving a lot but to code personally i find it fine and when i discuss with with chat uh during the live stream it's easy Challenge, make a game with just Polygon 2D. Oh, you can. Oh, you definitely can. You definitely can, because it's incredible. Personne ne te comprendra. C'est pas grave. You code on a treadmill. Uh, yeah, uh, the first hour of the stream was on a treadmill. But then I'm... 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 Uh, I'm sitting down a bit, and then we'll go back to the treadmill a bit. I think. More challenge with C-sharp usage. No, please. No C-sharp. No C-sharp. Oh, on a machine, not walking outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside, it would be difficult. I just... I have... I have an up and down uh, desk, right? So you can see it's going up. So basically, I just go up. I put, I lower my, I lower my uh, my treadmill, which is just on on the side at the moment, and and I start walking. C plus <sighs> plus. If I do C plus plus, I want it to be useful. So I think I want to do like engine work. Otherwise, nah, it's going to be painful. How do you find coding on a treadmill? I've thought about it and keep chickening out, thinking it, I'll struggle to type. Honestly, as I said, if you don't go too fast, it's perfectly fine. And I don't know if I'm allowed, but on my channel, on Mr. Elliptic, I have an affiliate link in the description. So if you want to buy one, <laughs> sorry, shameless plug, but you, you, I'm an indie, I need to make a living, you know? So <laughs> if you want to buy it, you can use my affiliate link. Uh, it's an Amazon affiliate link, and, and I'm giving a, I'm getting a tiny percentage, so it's it's always good. Uh, when are you going to code on the elliptical machine? Well, unfortunately, I don't have one, but that would be really fun. It would be harder, I think. It would be harder. Um, I find it super interesting. Might look for some decent treadmill. Yeah, don't hesitate to look at my description on my on my channel. I look like a caveman compared to your setup. But it's also good, you know, you know, I have a theory, I have a theory, the, the shittier the setup, the better you are as a, as a developer or whatever you're trying to do, right? I think, I think what we do when we are not good enough is that we compensate with big setups. <laughs> and so over the years, as I started to realize how bad I was, I started to buy more stuff. Another screen, a second screen, a third screen, a fourth screen. And so yeah, yeah. It's just it's just to it's just to balance things out things out. But if you're good enough, you don't need that. <laughs> the official desk treadmill of the Godot game engine. That would be cool, right? Are you coding on Linux Windows? Mac is it okay for Godot? Uh, I think Mac is fine. I use Windows simply because um, I was doing stuff that was requiring Windows. It used to be that uh, VR Dev was requiring um, requiring Windows. And also some of my editing software was using Windows, but I'm I'm I want to go back to Win to Linux. I used to use Linux a lot, and uh, I want to go I want to use Linux again. I think I must be a great dev then. Yeah, this is my whole stream. Come sitting with extra stuff. <laughs> I think this is what we do as streamers usually. You saying I don't need all these PCs? Maybe you don't. And the banana is is live again. What happened? So I can make it blink normally from my 
Like if I send the right request to the banana, it should blink. Oh, it's struggling. The problem is that sometimes the cat is going behind the sofa and the cat she's playing with the um, she's playing with everything and so the banana gets disconnected in a way because the connection is very finicky i said i used to be an, an embedded engineer it doesn't mean that that this work with the banana is uh engineer level right it is very shit <laughs> all of my wiring is using jumper cables and so it's very easy to get like disconnected and stuff i love godot on my mac studio okay so apparently it works can't even Linux unless you use Vim exclusively. Hard <laughs> requirement. <laughs> Fuck, I can't use that. Your stream is just PixArt with some small breaks for coding. PixArt is really cool. PixArt is really cool, but I think it's much harder. What do you think, guys? What do you think about... Oh, fuck, I need to do that again. Okay, one last thing. One last thing. Uh, you guys from the raid. You guys from the raid. Look at this picture. Look at this picture. Guess my age. And go on to, there is a pinned comment at the top of the, at the top of the chat. There is a pinned comment to Twitter. If you have Twitter, you go on there, you guess my age on this picture, and you, and you guess it here, okay? Below the tweet for a chance to win my previous game, Dash Pong. If you're interested about winning my game, of course. 14? 14? <laughs> really? <laughs> Do I look that young? So anyway, go on the tweet, it's pinned on the chat, and you can uh, guess my age, if you want. Guys, you think it's time for coding? Clearly he's 80, exactly. I think you're right. And we are going to reveal that at the, at the end uh, of the stream. We are going to reveal that at the end of the stream, and um, those of you that are right are going to win. Do you need to move the treadmill when switching the chair or vice versa? I don't know how I can show you because my camera is, is, completely, um, is completely fixed. Um, give me a second, I can do something. I can do something. I can open up the, the webcam. I can open up the webcam. This is the webcam for the cats normally. Uh, why is it cropped like that? And we can do a tour. Where's the gato? It's not here. This is you. Look at it. It's you. I hope I hope there's nothing I can't show. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I'm just going to show you. And then you have a pick on live Discord. Yeah, but I don't remember. It, it's probably far. So I don't know. Redeems back to work. There's no back to work. And so basically when I want to have the thing, it is here. I just move that. I just put it on the floor, as you can see. I make that go higher. I make that go higher. And then I simply, uh, I simply move like that. And so... Um, and so whenever, um, whenever I'm not using it, I hide it behind the desk. I can move it behind the desk and not on the side, and that way it doesn't take space. Um, you still have space up there for you, for you more monitors. You're joking, Captain Fubar, but there was a monitor before. I had a TV, and I was, because I was playing... At, at the same spot where I was working, and so I had a TV up there. <laughs> but now the TV is in the living room with my girlfriend. <laughs> I never knew it's so small, such a cutie. It's like the the treadmill is like, um, probably like 1.5 meter or something. <laughs> Three feet reveal. <laughs> Fucking hell, Mike. Should definitely consider buying more monitors, guys. You don't realize, especially when you're a streamer, you need the monitors. You need them. You need the monitors, because right now, I just have a uh, Discord open. I have uh, a full a full OBS with like tons of windows open. On my main monitor, which is an ultra wide, I have Godot, but I also have a tiny other other scene where I can put music and other stuff. 
it's crazy how many how many windows and things you need open two screens is not enough more is so overwhelming two, two screens is enough i personally find three to be good i have two monitors i only use one okay three three is perfect in my opinion if i was not streaming i could probably use two but even like uh, when I'm when I'm video editing, for example, I have my uh, my ultra wide monitor at the center, which is using the software editing soft uh, the, the software uh, for editing. On the side, I have like all of the I have like a, a web search for like finding stuff or whatever, and then I need the other screen to have like all of the folders and the the assets and, and things. The thing is, you can of course do everything with one screen, but then you have to switch windows all the freaking time and it gets tiring 640 by 480 <laughs> so guys you think it's time for us to start prototyping no 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 it is not time for us to start prototyping i need a coffee i need a coffee so i'm grabbing a coffee and then i promise i promise you guys it's been an hour and a half we start prototyping and we go fast never heard of alt tab yeah uh, mariano N then try to alt tab with like 20 windows open and, and when you constantly need to uh, take an asset, move it somewhere, open it up in a software, do a, do a Google research, grab, a, grab an image, download it, it's so, it's so horrible. You can do it, of course. I've done it in the past too, but it's horrible. It sounds like monitor setup time. No, it's time to flex. I don't have the 4K, uh, I don't have 4K though. I have 21 by 9 aspect ratio, so it's a bit more than 1080p, but yeah. The never-ending story wait, waiting for prototype. The thing is, I don't know how to code in Godot, I don't know how to make games, and I don't know how to prototype, so I'm just trying to gain time. <laughs> Two mod interpreters, one is 4K, so effectively I have five screens. That can be a solution too, yeah. Okay, uh, see you in just a second. Bye! Oops, it's the wrong one. I will write down I will write there. That way I'm closer to to the screen. I can see you. Oh that was a good one. That was a good one. But then I'm not at the right spot. I should go away. I should definitely go away. I died. Everyone died at the same time? What happened? I just sh shut myself out. Okay, so... Maybe the ray should be way bigger. Should be 10,000 that way. Oh, it's not enabled! It's not fucking enabled. Can you do focus on my face camera, please? It's not fucking enabled. Ba -ba -ba. Add monkey to game. <laughs> oh my god. I should remove this, this poll suggestion thingy. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, can I? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's a new game. Oh, that's a new game. Oh, I love it. Oh, look at it. Oh, <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, I love it. <laughs> to 255 and it solved the problem for me. Is this expected? And the other one is saying, oh, my, you're right. This solved it for me, too. Thank you. This is my simple shader now. So basically, if you look at the shader, they're doing the exact same shader as we were doing before, but instead of using the actual color of the screen texture, they are using RGB and then they're putting the alpha to one.
it's not crunch. It's not crunch if you're having a good time. <laughs> do, 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 do. La 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 la. Oh, well, there's no chat, so let's go into here. You were so young on this recording. I don't know which one it was. Uh, but I was not that young, to be honest, KV. Like, I started streaming, what, three years ago, I guess? Um, you know what? I'm thinking we could go into, into full screen, maybe. I could use screen instead. Because we don't have chats and stuff, I could do that. What do you think? I think it's, it makes more sense because I don't have my usual... I don't have my usual um, my usual setup, so that, that might be better. Because in here we are losing a bunch of space, but there's nothing to there's nothing to show. Right? Uh, so we might we might go like that. I think it's fine. Much better, yeah. Okay, let's go with that. Uh, even the voice has changed, but that may be because of the microphone. I think it's still the same microphone, but my voice might might be different. Uh, also it's I'm I'm more confident now that I'm doing streaming, so I don't know. Hey Daniel. Alright guys. It is good old time. Uh, should I show you what I want to do? Maybe we can plug in the tablet real quick. Um, I'm afraid that this tablet is going to say, Hey, USB revoking stuff, blah, blah, blah. Uh, lost some of the accent. Really? Okay, interesting. Hey, Seto, how are you doing? It's been a while. I, I, it's been a while. I hope you're doing good. Uh, just give me a second, I just need to make sure USB debugging, I'm going to revoke the access, that way it's not going to uh, be a problem. Revoke, yes. And that way it's going to ask me if I plug it in. Uh, I allow the computer. Yes. Perfect. And so now what I can do is... Uh, I don't know if I have the thing on tablet scene. I think I do. It's going to hopefully work. Yes. Incredible. Incredible. All right. So this is the tablet, which is connected. Um, so basically. Ah, okay. The problem is the problem is that the tablet scene has the chat. So it's the old one. But don't worry. It's um. We are going to switch back to the to the other uh, to the other thingy just after that. I was on vacation. I hope Hyperslice has uh, have grown as you wanted. Yeah, it's 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 going well. Uh, there's a new playtest you can try with enemies with more with health and stuff. It's pretty cool. The idea is simple. I want to I want to make a game where the protagonist has a sword. The protagonist has a sword, and he's going to use that sword to move and to fight. So, imagine you have corridors like that. Uh, what can I do? Something like that, whatever. Imagine you have corridors, um, think about Hotline Miami and, and games like that, Tom down view. Basically, you have your little guy and you can hit your sword onto uh, the walls and that hit is going to push you. So, in this case, it doesn't really make sense. So let's do it like that. So imagine you, you're doing a hit. Imagine you're doing a hit in here. It's going to push you in that direction, for example. And of course, as soon as you bounce on the wall, you're going to bounce there. But it's going to be pretty floaty, I think. Uh, not a lot of friction. That way you can move around. And so basically you move around by hitting the wolves uh, using your sword but of course the sword can also be used to defeat enemies so you have bad enemies like that and um, whenever you are close enough to them you can of course use your sword to defeat them and blap okay sword bouncer exactly we need a name so exa so if, if you have ideas for the name uh, right now it's called slash bounce because I don't know. Hard to imagine unless it's a platformer. Uh, unless passages are very tight. I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure. I had this idea, and in my head, it kind of works. So that's why we, we have to prototype it. Uh, because prototyping is, is really the moment you realize if something can work or not. And let's be honest, most of the time, you have to adapt. You have to adapt your idea, because the, the mind is really good at not seeing the full picture. The mind is really good at, at, at seeing an idea, but not all of the details. The games always have been called two words. Dash Pong, Hyper Slice, Color Space, yeah? Sword Bouncer, Dash Bounce, Hyper Bounce. Hyper Bounce is not too bad. <laughs> Hyper Bounce is not too bad. So, I think it can work, because the movement are going to be... Like, whenever you're going to push yourself from a wall, like, like there, you're going to push yourself quite hard. And then, your player, your character, is going to also bounce off the walls, right? It's not like you're... Don't see it as, I bounce myself and I, and I directly stop. See it more as, imagine the behavior of a bull, right? So a bull would have relatively low friction, would take quite a bit of time to slow down, and would also bounce on the walls. We can definitely imagine something like that. I want a game that is very arcadey. I want the, the feeling to be arcadey, so we are going to go all in with like the, the 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 behavior right i don't want the behavior to be uh to be realistic i want the behavior to be crazy you can even imagine you can even imagine have uh for example we place bouncers this this looks awful you can imagine placing bouncers on walls things that are going to push you even further or, or whatever that way you can use the screen and not just feel constrained by it right you can also try to come up with ways of uh, using the actual environment to make it easier for you. So you're basically in space physics. Um, yeah, yeah, you can see it like that. You can see it like that. We are top down, okay? We are seeing it from the top. So there's no gravity. There's no gravity applied like that, right? We simply, we simply move around like this, blah, 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 blah. All right? Um, and I think it can be fun. What I like about ideas like this is it's relatively easy to put in place and it can really, like, it's an, it's an easy way to come up with ideas, to be honest. Um, taking something that is obvious and you replace it or you modify it. So in a top down, in a top down game, you usually move with keys and you shoot what if you remove the movement or what if the shooting itself is the movement you can totally imagine making the same game but instead of uh having a sword you can have a gun and whenever you shoot something right whenever you shoot something it creates a reaction force that pushes you in the other direction it's totally possible and i think it could be fun Right? Top down? I thought it was from side. No, top down. How about the controls? Yeah, I'm going to show you that in just a second. Only two actions, swing clockwise, swing counterclockwise. Um, no, I think you're going to aim and then attack where you aim. What, up, what app are you using for sketching? <laughs> I'm using... Uh, I'm using... How is it called? Um, sorry. Uh, note. Keeps. Keep? Yeah, keep from Google. Google Keep. Uh, because it's 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 the thing I had and it's easy and it synchronizes with the computer so it's cool. It's it's not good enough, but at least it synchronizes and stuff so I, I don't lose the things. It's good for that. So my idea is you have your uh, your character is here, right? We need to come up with a cool character. I'm going with a very cartoony art st art style. I don't know if we are going to have a lot of time to create assets and stuff. We'll see. But I'm going with a cartoony art, art style, so we need to come up with a character at some point. If we can find something cool, it can even be a modified Godot. Uh, it can even be a modified... I don't even know how Godot is, like... It can be a modified Godot version. Uh, how are the things? Right? We can imagine having a modified Godot version. Uh, Godot icon. Four horns. Well, I'm doing three, because I don't know how to draw. 
<laughs> so we have that controller, and basically you aim, imagine your aim, uh, whether it is, uh, this is the mouse cursor, right? Let's say this is the mouse, you're going to aim in that direction, so your sword is going to be uh, there, and your sword attack is going to attack like that, okay? Um... And so the mouse can go anywhere, but it can also be controller, right? It can also be controller. So I'm thinking we take the joystick, we take the joystick position, and we simply place the vector around like that. We place this thing wherever we need. Okay? Um, I usually try to do I usually try to do um, game gamepad support if I can because I, I like to play with gamepads. Is that the official Rogudo icon redesign? Exactly, it is. It is. Uh, whoops. New Godot. New Godot made by me. <laughs> Isn't it great? Isn't it great? Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> Alright, so now that we know what we are going to do, I think you get you get the idea, right? I think you get the idea. It shouldn't be too complex, I hope. Uh <laughs> merge it. I think it should be it should be easy enough. So let's start. Gorgeous. Thank you guys. I appreciate. Um, this is Godot 4.1.2. I'm not going to use Godot the latest simply because I want the stable version. So Godot 4.2.1. What did I say? 4.2.1 for the 4.3. Exactly. This is the new Godot for Godot 4.3. Uh, and I have prepared a bunch of things, but not a lot to be honest. I have prepared a um, few components. Okay, that we might. Uh, that might be useful, and my camera is on top, so you can't see it. You know what? We might put it here for now. Yeah. Um, so I'm using... I, I have a few components that are ready. Uh, I don't have a lot, to be honest. I, I have yet to create a good prototype template. Like, I prototype all the time, and I never, I never took the time to create the freaking template with all of the things that I need. I hate myself for that. I have a bunch of uh, visuals, mostly prototype textures from Kini. I have a few shaders and uh, self-freeing particles, spawn safe area. I don't know what this is, but I have it. And I have one add-on, the shaker ad add-on, because I have modified it, I think. So that's why I have it. And the project is blank, so we need to set it up. Um, most of you guys are probably familiar enough with Godot. Is that right? Anyone out there not familiar with Godot? Do I have something in autoload? I don't. If you want to know anything, honestly, um, honestly, feel free to ask. Um, and if I don't know the answer, which is definitely possible, we have tons of uh, intelligent people in the chat, so we can definitely, we can definitely ask them. Okay, so usually what I do is uh, 1920, 1080, this is going to be fine. I'm going to override it for sure, uh, 720p, this is what I want. Uh, stretch mode, I want... Uh, I want what? I want canvas item, I think, and uh, for now, I want keep. All of that is okay, blah blah blah, vsync enabled, I don't care. Usually I don't change the other things, resizable, transparent, blah blah blah, okay. It's called slash bounce. Yeah, input map. First of all, we need input map. Uh, I know some people prototype using the built-in inputs. I hate that. So let's let's do that. Um, okay, we are going to need aim left, aim right, aim up, aim down. We need attack. We need um, we need what? We need attack. We need a dash. Oh, I didn't say that, but there's probably a dash in the game because you might get stuck without being able to touch the walls. So I think having a dash is at least going to give you that ability to go closer to a wall to gain back some momentum. But also the dash can be useful to uh, 
um, kill enemies in a special way or whatever. What if you're aiming with a mouse or joystick? Why up, down, left, right? Uh, because I usually, with joystick, I usually do get a vector. And I don't go, I don't know how you would grab the, I don't know how you would grab the vector. I mean, there, there are other ways, of course, but I usually do that. I'm, I'm used to this. And mouse, well, mouse, we're going to use the mouse position, so we don't need that. Attack, dash, uh, pause, and restart. That might be useful. And I think that's it. I need to connect my... Um, so, yeah, for joystick, I don't know how you do joystick support. I usually use the uh, input map for joysticks. For gamepads in general, I just use that. Uh, because, for example, I'm used to do movement. So if you do movement with WASD, you can also easily map a gamepad to that. And then you do um, get vector, I think it's called. I don't remember the function exactly. And if you do that, you support both gamepad and keyboard at the same time. It's much easier. So aim left. Uh, also, I'm going to drop the dead zone to 0 0.1 on all of those. Uh, on all of the aim, I'm going to drop to 0 0.1. And let's go for the aim. Um, aim left. The cool thing about... Is it connected? It looks like it's not detecting it. Okay, it is. The cool thing about Godot 4 is that you can now... Create your inputs like that. In Godot 3, it's so painful. You, you don't... You can't do that. I don't like that. Aim down. Uh, attack. I think attack can be... Attack can definitely be the right trigger. Uh, attack can also be the right bumper. Attack can also be... A. Do you like A for attack? Or do you like X for attack, maybe? Hmm... I mean, I can also put X, I don't care. And I can put X, okay. And what do you think about dash? For the dash, I'm thinking left shoulders, left shoulder button, left trigger, and B. Right? It makes sense to use B for dash. A? You use A for dash? But A is jump usually, no? I'm, I'm confused. Oh my god, we disagree. We disagree. Streamer cancelled. Streamer is using A, B, no, B's jump. What? Are you, are you Nintendo? Are you a Nintendo guy? Is that why you're doing, you're seeing that? No jump here. I do agree. There's no jump. Are you talking about Xbox or Switch? Xbox. I use an Xbox controller. How is, how is it going? It's going great, uh, Godot Engine official. We just started, <laughs> we just started prototyping. We've been talking all this time. <laughs> we just started prototyping. But no jump, and you can, pre you can press X and A without moving the finger. Okay, fair enough, Mike. This is a great answer, though. This is a great answer. My answer was for Nintendo. Now it makes sense. Okay. I wish there was a database of what the default controls games use as a reference for what players might be most familiar with in a genre. It's, it's fair enough. Uh, fair enough. That's a great idea. Um, because you might be biased, right? I am biased, for example. I've used an Xbox controller my whole life. And it's been a while since I've used a Nintendo controller. So, yeah. Just had a rental contract on 200 meter squares to store my, my motorcycles. I have a motorcycle addiction. Uh, okay, Hexic. Okay, Hexic. <laughs> that's, that's cool. <laughs> I, it's, it's a bit random, but I guess it's cool. So, attack. Attack with X. Okay, it, it's, it's fair enough. I think... Okay, let's, let me remove that. Let me say attack with X. And dash with A, I feel a bit weird with this with this dash with A, to be honest. And dash with I, I feel like, but you are you are right. It makes so much sense. It makes so much sense to to have the finger placed and not have to move it. But it doesn't matter because you can use the shoulder buttons. To be honest, it doesn't matter. You can use the shoulder buttons. Okay. So attack is that. Dash is. Um. Dash is... Dash is what? X. And dash is A. And dash is also uh, left shoulder and left trigger. Okay? 
uh, pause. You agree that pause is the pause button, right? Pause is the pause button. There's no problem in here. And restart is the share button. And now we need to do the same thing for the mouse. So mouse input for attack, we are going to use the left mouse button. For the dash, I think we can use the right mouse button. Uh, we can also use for the dash, uh, maybe shift. People might like that. Space, people might like that. Pause will be escape and restart will be R. Use less information. I mean, no, it's cool. It's cool. How many motorcycles do you have? I have a collision shape 2D with signals on body enter and I want to make a player to trigger when he drops out of the world. It's not triggering. What do I do to debug? Oh my god. Uh, check your layers. You're right. Check your layers. Check your, check your layers. And so it, it means with signals on body entered. So you have an area, right? You have an area with a collision shape 2D. Because if you just have a collision shape 2D, it doesn't do anything. So you need to have an area with a collision shape 2D. And so it might be that the layers are wrong. It's true. Um, is your area big enough? Word, world boundary shape 2D. Oh, I'm not familiar with that node. Is that is that new with Godot? Godot 4? I can't guess past how much Mega Man X controls have burned themselves in my brain. I have four currently. Wow, four is, is a lot already. Are you using GDScript? I am. There's an infinite line area. I check layers. They are on the right layers. Um, so I'm not familiar with that node, to be honest. Um, but if the thing is falling fast enough, is it possible that it, it's going through? It, is it possible that it's going through? Because whenever you have something, whenever you have a physics body that goes fast enough, it's really easy for the engine to miss uh, the collision. Because from one frame to another, it's going through. It shouldn't be possible to go through world boundary. Okay. Don't use escape for pause. If you plan to have it run in a browser, escape will exit full screen mode. Um, we'll, do, we'll do something for the browser. Don't worry. We'll do a special case for the browser. Um... But I need it for debugging and stuff. It's so it's so useful. Uh, all right, I think we're we're ready. You made a collision shape a child. I I love how this is turning into a into a fix your stuff stream. Maybe we should we should do that. Um, what next time? Next time, if if we do another takeover like that, it could be fun to do a fix your problem or judge your game or something like that. Something where I don't make anything. But you guys submit stuff, we take a look at them, we rate the ideas, maybe we help you fix a problem. Like, it's 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 your general um, technical service thingy. But also, like, we can we can look at your game design, we can look at your game juice, things like that. That would be that would be really fun, right? Idea for the next time, yes? That would be really fun. Emulsory is great with a Fix My Project stream. I suck at this, yeah? As long as you're using an Area 2D you've established yesterday, you're, not in, you're in the right path. <laughs> Area 2D is the best one. Uh, okay, let's create a 2D scene. I'm going to start um, with what I use, what I, what I'm calling often. Hey, Godot. Yeah, what I'm often calling a playground. So the playground is not the real scene. It's where we are going to test a few things. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use that, but I don't want so many configure snaps. Uh, maybe we can go with a bigger snaps. That way it's going to be easier for us to edit stuff. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh, my playground, it looks good enough. But first of all, someone asked me earlier, why do I like Polygon 2D? Well, for that. Boom, I have a background. <laughs> I have a background for my node. Um, and I'm going to use inside of so be uh, be gentle with me i'm not using godot 4 on a daily basis right my projects are using godot 3 so i'm not it, it i need a bit of time for me to uh to get familiar with godot um with godot again with godot 4 again okay i think we can use dark or maybe we use light ha the the um, the way we see stuff in here is not good enough. I can't wait. There's um, there's a very cool 
there's a very cool PR at the moment. I think it's a PR, I'm not sure. Which is going to, for example, when you do quick load, it's going to, to show you to show you the visuals in here. This would be so cool because whenever I want to add a visual, like look at that, it is so small. I don't see anything. And I need to hover it and it's super small. And what I want is for Godot to show me what it is. Do your project predate the release of 4 or was it a conscious choice? Um, few things, few things. Some of them predate Godot 4 in a way. Like when I started Color Space, Godot 4 was out, but Godot 4.0 was missing a ton of stuff. Uh, like Godot 4.0 was stable, but it was missing features. And for example, I use a lot of Glow in my games. Uh, and Glow was simply not available. Glow was made available in 4.2, I think, because HDR was missing. So um, I wanted to avoid using an, en using an engine that didn't have all of the things I needed. But also, because I do commercial projects, what I require more is stability. And, and I know that Godot 3.5 is much more stable because it has been used for many years. Many games have been shipped with it. And so, even if Godot is, uh, Godot 4, Godot 3, sorry, has bugs, I know what they are. And I know, uh, workarounds, and I know if they're going to be fixed or not. And it's not, it's not necessarily the case with Godot 4. So, I'm on the safe side, and I say, okay, if I work on a commercial game, I want to use Godot 3. So, this was the case for Color Space, and then, a few months ago, like, two months ago, I decided to scrap the project and turn it into Hyperslice. I, I had all of this code already written in Godot 3, so I had to make the choice again. And I decided it's not worth it for me to switch to Godot 4, because the new features are great, but I don't really need them to make a game. You see what I mean? Uh, I feel like Godot 4 is especially good for 3D stuff, and some of the 2D aspects. But for example, I don't use time maps, so I don't care about the rework of the, of the time maps. That's, that's one example. Uh, what I care about, though, is having stability and knowing that it's going to work. Uh, the switch, the, the switch that is behind me works, the template works for Godot 3.5. I don't know if it works yet for Godot 4. So again, it's just making sure that it's going to work. That way I can focus on creating the game and not fixing the engine. Um, that being said, I'm also aiming for short releases. At least I'm trying to. In reality, I'm struggling, but uh, I'm not. I'm not planning on working on the game for like two years. If you're working on a game right now and you know you're going to be working on it for I don't know more than a year, you can definitely go with Godot 4 because it's getting better and better. But I want Godot to be perfect right now. Well, not perfect, but you get the point. Anyway, texture, uh, filter, uh, repeat enabled. All right, we have a nice little texture. I'm going to scale it. Uh, do I need to scale it in that order, in that? Yes, okay. And I'm going to make it uh, visibility. I'm going to self-modulate it, HSV. I don't like this view, Godot. Please don't, don't do that. I'm going to make it bluish. I think bluish is cool for a background. What do you think? We need to desaturate it a bit. We need to desaturate it a bit. And we probably need to make it maybe a bit darker. Yeah, it should be good. We'll see, we'll see. Thank you for sharing that, that insightful. Yeah. And I know some people don't care. Some people uh, prefer to use the latest version. They want all of the new features and stuff. And I totally understand that. I uh, Also, it depends on what kind of game you make. Some people require features that are available in Godot 4. Or they're making heavy 3D games. And so Godot 4 is going to be way better for them. But personally, not that much. It was me. Emo. Well, I'm going to show you why uh, polygons are incredible. Uh, you could use visible on screen notifier. Yeah. Visible on screen notifier is great. So I'm going to rename this background. Okay. This is going to be my background. So far, so good. And what I want to do now is create walls. So I don't want 3D scenes. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to create a new scene. I'm going to change the type to uh, static. 
I'm going to rename that to walls. It's going to be uh, walls. I, I do that all the time, so I, I should definitely have um, I should definitely have a component for that because I, I recreate that setup all the time. If you guys are familiar with how I do walls, you will not be uh, you will be at home. Um, let me think. Let me think. In what order do I do them? Do I want to edit the borders or do I want to edit the polygon itself? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm going to use a line 2D. I'm going to use a polygon. I'm going to use a collision polygon. Uh, fa what am I doing? Collision polygon. Okay, collision polygon is going to be here. That is going to be here. I'm going to rename that to border. I'm going to rename that to background. And those are my walls so far. Um, I think I don't need curves. I don't think I don't I don't need curves. So I'm not going to use curves to edit. Um, I hope it's not going to be a problem. Maybe it's a bad choice. Let me let me let me try something. Uh, curve 2D isn't it, isn't it called what? Isn't it called curve? We did it yesterday. How is it called? Path path 2D. Sorry sorry sorry. Path 2D. Um, I might use a path to edit my walls now that I think about it, because I can do straight lines easily like that. Uh, go into edit mode, and if I need to, I can uh, I can make them rounded. I ported a project from 3 to 4. I had to go back to 3 in order to get web exports working properly. Trying web exports on a new 4.3 project now, though. No. Um, they do work. They do work. Um, but you might have problems. I, I've made games with Godot 4.2, and, and I've made uh, web games with them. Curve 2D is not a node. Yeah, yeah, sorry. It's path 2D that I mean. Um, you know what? I will use a path, I think. I will use a path. It's going to be... It's going to be great. Do you like path? Path 2D? Uh, and I think we can do get back points. It's going to be... It's going to be pretty resource intensive for straight lines, though. Uh, that might be a problem, but we can decimate, we can decimate the points, I know that. Uh, so I'm slightly switching what I'm usually doing, because I'm usually having a setup where I simply use a line 2D like that to create something, uh, and then I create collisions using that. But now that I'm thinking about it, I think I want the flexibility of the path 2D. A uh, resource should be local to scene, also. Okay, so... Yeah, let's do that. Let's... Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, and we have a closed functionality now. This is so great. Thank you, Godot, for being awesome. Thank you, Godot, for being awesome. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, funk create... How do, how do we call that? Create walls. I don't think I'm going to pass anything. Um, I know you guys use. I know you guys use unique no unique names a lot. I'm not used to them anymore. I'm not used to them yet. Sorry, but we can try to use them a bit more. Let's try to show you how to do things correctly. Uh, what am I doing? I'm struggling. So. On the ready function, we are definitely going to do create walls. Uh, process function... Um, we might need it to later if we want to create a tool script. Um, okay, so what I want to do is do points. Um, I want to do path, curve, get baked points. I think this is going to return me a pool packed vector 2D array. Packed vector 2D array, really? Interesting. Oh, it's renamed. It used to be pool vector 2 array, and now it's packed vector 2 array, right? So it's uh, packed. Ah, oh, come on. It's packed vector 2 array. All right. We are getting the points. Um, what I want, though. Give me a second. I know we can decimate. 
Oh, it's called Tessellate. It's called Tessellate. So Tessellate returns a list of points along the curve with a curvature controlled point density. That is, the curvier parts will have more points than the straighter parts. This approximation makes straight segments between each point, then subdivides those segments until the resulting shape is similar enough. This is cool, right? So, this is a problem. If you use path, if you just use a path, uh, let me show you what I mean. If you use a path and you do that, um, you agree that from from here to here, it's a straight line. So you need two points. That's it. Starting point, end point. But now, if you have a curve, you need way more points to define that. Because in the end, you want to drive... Uh, you want to have a bunch of points to drive the line 2D or the polygon 2D. The problem is that, by default, it's going to bake interval 5, so it's going to give you, I guess, a point every 5 pixels or something. I don't know exactly how it works. So you're going to have a bunch of points in here. And at some point, Godot is going to say, hey, uh, you have too many points. And it's going to be slow, it's going to be horrible. So the good thing about, instead of, going, of doing get baked points, we can take the curve, curve 2D, and we can do tessellate. And tessellate is going to return you the same points, but tessellated. You can see it as removing a bunch of useless points, right? At some point. It's a lot of points. So instead of that, let's do tessellate, I guess. Let's do tessellate with the default things. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything. Um, and you know what? I can comment stuff. Um, tessellate to remove useless points example along a straight line all right that way you can you can have the code and it's and it's interesting for you so then what you want to do uh let's make all of them unique name and then let's take all of them and grab them in here i still i still want to have them in on ready um because because I don't know, I like that. Okay. So then what you can do with those points? Well, you can do var points. Uh, no, not at all. You can do collision points. Uh, set. Ah, I'm struggling today. Set deferred. We want to set the property uh, polygon, I think it is. And we want to use the points. Incredible, right? Then we want to do background polygon. And we want to use the points. Then we want to use border. Uh, points, and we want to use the points. And normally, why set deferred? Uh, because this is collision shape, so it's physics stuff. Physics stuff, I use set deferred and call deferred all the time. Because you don't know what Godot is going to do with the, with the physics stuff. So by doing set deferred, you're safer. Remind me of how SVG works. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What game are we making? Um, I think there's an explanation with, like, game. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's prototype. Red Dead Redemption 3. Exactly. I have completely switched from already vars to four nodes to using getters since that works in tool scripts um, as well as normal scripts. What do you mean, getters? What do you mean? What is your setup? Like, you use export vars? You mean, you mean instead of unready, use exports? I know, I know lots of people are moving to exports. I know. But I use exports too much already, so I don't know if it's a good idea. Okay, uh, create walls. It was layers, but collision layers. Thank you, guys. Let's go, it's always layers. It's always layers. So now, what is the game about? How, how do we do... That so we can take the walls, we can take the walls that are here, right? Uh, the background is disturbing, the background is not helping it. We can see it too much. Let's make it darker for now, and we'll see later on if we want to move on from this. But let's make it darker because it's a bit hard to read. Yeah, okay, let's go with let's go with that. Lazy loading, basically, lazy loading. Uh, get var connection line, no to the get, if not connection line, connection line, get node or null. <sighs> wow, okay. Okay, okay, I see, I see. 
I find it cumbersome though. But uh, okay. Uh, so wolves are. How are we going to edit that? Well, simple. We are going to say editable children path 2D. Uh, and because that curve is local to scene, I think it should be fine. And so now we can put the wolves wherever we want. So why not? Why not? Why not? Why not try a few things? I don't know. Why not try a few things? The problem with that technique, the problem with that technique is that I need to make the walls on both sides and this is frustrating as hell. Uh, is there a way to say that it's closed? Yes, thank you. It's frustrating as hell because you need to do that then. You need to edit the walls like this and so I'm not a huge fan of that but it's going to be good enough for a prototype. If you want to use that later, you need to find a better solution. Um, it was a big problem in my game, Color Space. Editing the, editing the world like that was incredibly painful. Incredibly painful. Incredibly painful. Uh, the issue is that ready isn't run until the game runs, not run in the editor, and I want most of what I make visible in the editor. I understand what you mean. I understand what you mean. Um, I understand what you mean. What I usually do uh, when I have tool scripts, I, I have to do a combination of um, uh, assuming there is an on ready or checking if we have it or not. Like, yeah, I see what you mean. It's, it's, it's a bit painful. I, I get, I would love to have a better solution. It's always painful to do, uh, to do that. Um, let's launch the playground and let's see if it does what I want. It should be, but we never know. It is a bit slow. I hope you guys are good. Is everything, is everything fine? Look at that. We have a level. We have a level. Um, we need one fix though. We need one fix. Collision shape, very important. You need to remove the build mode from solids to segments. Okay? Because if you do solids, it means that the, the whole interior is going to be a collision shape. And what we want is the shape outside to be uh, the walls. Okay? So now, if we launch and we launch in visible collision shape, I don't know how it's going to look like in Godot 4. Kind of like a lightweight level editor. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 incredible. I don't know why people are not using that. Um, do I have my visible collision visible collision shape? So why am I not seeing that? Because it's ah, okay. So okay, it's a bit frustrating. Godot, Godot is not um, Godot is not showing you the build mode with the collision shape. So right now it looks like the interior is a collision shape, but the truth is it's only going to be on the borders. I guess this is a fix that we we should recommend, right? If you change the build mode, it should be different. Like, look, if I launch in solids, I think it's going to be the same. You see? You see the interior. And if you launch in segments, you will see the interior too. Yeah, so it's a bit frustrating. Because it looks like it's not working, but it, I think it is. If you have time and you want to make a, an issue, you can do that. What is border? It wasn't here. Okay, I can, I can recap really quickly how we are setting up uh, the game. So I'm creating walls. I have a scene with a static body as the child, okay, acting as the wall. Then I have a polygon 2D, which is going to be the background. Uh, you don't see it at the moment because there's nothing, but the background looks like that for now. Uh, I'm going to remove the data because it looks like shit. Uh, then we have borders, which is a line 2D, so the line 2D is going to create a border like that, okay? Then we have a path 2D, which is used to uh, draw the path the way we want. The cool thing about path 2D is that we can have straight lines, just like this one, or we can have curves, crazy curves, which is really, really cool, okay? And finally, we have a collision shape, which is a collision polygon, which is going to use uh, the same behavior, the same, not behavior, sorry, the same data 
as what we are creating with the path. And so the cool thing about that is you drive both the visuals and the collisions using only one path 2D node, which honestly is pretty convenient. And if you know Smart Shape 2D, Smart Shape 2D, it's an add-on for Godot. I don't know if it has been ported to Godot 4, unfortunately, but Smart Shape 2D is basically based on that. Smart Shape 2D. Um, sorry, give me a second. Ah, my coffee. Oh, my coffee is going to be... Smart Shape 2D is basically based on that. As you can see, you can edit the curve and it's moving everything. Uh, it's just a bit more involved. Like in Smart Shape 2D, you can do way more stuff. It's uh, it's better. Let's say it's better. But my, my solution is simple enough. And so I use that very often. Okay, so those are my walls. And in my playground, as you can see, I'm placing my walls uh, wherever I want. I can then take the pass 2D. Uh, let's put the collision. Let's put the collision behind everything because we don't we don't really need it. So do you set only the path 2D and have the script set polygon and the wall line 2D collision? Yes, exactly. You can see the function to create is here. Create walls. The function is here. We tessellate to remove a bunch of points because the curve is going to create a lot of points. And then we set those points on the collision polygon, on the background polygon, and on the on the border. It's polygons in Godot are super powerful because you can also do a lot of um, operations on them. I have a video on my second YouTube channel if you're interested. Uh, I think we might have something for that. On my second YouTube channel, I have a video about uh, the geometry class, but also the polygons in general. I have two videos I, at least on them. You can watch that. I think it's interesting. And it's very underrated. It's very, very underrated. I guess my only my only complaint, and I can show you it right now, my only complaint is that you can't multi-edit. So if you take a point, right? If you take a point, you can move a point, but you can't move multiple points at the same time. This is incredibly frustrating. Incredibly frustrating. And I think at some point, I might try to do a PR for that. Because being able to box select a bunch of points and move them together, it would make the tool a hundred times more uh, better. So yeah. They still use my unfinished chicken game clip on the page. Oh, it's from you, Guyunger. No. The game looks super cool. I always, I, always, uh, I always thought the game looked cool. This is so cool. What, what was it? It was, a, it was a platformer or some kind of like... Uh, uh, some kind of Metroidvania? Please finish it and have and have stupid weapons like throwing bones or whatever. It looks it looks super cool. I think many times I have collision plus polygon, uh, and if it's simple, I just create it manually because I felt like copying stuff by script would be more work. But it's almost a one-liner. Uh, yeah, and you can turn that into a component that you attach to whatever node you're creating, or you can have a base scene as I'm doing like walls, and then boom, it works. You can definitely create your own tool like that. And, and so you don't have to recreate it every time. Such an obvious feature. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would be, it would be really good. Um, I don't know how difficult it is. Um, is there any other example where we have box select in Godot? Because right now, if I try to do a box select, it's not creating a box, right? It's, tr it's trying to move whatever node is inside. So maybe on the path 2D... We should have an option, maybe right there, or maybe a shortcut, and we can go into box select. Timelap does, does box select. Okay, so so we have the code already somewhere, so we can look at it. I was trying to make some weird mobile controller where you scroll the screen to walk, and Angry Birds like launching for jumping. Oh, interesting. And it 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 didn't work. I I, I love uh, I love when you have a different controller. Like it's not just your usual uh, hold right to move right. It it sounds interesting. If you want to collab and make the game, uh, hit me up. <laughs> hit me up. If, if, if you need someone else to work with you to make the game, hit me up. <laughs> Time up this box selects. Okay, so we can definitely like, take a look at that. Are you creating your walls procedurally? Uh, not yet. Not yet. And I'm probably not going to do it this stream because, yeah. Do you mind feedback? I would make the path 2D the root object. Then it will create static body, collision, and other stuff as children. So it will be easier to use without using child scenes. Uh, maybe even set the script to be a custom class. Dr. Revert, you are totally right. 
honestly, you are totally right. Um, but right now I'm prototyping, I'm not trying to make a tool. But I think you're right, it would make maybe make more sense. Uh, what I like about my solution right now is that from, from, from the scene tree right there, I can see that this is going to be a wool. I can see that this is going to be a static body, right? Whereas if I do it the opposite way, the root node is going to be a curve or a path 2D in this case, and I don't know what it's going to be. So then it would need to be a custom class maybe. Um, or it would need to be more like, we would need to have a way to decide what we do with it or whatever. But I totally understand what you mean. It would make sense, but I'm not going to change it right now. I might, okay, cool. I need to collaborate more, I said. I'd say this year, I need to collaborate more. And I've already taken part into uh, two videos. One with... Um, one with... Uh, skill Up. I don't remember. And the other one... The other one is not, is not out there yet, so I can't show you. But you're going to see pretty soon. It's pretty cool. And it's with people from the community, so yeah. That's fair, yeah. But, it, but it's a great suggest suggestion. And it also shows you that in Godot you can do things in many different ways, right? You can do things in many different ways. Um, okay. I might do a quick... I might do a quick thingy. I might do a quick thingy. Let me see my borders. Okay, so my border looked like that. My borders are white. It's prototyping phase, so I don't know if... Uh, I don't know what I'm going to to use. Um, can we see? Can we see that if I do uh, repeat enabled, uh, then I need to not change the color. Um, this is not going to result well from afar. It will look it will look very weird from afar. I know that the small lines don't look great from uh, from a distance. I know that they don't look great. Uh, this looks bad. Stairs, maybe that. No, this looks good for 3D stuff. This looks good for 3D stuff. Okay, and finally we have that. Oh, you know what? That might be good. And then I can scale it a bit. Uh, scale it in the opposite direction. Three. Maybe I scale it even more. Four. How does it look like if we launch the game... Mm, you see you see what I what I don't like about those very small details is that when the game is not running at full screen of uh, uh, in full screen because those lines are so small we are not going to see them so I might have to default to I might have to default to another texture which like a more simple texture. Um, this one is good, I think. And we want four. So it's going to look very similar. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you know myself, if you if you see me uh, often on stream, I I cannot I cannot just do prototype stuff. I have to also do a bit of visuals at the same time. This is what I like. I like to do both. Okay? So be be gentle with me. Um, it looks a bit weird, but I think it's not too bad. I think it's not too bad. It's definitely... Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Um, we have that. We have our playground with the wolves. This is great. This is great. We need a, we need a character. We need a character, right? So let's start. Change. Character body. And let's call that... Player. We need to make some progress. Player, player, player. Wow. Um, so, how big do I want my player? It's a great question. I want a sprite. I want a collision shape 2D. I probably want something to show you where you're going to, to aim. Um, but I'm going to do that after... PT Peacebreaker isn't here. Yeah, why why is Peacebreaker not here? I think he was not 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 available, I guess. I don't remember. Um I'm using to use I'm going to use a circle shape, that is for sure. I just don't know what kind of of size. So let's put my player in here and let's see. Oh my god, it is big. 
So if you consider if you consider the the shape right there, right? This is how I do prototype stuff. I look at the shape in here. This is the screen size. And my player right now is incredibly big compared to this to the to the screen. I think this is more this is more like it. It is still very big. We need to find if it's bigger big or not. We're missing V as well. Yeah, but V has been missing for a while. It might be too big. It might be too big. Let's go with 24. And for the... Sp I'm, I'm going to use a sprite. I don't like to use sprites. But I'm going to use the Godot icon for the sprite. I'm going to use the Godot icon for the sprite. Just because... Uh, What the fuck? Yes. Just because. Okay. I'm going to use the Godot icon. And we are definitely going to remake that. Um, what else do we need to make a character controller? Maybe we slap on the camera? <sighs> For easier prototyping, what do you think? Thought you are contra contractually ob obligated to use the Godot icon. You, you would be surprised. I usually use a polygon. And I don't use the, the Godot icon very often. I actually made a video where I talk about a few steps to make your prototype look better. And I say don't use the Godot icon. Because honestly, it doesn't look good. I know, I understand it's cool, and it's like and it's like the default cube in, in Blender, but it doesn't look good. And so, if you're using your, your Godot icon to, uh, to tile the background and stuff like that, oh my god, it's painful to watch. Heresy. You can cancel me, you can cancel me. Hot takes today, hot takes. I just keep camera in main scene and have it follow the player. Interesting, interesting. I think I would go, I think I would go with the camera on the player, because I think it's probably one of the easiest way um to have it set up what am i doing camera 2d i think it's one of the easiest ways to have the, the camera on the player stop the stream sorry i'm being arrested but no slender detected um i think i would i would put it here to be honest and then i would probably put a bit of smoothing enabled uh the smoothing i want it to be relatively f fast we'll see um but i think i would go with that Stream key revoked. No, no, please. I think I would go with that. Uh, because that way we don't have to... In a game like that, it might make sense to create some sort of rooms and have the camera like move from rooms to rooms. It depends on kind of what kind of style you want. But also having the camera on the player itself... Pff, yeah, it might be easier. Might be easier... But now when your player dies, your camera is gone. Oh no. Um, yeah, but when my player dies, I usually don't... Um, I usually don't remove the player. I just disable it, to be honest. I, I usually keep my player. Godot Robo, Robot versus Default Blender Cube versus Unreal Mannequin. Who wins in a bar fight? Uh, Rothio. Hello, you guys. Agree, the amount of people use the Godot icon is a sign of how lacking Godot is in tool to get a decent art in easily. Exactly. And that's why I use polygons all the time. You mean this evening? Hello, Rothio. Rothio? Is that how I, how I say it? Rothio? Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, people. We're the Spaniard army. Uh, hola. My... My... <laughs> Hablo un poco español? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let, let, let not, let's not go into that territory. I, I suck at it. I can understand some Spanish, but I understand... I, I can't speak Spanish. It's too difficult. Uh, welcome to the stream. We are prototyping something. I hope you guys are doing great, and thank you for the raid. What were you doing? Mi nombre es... Victor. You, you, kind, of have to, you kind of have to say B instead of V, right? Almost that, but the strong syllable is... V? The strong syllable is V? Rodeo? Ro what? I don't understand what you said. <laughs> you did well. Thank you. Well, welcome guys, welcome guys. Uh, take a seat, enjoy. We've been talking a lot at the beginning of the stream, and so now we are prototyping stuff. So it doesn't look like much, but it's going to get better, don't worry. Ro the O. Ro the O. Ro the O, okay. Is that is d does it mean something in Spanish or no? And and then what? Tome? Tome, I guess. 
Hola, Victor. Hello. Rocio. Ah, Rocio. Is that better like that? Ro if if I say it, Rocio. But there's an there's an accent on the on the on the I. So should I pronounce it differently? Rocio. That's perfect. Rocio means do. And what and what does do mean? It, it means what? Do. <laughs> you you say that to me as if as if I speak English. I don't know what it means. Dew is the water in the form of droplets that appears on thin exposed objects in the morning or evening. Dew and not do to condensation. Wow, that looks that's that is cool. It's a cool nickname. My nickname in comparison is shit. Is the water on grass in the morning? That is so cool. It's poetic in a way. Are you French? Oui, je suis français. D'ailleurs, on peut parler français si vous voulez. Non, je rigole, on n'a pas le droit. Je peux parler un tout petit peu français, mais après la modération, elle peut plus... Elle peut plus corriger, donc on parlera pas trop français, ok? We go back to English, otherwise moderation is not able to moderate stuff. <laughs> rosé? Yes, la rosé, exactly. It's an actual name. Cool, that's really cool. So it, it is your real name? Am I, am I crazy? I'm sorry, I don't know you very much. I've discovered you through the the good old stream takeover stuff, but I don't know you very much, to be honest. Victor means the one who good old. Exactly. <laughs> Me semblait bien que cet accent disait un truc. Comment ça? Comment ça? Mon accent, il est parfait? Mon accent, il est indescriptible? Comment ça? Non, mais oh. Now, if I speak like this. Now, if I start speaking like this. Okay, you can say my accent is French. But when I speak my normal accent, you can't say that I sound French. No, you can't say that. I'm, I'm not happy. I don't like that. Please don't do this to me. <laughs> I don't sound French when I speak uh, normally. Uh, come on. You don't sound French in English. Okay, thank you, alors. I, I was uh, worried for a moment that you thought I was sounding French. But when I'm tired, my French is, is coming is uh, coming out. J'adore les fruits au sirop. <laughs> uh, Rocio also means good dough. Avocado. <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't sound French in English. Okay, your English accent is really right, but your Spanish accent is like a French Spanish, ac Spanish accent. Oh, <gasps> that might be that might be true. Okay, I, I do agree. I would like to speak Spanish. You know why I don't... You know why I, I think I sound Spanish? I sound fre French in Spanish? Because I don't... Um, I don't have the courage to try to pronounce it correctly. And I think that's why many, many, many French speakers sound French when they speak English. Because they don't try the accent. And they don't allow themselves to really, to really try the accent. To really embrace the accent. And so I do the same in Spanish. It's like, I'm like, eh, I'm like hesitant. And so you can hear that I'm hesitant, I guess. Avocado, let's go. Avocado, I guess. Um, it is raining hard outside, but England has like 4,000 accents. Yeah, 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 but you know what I mean. Accents in general are, are not a problem. If you, if, you, if, you, if you try to communicate with people, it's fine. Accents don't really matter. Need a new voice for Spanish. Exactly, you need a new voice. You need to you need to put on that mask where you speak Spanish. Courage or boredness. Boredness? That must be some wise analogy for game dev in there. There must be, yeah, yeah, but we are too tired to think about that. <laughs> My dungeon crawler changed textures. I never understand this unique. You don't understand this unique? Um, by default, shapes are... By default, shapes are shared. If you want your shapes to be different, even though you have multiple instances, you make them local to scene. And when a, when, a, when, a, when a shape is a reference to another one, you first make it unique to make sure that it's uh, detached from the other one. But most of the time, what you want to do is make it local to scene. And then, just like in my wall scene, I'm able to like draw shapes and they're not connected, right? You know that, Solo. You know that, but you're tired, maybe. Uh, okay, let's do the player, guys. Let's do the player controller. We need a player controller. Oh my god, it's raining so hard. I hope, I hope it's not going to cut internet. 
my internet has been really bad uh, this this past week, I would say. Uh, and before that, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on the treadmill a bit more. Is the internet using infrared, or was it right raining affecting it? Uh, <laughs> uh, so rain, rain would wouldn't directly interfere with that. I do agree, but um, imagine that thunder is hitting something, or no, I don't know. <laughs> it used to be. I think. I think. I'm. I'm used to. I'm used to the old times where internet was uh, going through the phone lines, and so. If there's a storm, the phone line can be can be uh, cut off, right? More like an on-off effect. Yes, yes, yes. Not like not like shitty internet because of, of rain, but yeah. I have I have fiber optics, but it's not in, it's not great. Uh, Guild Wars. Uh, I don't think so. It's from Riot. It's Riot Games Creator Safe playlist. Uh, you can find it on Spotify. Okay, so let's create our character. We need a few exports. So export uh, export category as, f as f first. We are going to do movements. Then later on, we might need uh, something for like depend dependencies. Yes. Uh, whoops, that's a mistake in here. Uh, we need to make some progress, guys. It's been a while and we are not doing anything. Uh, I'm talking too much. I'm talking way too much. Export var. Speed. I want that float to be... I have no idea. 400, maybe. Uh, export var. Excel. I'm going to use uh, 15. Export uh, var. Friction. Float. I might use a very low friction. We're going to see how it works. Classic stream. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, don't hesitate, guys, to check out the pinned comment at the top, at the top of the chat. It's a comment on Twitter. It's a it's a post on Twitter where there's my photo, and you have to guess my age. Guess my age to win a key, a dash pong key. That can be cool. Uh, we will need something for the dash. So export var dash. Uh, let's call it speed. Let's call it speed dash. Because everything related to speed will be in here. Let's make maybe make it a thousand. Export var duration. Uh, uh, duration what? Uh, I said fash instead of dash. Uh, dash duration. I said fash again. What the fuck? What? It's going to be something pretty, 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 pretty short. I don't know. 0 0.08. We can start with 0 0.1 maybe. Where are you going? I'm um I'm going to to Spain. It's still speed fash. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> Thank you guys. I, this was just a test. This was just a test to see if you are following or not, and you are. So congrats, congrats. Uh, Nishat, hello. We met at Rothio Tome Art. What? We met, Nashet? We met already? What, what, what? Export var duration. Um, and then we're going to have some uh, attack stuff and all of that. Rothio, the streamer. Yes. Dashpong looks like a fun party game. All we need is friends. Ah, that's the problem. I do agree. I do agree. I do agree it's the problem. But otherwise, Dashpong is pretty cool, yeah. Um, all right, we can start with that. Um, I'm going to need the physics process for sure. What do we use first? What do we use first? We need... So, process, I'm not going to use it. Um, we need a rotation point. So, let's take a look at how we should do that. Uh, there's no anchor in Godoa. What am I doing? I need a node 2D that I will use as a rotation point. Okay, this is going to be um, 
this is going to be... I'm going to call it Anchor Weapon. Okay? Marker. I don't use markers for that, uh, usually. I use markers to pinpoint a location, personally. That's why I say I, I think markers are not super useful. Poor marker be like, marker is not useful. Marker is shit. Do you want a marker? You want? You want one? I can I can turn it into a marker. Okay, do it for you. You you hear thunder? You can you can maybe even see it sometimes. It's like lighting me up. Uh, anchor weapon. And so basically, it's going to point towards that. So I think the weapon, the way I'm seeing it. The way I'm seeing it is, uh, let's create another node. I, I like to have nodes. I'm going to call it weapon. I'm going to put a, put a sprite. And you're going to be pleased because I'm going to use a freaking, uh, a freaking icon, a Godot icon, even though it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to use that to make a sword, some sort of sword. Okay. Weapon, sword. We have our anchor, we have our sprite, we have our weapon. The weapon is probably going to be somewhere around here. And then we have our weapon and we are going to put it in here. And the sprite will be rotated like this, maybe? Uh, oh shit. This is stupid. I think it can be... It can be always like that it can be always pointing in the direction of, of where you are and then it will do when you when you attack it will do it will arm really quickly and then it will do a slash in front oh my <laughs> the thunder was incredibly powerful holy shit i love nature i love nature i don't know if i do that or if my weapon is uh, like that all the time. Maybe it, ma it makes more sense. Maybe it's like that all the time. And then it's just... It's just doing a, doing a, a swing. Maybe it makes more sense to have it like that, right? Um, we can always modify it. And on that weapon, I'm going to use an animation player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know what you think. Uh, I too don't like the animation player. But... It is going to be like that for now, because it's just easier. <laughs> well, that was big. It was big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you change the pivot point of a sprite 2D? Um, you don't. Can you... Of a sprite 2D, sorry? A, you have offset in here, if you want. You can change the offset. And, and you can modify the offset. You can see it's modifying it. Um, why don't you why don't you like the animation player um it's too it's too static it's too rigid it's too rigid so for example if you do an animation um and you and you need that animation to react to how f how fast you're going or how strong you're doing your attack or whatever it's always going to be the same and you can't change it if you need to change one parameter in your animation you can't or you have to resort to weird things such as modifying the keys from outside, which is incredibly painful. Duplicating your animation, which is incredibly painful. Uh, or call a function in the middle of your of your thing to like change the uh, to change the color. Uh, whereas, holy shit! Whereas with a, a tween, you can do everything dynamically. The only problem with a tween, I guess, is that it's not visual enough. When you create the tween, you don't see what you're doing. Do you do your own animations? Well, the quality of the animations is is not incredible, so yeah, I do. <laughs> um, I'm going to animate the weapon itself. I think I'm going to animate the weapon itself. Maybe not. Maybe not. Let me think, let me think, because my in the end, uh, instantiate, hitbox, uh, not a hitbox, a hurtbox. Because in the end, I'm going to have a hurt box with a collision shape that is going to be 
like that. Like when you attack, you're going to have a big collision in front of you like this during the whole swing. Right? Maybe even bigger than that. I don't know. And so I'm wondering, I'm wondering, this is my weapon. I'm wondering if I, I don't want to move that collision shape. I want to move, I will just move the sprite. So what I might do is uh, use that offset in here. And uh, put that in here. No, right there. And do something like that. And I will animate directly the sprite. I don't like to animate directly the sprite because I never know what the sprite is going to be. So what I usually do is I I use another another node for that. That was a close one. Yeah. What are you using so? For what? For animations? I use the engine. I use the engine basically. Or, or you mean instead of the animation player, what do you use? Twins. I'm sorry. Sometimes I'm I'm missing what you're saying. Okay, let's let's go with that. We don't care. Okay, um, let's put that in here. Let's put that in here. Let's put that in here. And what we are going to do is a very very basic animation just to have an idea uh, of how it's going to be like. So first principle of the animation anticipation. So you should go in the opposite direction as far, uh, uh, at first, then you swing, boom, full swing, okay, uh, then you swing, finished swing, then the swing has a bit of momentum, so you put it here, and then you go back to the original uh, in here. So right now it looks like this, which is incredibly bad. You might agree. So what we do is we take all of that, we ease in and out. It looks slightly better, but it needs a bit of adjusting, of course, because uh, our game needs to be much faster. So the swing itself needs to be quite, quite big. Then we drag it on and then we come, we come back. Let's see. Okay, it's shit. It is still shit. I really don't like that. What is happening here? It's doing something weird. Same thing here. Same thing here. Before we arrive here, we should go... We should go past. Right? We should go past that. So, in minus, I guess. We, we will make it better. We will make it better. Right now, it looks really, really ugly, right? You can just animate with example rotating like a swing the sprite with the hurt box. Can you just animate with example rotating like a swing the sprite with the hurt box? That's kind of what I'm doing, but I don't want to animate the hurt box um, because the attack is going to be so fast. I'm simply going to enable the whole hurt box during the whole duration of the attack. I think it's going to be fine. Um, I will not make the collision move with the with the sprite, but we can always do that if we find that it's not good enough. Um, but I think it's going to be good enough. So, of course, you know what is wrong? You know what is wrong? It's just that it's... We would, we would need to use Bezier curves in here and, 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 and dive in the values a bit more. Like, right now it looks... Looks a bit stupid. It looks really stupid because everything is just too long and stuff, but... But we should not focus on that right now, so let's do 0 0.65. And so what we can do is the hurt box can be uh, enabled and disabled, so we might as well call the method on them. We might as well call the method on them and say uh, enable and then disable at some point. Boom. Duplicate that. Disable. Are you on a treadmill? I am. It's raining and he's probably uh, treading water by this point. With that thunder in the background. <laughs> that's that's true. Uh, so basically I'm arming. Boom. Starting from here, I want to enable. I want to enable my hitbox. Then boom, I'm doing that. This is finished. I'm giving you a few, a few frames. 
and then it stopped and it goes back right so boom 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 okay and it, 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 it's it is what it is it is what it is uh the weapon itself the weapon itself could handle the weapon itself could handle things but i think i'm going to put everything into the player script because it's it's so simple that we might as well just put everything like when you prototype it's okay to make things that are a bit messy i think okay so many peoples, welcome everyone. I hope you're enjoying what is happening. Um, so at least let's grab. Let's see. Let's see. Let's let's start and we'll see. Okay. I need I need to go faster. So anchor weapon. Anchor weapon is going to rotate. Rotation is going to be equal to. Is going to be equal to. Um, get global mouse position, and I want the angle, get global mouse position, let me think, I could take, uh, what do I want, I want, I want the angle, but it's going to be the angle from zero, so no, 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 I don't want that, I want to be looking at, I guess the direction between the player and that, <laughs> let's see let's see if we want that are you using passive star Godot's theme uh or i think it is yes i think it is it's the old version he made an update but it's 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 the old version um all right let's go into here and let's see if that works already so you see now we have our weapon uh orienting towards uh where we are right incredible i know <laughs> incredible concept uh congrats mr elliptic you, you you made a game uh we have a camera do you think the player is big enough i think the player is big enough to be honest i think it's i think the, the right now the proportions are not too bad the proportions are not too bad so let's start with that and let's say um i know you guys might prefer to use input so let's use input to be honest with you, I used to do everything inside the physics or the process function. Um, but I understand that using input can be a bit better. So if event is pressed, we can use is pressed, I think. No? Is pressed? Um, is pressed? No, 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 no. Is action pressed? And I want is action pressed attack. If it's attack, we are going to do attack. And we are going to create that function. So that function attack could definitely be inside. If you're making a real game and you're uh, and you might have more weapons and stuff, you definitely should have a on your player. You definitely should have the weapon be another scene, and um, and you're handling some of that inside of that scene. But we are prototyping stuff, so pff, fuck it, fuck it. Uh, don't think I have ever used input, lazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also using uh, physics process most of the time. Th honestly, I'm not concerned about uh, about processing power or whatever. It, it doesn't really matter. But let's say that it puts things in a separate place, so that might be nice, right? Compared to uh, um, compared to having everything inside a physics process. So yeah. Uh, and so when we attack, what do we want to do? Well, we want to uh, already var that animation player. So you see the problem with having those dependencies is that it looks like it's it's my... I'm going to say weapon, weapon anim. Uh, I'm going to say weapon anim because otherwise it's not going to be clear. But yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's, let's focus on making something that works. Uh, I think the animation is called swing. Even though it could be called attack, which would make way more sense but it's called swing so let's take a look at that um and let's make the playground the current scene do as victor says not as he does exactly that's the idea so as you can see we can swing uh we can swing it doesn't look like we are enabling or disabling the collision shape 
Um, because I'm <laughs> because I don't know how I coded that. I don't remember. So yeah. A great amount of input checks. Input is important. Only a few. It doesn't really matter. Why do you think it matters in terms of performance? I'm not even sure, to be honest. Um, so as you can see right now, our starting our starting path is not even is not great because we can't we can't collide with the walls. So we need something much smaller to start. So we're going to put our player somewhere here. We need something much smaller. And so hopefully let's continue like that. Uh, let's continue like that. Let's make the corridors small enough at the beginning. And just add the collision disabled to the animation, right? Yeah, 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 but I, I use a component, so I didn't I didn't show you that. But this hurt box thingy is a component that I'm bringing for, uh, from my other projects. And so this component is handling uh, detecting collisions and stuff. So I don't want to modify the collision shape directly. I want to ask the component to disable itself because the component might have other things to do, right? So I'm asking, I'm, I'm using the the disable function of the component, but this is an old component of mine. And honestly, it's a bit, it's a bit bad because it's using set deferred monitoring. It's removing the monitoring. And so visually it doesn't look like it's disabled. So I don't like that. But anyway, it's, 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 it's prototyping. When you first transport, if you want the UI or some other parts to make some input as handled, then you put it in an un unhandled input. Add an action map to the mouse click, and even if the UI marked it as handled, uh, if you just do input is action just pressed, it will still return true. Okay. Takeover week might be a returning feature amongst other ideas. Let's go. This is really cool. Um, okay, so now what we need to do, we need to detect, we need to detect some stuff. Um, we need to detect some stuff, and so we need that, that hurt box to be able to detect, to be able to detect multiple things. Ah! <laughs> so you see, the problems will arise right away. Uh, this component was made for dealing damage to things, right? And not to walls. So, <laughs> so the problem that I'm going to face right away with that component is that it will, it will simply, it will not detect colliding with the wall, I think, uh, because it's looking for uh, area entered, and it's not looking for the walls. <sighs> we could, we could, we, in here we can do many different things. We can work around our component, which is already built like that. We can modify the component. Or we can even like add another component, which is just going to look for collisions with the wool, which might be a bit overkill, but it might also be simpler. I don't really know, to be honest. I don't really know. Um, because when I created that component, I never, I never thought I would be using it to detect walls. I just wanted to detect enemies. So I could modify the code or another way to do it. I could turn the walls. I could turn the wool. <laughs> I could turn the wool into uh, a hitbox. I could tell the wool to have a hitbox, and so now <laughs> we can we can say we can take damage. The wool can take damage, and this is how you find yourself in a game where the train is in reality just an NPC with a train attached to his head, and that's how the train is moving, because you already have a way to move stuff around, but it's made for people. But now you need just that... At that spot, you need a train. So you put the train on a, on someone, right? So you can break through the walls. That could be a solution. Honestly, it could it could become a feature. That's how you end up being able to finish... Uh, to fish into the statues in Pokemon gyms. You see, it's... it's yeah, that's the truth of game dev. So right now, to make my life easier, I might as well uh, put a hitbox. Put a hitbox. I'm going to use the layer. I'm going to use the layer one, okay? Uh, because layer one is going to be walls, and we are going to uh, modify those layers in just a second. 
And so in my walls in here, I might as well uh, grab the collision polygon 2D. So I'm going to say hitbox collision, and we might just do that. It's a weird way of doing it, but it's fine, right? Do you think it's fine? You can judge me, I don't care. You can judge me, I don't care. And so this heart box is going to look for the wolves and then for the enemies. Let's say the enemies are maybe layer four. Uh, you know what? Let's go into the project settings, uh, physics, 2D, common. Where is where is the where is the physics? Where's the layer stuff in Godot? 2D physics. Okay, layer one. Let's call it wolves. Uh, I usually put some space between the things just to be able to add more stuff. Let's say that this is player. Let's say that this is enemies. Uh, we might have bullets at some point or projectiles. I don't know, projectiles. But we are not. We are not going fast enough. It's already. It's it's five. Why do you not need another collision anymore then? The original static body collision. Why do you need? Why do you even need the other collision anymore then? Uh, because you don't want the player to go through. Bye, Zangi. Thank you. Streaming streaming is definitely not the best option. You can go as long as you want. Okay, I have some time. My girlfriend is not home, and I and I said to myself, I can go. I had to leave for a while. Can you rewind about an hour, please? No. <laughs> but don't worry, we didn't do a we didn't do a, a, a whole lot. We are talking way too much. So now the hurt box um, is going to do one damage. Why not? It's it can react to dealt damage, okay? So we can check if we dealt damage. We know how, mu uh, how much we dealt, and we know uh, who has been hurt. So we can check that, and then we are going to be able to have a function called push, where we are going to pass a push vector, I guess, vector 2, and it's going to modify directly the velocity. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. It's going to modify the velocity by doing... Uh, push vector, let me think. I think we are going to completely replace the current velocity. Velocity is going to be push vector. Okay. And so in here, what do we do? In here, what do we do? Um, maybe in the future, to do, check what kind of obstacle it is. Uh, but right now, we are only going to assume we have like uh, walls, maybe? And so, we can push ourselves for that. I'm going to grab the direction, which is a vector 2. Uh, direction between what? Between... Who? Global position minus uh, our global position. That way we know the vector. We can normalize that. Normalized? Uh, no. Is it is it how you call it? How is it called in God of Four? Normalized or normalize? It's not telling me. Why is it not telling me? Can you tell me? <sighs> Godo. Godo, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Normalized. Oh, it's still the same thing. Okay. Uh, is the hitbox or hurtbox just some nodes you've created, or are they library? Yeah, yeah. It's just some things I've created. Press Control and click on the function name. Uh, when it's not recognizing it, it doesn't work. But when it's uh, when it's re uh, when it's recognizing it, it doesn't work either. But it doesn't work sometimes. But it doesn't work. What is a variant type like any? Yes, uh, we can specify what it is because we know it's an int. Uh, the who though, we don't know what it is. Missing a bracket. Missing a bracket. Where am I missing? F1. Type normalize. Yep. Because it has variant. Uh, it doesn't know where to look for the function. Probably, yep. Yeah. It saves my life whenever autocomplete fails. My mistake. Okay, no problem. Anyway, so we have that direction which is normalized, right? I hope I'm in the right direction. Um, and then we can push... We can push using... The opposite of the direction. I could, I could just calculate the direction in the other direction, right? 
Am I am I stupid or what? Am I stupid or what today? I can calculate the direction. You can see it as a normal if you want in a way. Um, and in here I would have the push force. Okay. And the push force we need to define it. Is it is it movement? Not exactly, but at the same time uh, a bit. Push force, it's a float. I have no ideas for the value, so we are just going to try it, and we are going to see, okay? Push force, blah blah blah. Let's go into the physics process. So we rotate our weapon stuff, why not? We are going to do move and... Do I want to collide? Do I want to collide with stuff? Or do I want to slide? I'm, I think I want to collide, to be honest. But now, but now the move and slide is also uh, returning uh, um, collision, so I don't know. Until what hour you'll be streaming? I have no limits, so we'll see. Uh, so VAR collision is going to be a kinematic collision 2D with move and collide. What do we need to pass for the move and collide? The function has changed a bit. We need to pass the vector. Test only, no. Um, do we still need to multiply by delta? Move and collide. Where is move and slide? Am I... What? Am I crazy? Move and collide. Physics body 2D. Yeah. I don't know Godot 4 enough. Move and slide. Are you telling me there's no move and collide? Oh, it's just that it's not at the same spot. Okay, 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 okay. This is weird. Modify velocity. I think we still have to modify. I still, was, I think we still have to do that. Uh, unfortunately, we still have to do multiply by delta ourselves. So it's going to do. It's going to give us a collision. If there is a collision, we want to do something. We want to react to that collision. So we want to velocity. Velocity dot bounce. I'm going to bounce using the collision uh, get normal. And I want to bounce. Okay, let me think. I want to bounce. Do I want the bounce to reduce the force a bit, I guess? Right? I probably want the force to be reduced a bit. Um, since you can't move your character directly except for f with physics, what made you decide to use a character body instead of a rigid body? Not saying it's wrong, just wondering about the thought process. Uh, I generally don't like the rigid body. So it's it's really a matter of preference. Um, in a game like that, where you're only going to kind of react to forces and stuff, um, you could use a rigid body. But anytime you're creating a character controller, I think it makes more sense to use a character uh, body because you can do exactly what you want. At any point, you can just... Uh, teleport the player to another location. Um, you can do a bunch of stuff. You have much more control. The physics body might react weirdly, might accelerate to incre incredible speeds if there's a if there's a weird collision. Um, might be a bit a bit harder to control. <sighs> just just like doing hit stops with a with a rigid body is is much more work. So. In, in general, I prefer to have control over things. Um, okay, we are colliding, we are doing that. Is that okay? Let's check if it works. I'm launching that. Uh, on Hurtbox, dealt damage, how is that possible? Oh, because by default, the Hurtbox is enabled. Whoops. Whoops. So you see why we should put that into... Uh, we should put that into um, into its own scene because we have to do a bunch of stuff. Um, it's not called disable. What? It's not called disable. Also, we could use class name in here. Uh, class name hurt box. This is going to be cool. We can do that. Uh, we don't have to think too much about. Disable and enable, yeah? Okay. Disable. Weapon hurt box. We can say in here that it's a hurt box. Let's go. Okay, so it should not do anything. And then 
All right, incredible, it works. Um, it works, but it doesn't work. Oh, <gasps> you know why it doesn't work? You know why it doesn't work? Um, because we have no idea where exactly we are colliding. We have no idea where exactly we are colliding. Holy shit, I didn't think about that. Ah. No. I didn't think about that. Because we are using an area, uh, you need to raycast. Yeah, unfortunately, I might need to raycast. Um, well, I, might, I might need to raycast. <sighs> I feel like this is always a problem in Godot. Um, in Godot, you want to use physics bodies to get a collision point, right? This is one of the main good aspect like look at this my player is colliding and then is bouncing um simply because he has an idea of where he collided and by default the area is not giving you the collision point and it's frustrating it's frustrating because you can do it yourself i've done it in the past you can you can go and grab all of the collision points by querying the physics server but honestly, the area is so good, it should be able to give you the collision points, and that way you could do anything with it. With, with it. Could you use the position of the hitbox relative to the player? Um, or simply the angle of the weapon? Not really. Not really, because... Um, because... The player is expecting to move... Ah, you might be right. We might we might try to do that and it might work. If it's colliding with something, it would make more sense to use the collision point, but it could work by using just the angle, assuming that if we touch something, we want to move away from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be right. You might be right. Let's try that. You know what? Let's try that. You, we, we can do it. We can do it. It's not very difficult. So instead of doing that direction, uh, but but honestly, this is this is maybe a a proposal that I should open. That by default, the area could give you the collision points very easily, and don't tell me that it's difficult, because there can be multiple collision points. Then you you give all of them. I don't care. You give all of the collision points. Um, it could be so useful. It's all. It's very often the case that. You use an area to detect if something is happening, and then you need to know the general direction because you want to spawn an effect or you want to make the player react to what what, ha what was happening and stuff. And so having to come up with a, a way to find the angle between things or to find where exactly it collided, like having to throw a raycast or whatever, like, come on, it, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. You're already using a physics body to detect stuff. Tell me where are the collisions and that's it would be much easier for me hello emati 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 so i guess what we can do is do anchor weapon dot angle uh just the angle so the rotation we can use the rotation ah oh, come on rotation so this is going to give me the rotation uh that i need to convert into a direction right so i can do vector 2 uh, am I going? Am I going for something crazy right now? Am I doing something way too complicated? I'm rotating a vector two that is on the right. This is going to give me a vector pointing in that direction, and I want to. <laughs> Don't look at what I'm doing. I want to mold, add. I'm rotating it in the rotation plus uh, plus pi to rotate in the other direction, right? Uh, are you the Godot I was waiting for? Of course. Okay, so, so far... <sighs> Is it reacting exactly how I'm thinking it should react? It's not too bad, right? I think it kind of works. It's not too bad. It it kind of works. It's not crazy if it works. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you do that? How would you do that? Is there an easier way to go from an angle to a vector? Is there an easier way? I, I was dealing with this in a jam some month ago and I was stuck on it for too much time. Ah. That's difficult. Sometimes it's difficult like that. Oh, the cat is here. Um Okay. Okay, this is not too bad. So now we need to work on the we need to work on all of that. So push force. Uh we want to push way more. Uh we don't want any acceleration to be honest. I just want friction. So what I want is um in here I want to apply friction. Uh so let's do it here. It's let's do it here. Let's do it here. Uh, apply friction. You cannot see cat without showing. Uh, this one is difficult to pick up. I can't pick up this one. Sorry. Uh, but but probably at some point the the newest one is going to come up, and uh, and she's very she's very easy. So I will definitely pick up pick her up. <laughs> Sorry guys. Hi everyone. Hi the courts. Uh, will this be? On VOD, I need to leave, but I would love to see it later. I think the VOD will stay on, on the Twitch channel, yes. And I forgot to hit record, but I will get the VOD from Twitch later. I will download it. I wanted to record it and I forgot to hit record, so I'm not going to re hit record in the middle of it. Uh, because it's better, like, in, in terms of quality, I would have to... I would have a better... Um, better quality locally, but I forgot. <laughs> We're going to upload it to YouTube, that's perfect. So apply friction. So for that, I guess the simple stuff that we can do is velocity. Um, we have a move toward. I know that people use move toward. I know that people use move toward. Velocity, uh, you could move toward vector 2. And you can move uh, a, with a delta, right? Is move toward by default... Is move toward by default um, invariant, frame rate invariant? I pro pro probably not moved by the delta amount. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use friction multiplied by delta. Let's look. Let's look at that. What is the problem? One argument should be float, but it's vector two. Oh, uh, you can do velocity move towards like that. No, tell me you can do that. Yes, thank you. See you. Good luck. Thank you. Um, okay, there's one thing that I didn't expect, uh, it's possible to detect multiple hits, because the collision shape stays on for too long, so it's possible to detect multiple shapes. Okay, we definitely need to make everything a bit bigger, I guess. Is this idea good enough? Probably, it will be fun, it will be fun, it will be fun. Um, the camera looks a bit weird. I think we need to set it to physics for it to be a bit smoother. Um, a prototype always looks weird at first, and then you add some juice, and it looks really cool. So, I guess it's fine. Uh, okay, let's handle the dash. Let's handle the dash. So, um, let's handle the dash. Elif event is action pressed dash and i'm going to do gamepad support later okay uh we can do we can do dash or start dash and we are going to create those two functions start dash and i'm going to have a stop dash also why not we need to go into production mode, into... Could you disable the hurt box on first damage Dale to help with that? Um, it could be a solution, but the problem with this is... The problem with this is you would uh, only hit one enemy at a time, which would be painful if you have two enemies in front of you. So I guess the solution is more to say um, you can only hit one wall at a time, maybe. That would make more sense, I guess. You hit only one wall. If you hit a wall, then you have to wait um, for the next swing to be able to hit a wall again. But enemies should be dealing damage all the time. 
so start dash. It's simple. We need to do speed is equal to speed dash. Um, we are going to use... I'm not going to use any... Um, I'm not going to use any... Uh, how do you call that? Uh, you guys love them. Uh, state machines. I'm not going to use that. We, the game is definitely not complex enough to have a state machine. Uh, personally, I feel like if you have like two, three, four states maximum, it's, it's not very useful. But then it depends. It depends how you like to do things. If you already have a state machine ready and you and you liked using a state machine, then I can totally uh, I can totally imagine uh, imagine that being a good thing. So I'm going to do it differently. In fact, I'm going to put the speed into an already var speed, which is going to use the max speed, um, and max speed is going to be here. So why do I use why do I use onready? Um, because if you use just a var and you modify and you modify the export, Godot is not going to take that into account. Okay, so let's say you have in your playground your player, you're modifying the speed in here, the maximum speed. If you don't have an onready var, um, it's it's going to use the value that was set through code. So you need on ready. Okay? And so you can reuse that speed equals max speed. You could also define it as normal speed or whatever. I don't know. Um, dashing is equal to true. Okay. Uh, start the dash. If, if we are dashing, we can return. Also, we need to know where we dash. So for that, I'm, I'm simply going to do... Uh, you know what? I'm simply going to do that. I'm simply going to get a direction for my dash. I'm going to get a direction, which is, um, which is, which is that. I want the rotation of that. This is my direction, and I want to set the velocity to that. So direction times speed. Um, all right. And so in here, in here. Um, if I'm dashing, I don't want to be able to do anything, so I'm simply returning, okay? Um, in here, apply the friction, bouncing and stuff. Let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. Let me think. I just don't want to apply friction, so if... If not dashing, you apply friction, maybe we do that. I'm not entirely convinced by the look of that. It looks a bit stupid. But it's going to be uh, it's going to be okay for now. I'm still going to be able to do that. If there's a collision, if there's a collision, uh, if dashing, we stop the dash. We could even call stop the dash. We could even call stop the dash immediately, right? We could call stop the dash, and it's just that if we are not dashing, if we are not dashing, well, we don't do anything. We could just call stop the dash, and we could remove the, the check from here. And we set the velocity to bounce. Okay. Uh, we just need... Uh, I'm going to use a, a timer. I'm not sure. Wensley, hello. I'm going to use a timer. Uh, let's call it timer dash. It's gonna be one shot. It could be it could be done other in, in different ways, but hey. Uh, and I'm going to do stop the dash. Okay. And let's grab that timer. The player is going to be simple enough that we can do that, I think. So if not dashing, blah blah blah, start the dash. And so whenever we are starting the dash, we do start with uh, the dash duration. Okay, let's try and see how it looks. Okay, um, I think friction, I think, Rafa, hello, we have so many cool raids today. So many cool raids today. Hello, guys, Rafa, how are you doing? Thank you for the raid. Welcome, guys. I hope you guys are doing good. What were you doing? Hello, Raiders. 
So many quality people in here. And I'm talking about you, of course. <laughs> Look at that. And you can dash in that direction. Okay, so the, the big problem... I think the big problem is that because we don't have a lot of a lot of friction because we don't have a lot of friction uh, the dash is OP right what do you think the dash is kind of OP because realistically we're not dashing for very long time we're dashing for a, a super short amount of time and I can even show you that by, for example, modulating. I could modulate the sprite just quickly to show you guys. That way we can see. So sprite to the modulate. Modulate uh, color. Ah, come on. Give me color. Color dot uh, red. And then we go back to uh, white. We're creating a football game. That's not football. So if you don't like football, that is your game. Oh, yeah, I remember this one. I remember this one, um, but what is it? Ah, it's white and big. Okay, I remember. Uh, I, I sh you showed it on stream the other day, no? Especially when you were doing the takeover, the Godot takeover. I'm pretty sure at some moment, uh, at some point, you showed it. Uh, so you see, you see how long was the dash? You see how long was the dash? Boom! It's super short. So what do you think we should do? Maybe at the end of the dash. We keep some momentum, because it's it's pretty cool to have some momentum, but maybe we reduce the dash a bit. Right? Because we keep too much momentum, and so it's weird. Also, you can see sometimes we have problems with the collision. Uh, this is Godot. Ah, oh, I know where this is coming from. This is coming from my, from my walls. Uh, but I can fix that. I can fix that easily. Uh, the collisions being finicky like that, it's because we go past, it's because we go too fast. Uh, I can show you exactly what is going on and you will understand how to fix that. That can be a great, uh, an interesting problem. Uh, you guys might have this problem in the future, so I'm, I'm going to show you. Uh, blah, 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 uh, PC Forbo, yes. Yeah, it's a multiplayer online. Wow, you're doing online multiplayer, okay. Good. Many games break the character down after a dash. Break the character down. Okay, so we can do it. Okay. So, let me show you what is happening. You guys, you guys might be aware of that. Uh, this is a problem that you will face very often. Um, my character is going a bit, a bit fast, and so it's overlapping a bit too much. So if I bounce it from here, it's possible that the next frame, it's going to bounce. So, uh, how can I show you that? My character is here. The collision is here. Okay. At the moment. Uh, the normal is pointing towards the bottom. So what is happening next frame is my velocity, instead of going up like this, is going to go down. But the next frame, I'm not going to move far enough from the wall. So the collision will trigger again. And because I'm only bouncing the collision every time, the, the collision is now pointing towards the bottom. Uh, my velocity, sorry, is pointing towards the bottom. And then boom, we're going to flip it again. And that's why, uh, let me show you, that is why you see stuff like that. This is why you see that weird, that weird stutter on the wall. Because for a few frames, the character is basically doing brrr, brrr, until, until it's far enough. Would, uh, would changing it to one-way collider solve that? Um... It's a great question, but I'm afraid... No, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. Uh, personally, my solution is uh, to, move away the pl to move the player away from the collision point slightly in the direction you want. So whenever you're facing a collision... You know what? Let's do it. Let's do it correctly. Let's, let me show you what I'm thinking exactly, because honestly, this can be useful. We... we, we um, we had the problem many times, and it's it's just really frustrating. So let me show you. Let me show you. Um, if you have a collision, if you have a collision and you're colliding with it, especially, I think it's especially true if the colli if the collision is is thin enough, 
because if the collision is thin enough, it's possible that your player will overlap with the collision, okay? So this is your wall. Uh, wow, doing it at the same time as I'm walking is super difficult. Let me, let me, let me stop for a second. Ah, okay, and this is the player, right? This is the player. So if you have some overlap like that, you're, you're screwed, basically, because your player will constantly go out and in of it. Especially if you just do bounce. So my solution is to say, okay, I'm detecting a collision. Let's put the collision in red. I'm detecting a collision and Godot is telling me that the collision is here. And it's telling me that the normal, let's put an, let's put an N, the normal is pointing downward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the velocity, first of all. This is what I usually do, right? So I do velocity uh, is equal to velocity dot the bounce stuff. You know that and you pass N. Sorry for the for the writing. It's difficult, but this is not enough because next frame, it's probably not moving far enough. Next frame, it might be that your player is still is still like here. It's still colliding. And so basically next frame, you're going to redo that again. And you're going to recollide, and you're going to do that for multiple frames. Until Godot is moving you far enough. So what you can do is you move that, you move uh, towards that, but then you calculate, right? You have this new velocity, so now the velocity is pointing downward like this, okay? After this, the velocity is pointing downward. So you can take that velocity, uh, you can take its component, you can take its direction if you want, so... I need to write, so you can normalize, this is, this is bad, you can normalize and multiply by a, a tiny value, like 10, that way you're going to move in the new velocity a bit more, or you can even like change the position directly, you can like move the actual position of the body, because it's a, because it's a character body, you can do whatever you want, so basically you make, you make say, you make sure that you move it far enough, Right? And what about the timer to uh, remove possibility to collide another wall? Plus, it will resolve the problem you get some minutes ago, right? Uh, no, because it's not about the same collision. Uh, the problem that we had minutes ago is... Um, the problem that we had minutes ago was on the... Uh, the how is it called? The hitbox. Uh, it would be simple, it's just a simplest solution. Um, I see what you mean, but I don't know... I don't know what up would be in a shape like that, so that might not work. Um, so the timer, the timer could be a solution, like you say, okay, I'm not taking any collision for a few frames. The problem about that is you might miss other collisions, especially if you are in a corner. You might miss the collisions that you are in a corner. Is there an on-collision listener in Godot? Sounds like you can do... Sounds... You can only use collision stay. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you mean. On-collision listener... Well, you, you move it every frame, so you know when there's a collision, basically. Uh, it does seem like a one way could fix it. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Um, I don't know how one way does it. I don't know how, what is the logic behind one way, um, but the problem is that, uh, the problem is that one way, maybe it works fine if you have just like, let's say, let's say you have a platform like that, and so your, your one way is in that direction, the, the one way is always pointing out, for example, I don't know, because if you have something that is enclosing another thing, how is the one way defined? Is it always defined like that? I don't know. A little concerned the one way couldn't work since you're basically moving your character inside the polygon. No, no, I'm not moving it inside the polygon. Uh, Godot is showing you the polygon, but in fact, we only have segments. Uh, we only have the walls. We don't have the polygon itself. Uh, can't you just not bounce if the angle between velocity and normal is small? Not bounce if the angle between velocity and normal is small. Um, I'm not sure it's a good solution because the because the normal depends on your velocity. So I think the normal will constantly uh, switch. 
So you can't really do that. And in your in your case, you're, you're suggesting to not bounce when the collision basically are aligned. I, I've done that in the past already. Already, uh, to to just to let you know, I've done that in the past. I'm just moving the body slightly, and it's it works perfectly fine. I'm asking if there's a call when you enter a collision instead of calling every frame if you are inside a collider. Um, well, it depends on what kind of object you're using. If you're using a if you're using a character body. There's no need for there's no need for a call because you are moving it every frame, so you can check every frame is there's a, if there's a collision. In fact, that is what you want to do, right? Um, but if you're using an area or if you're using a body, for example, yes, you have uh, your you have uh, signals for that. All right, you know what? Let's let's stop uh, walking for a, for a bit. It's good to stop walking. I don't have a lot of steps today, I don't know, it's counting weirdly. I've been walking a lot and it's not counting correctly. Hello! Uh, a million it, a million night. I need to take a very quick break to feed my cat and uh, grab a coffee. I will see you in just a second and we'll, and we'll work on that, okay? Uh, see you in a second. Enjoy some- It's in a compromising place. Yes, it's in- it's- in the middle, how do you call that place? Uh, where my legs, you know? Like, I have my legs like this, I have my pee, pee right there, the crotch. Yeah, exactly, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's right next to my pee, -pee. Select those, boom, it creates pi, and boom, you destroy them, okay? So why is it like a vampire survivor? I don't know, actually, it's not really a vampire survivor, it's more like a... It's more like a... I don't know, a top-down game, whatever. Um, it's... physics to my advantage okay pretty easy starting to get a pretty good shit pretty good grip no 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 absolutely not i'm bad so i'm still unsure about uh the text I, I want to display about uh, what the worm is feeling. Maybe they should be uh, a speech bubble, actually, because right now they are like I made them small. Only one cat. What do you mean? I said I said feed the cat, feed the cats with an S. Sorry, one way is not robust as I thought. Doesn't seem like it would work for collision colliders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One way is made for like going through, going through physics, uh, going through uh, um, platforms. I have any content recommendation for someone getting into Do and game engine in general for the first time? I have a distant dream of building a turn-based tactical game. Um. There are two videos that are relatively short to get you started. There's uh, there's a make your first game video from G Quest, and the second one is from Brackies. Honestly, pick each of the one of them. No, it doesn't really matter. I think uh, GD Quest has a two hour video where you make your first game, and Brackies has a one hour and fifteen minutes, 
And then he has another video where he goes into more details about uh, GDScript, I think. No problem. So, we... We... We had that problem. Let me check uh, the code for Hyperslice. Hyperslice is my uh, is the game I'm working on. Um, you know what? I even have a special scene. Um, I have a special scene where you can see both of my games. Um, it's at the bottom. The, the The trailer doesn't really re represent how the game looks like. But I just need to check out some code from here, from the game itself. Uh, it's an arena roguelike where you have uh, only a dash as a weapon. You have, But your dash can do two things. Uh, it, can, it can slice through objects and it can push objects. And it's a pretty cool... It's a pretty cool little game, I think. And so... Um, I have an enemy bouncer, and look at that. Move the body slightly away from the wall to avoid triggering another collision if the normal is a unit vector. Apparently it's ap happening only if it's a unit vector, but it's, it's not entirely true. It's not entirely true. And so what we can do is simply do that, right? This is, this is the only thing I'm doing. I'm positioning. I'm positioning. I'm moving it away from the collision, basically, right? So we can do that. Uh, whenever we bounce, we move away. Uh, and I'm going to write it again. Move the body slightly uh, away from the walls to avoid triggering collision again. Th this is a problem that happens all the time. I don't know. I don't know how people do stuff with that. It seems to be fixing the problem so far. So right now... Right now, uh, there are a few things that are not good. Uh, the push force should be, I think, much stronger. The friction should be bigger. Let's try, let's try to play around with the values a bit. And see, and see if we can have a game feel that works, that somehow works. We need also to make the animation uh, much faster, the animation for the the thingy. So, you know what? Let's cheat and let's make the speed scale twice as fast, just to get an idea. Yeah, you know what? That, I think that could work. We make it twice as fast for now, which is just a good a good amount of uh, cheaty cheat. Hurt box, we don't care about that. Wolves, playground. Um, and so at the end of the dash, what we are going to do, so whenever we stop the dash, whenever we stop the dash, we want to reduce the speed. Um, because velocity, we want to put the speed, so we want to do velocity is equal to, uh, we could do multiply equal. Uh, we, we take how much percentage of the velocity we take only like 75% of the velocity 0.75 that might be enough i need to check okay it feels it feels a bit better now uh, the friction on the floor is still incredibly incredibly low right it's still incredibly low so maybe more friction Let's 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 go high, and let's and let's do one thing after the other. So let's do let's do friction. It looks like I'm not frictioning. Am I frictioning? Am I really inputting friction right now? Am I using it? <laughs> Apply friction. Friction times delta. We move if we are not dashing. We move towards that. And we move towards, yeah. But we move toward friction comparing 
that. Okay, I think it's just that it's it's not big enough. Probably. Uh, please don't do that every frame. Wow, it's it's crazy. It's crazy because I feel like I feel like it doesn't do anything. Yeah. I'm used to I'm used to doing it with lerp and with lerp you don't have to use big numbers because it's between 0 and 1. But move toward is a bit different. Um I still want to use delta because I want to be frame independent and I feel I think that without it I'm not frame independent. Well, theoretically theoretically I am because we don't care about um um in physics process it should be fixed, right? But I don't know. I'm just... I'm just making sure. Okay, so we have some friction now. We might need way more. To be honest, we might need uh, way more than I thought. 250. The push is not too bad. The speed dash... The dash might be... No, it's good that it's like that. And we remove a bit of speed. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, it's already much better. I basically want to have to do something, otherwise the game is playing without me. And you can dash. So, what do you think about the dash? Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Um, right now, the dash is in the direction of the weapon. Okay, so it's the weapon is is facing here. We dash and we go in that direction. Okay, um, but realistically, most of the time, you're going to be moving away from your weapon because you collide with it like that. And so, I'm wondering if we should put it in this in the in in the opposite direction, right? Like if if my weapon is facing the right, um, should my should my dash go towards the right? Should should it go there or should it go the opposite way? Right now it's going that way. I feel like it forces you to move a bit, right? It forces you to, like, react. Like, if there's an enemy right there, you want to push yourself and then you want to dash. So it, it's kind of forcing you to, to rotate, which, which might be good, I don't know. I think you should point where you want to dash. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. In this case, it would be plus pi. You could have the dash actually create a little object you can push it off. That is smart. Um. So what did I do right now? I, I, you, you said what? I think you should point where you want to dash. Oh, sorry. Yes. So this is what I had. You. This is what I had before, and now what I have is the opposite. Now you dash in the opposite direction of where you push, which might be a bit hard to grasp. I think it's uh, better in opposite to avoid reaction compared to weapon, though. 
I think it's better in opposite to avoid reaction compared to weapon though. So you prefer it like that? You prefer it like that? This is a fun little prototype. Do you have a limited amount of dashes or is there a cooldown? Otherwise, why even use a weapon to move? Exactly. The web, the dash is going to be pretty limited. The dash is going to be pretty limited because the goal is to move with like the weapon like that. And then, and then boom, you have a dash. The dash is only when you're stuck or to do special, to do special damage. Because my idea was you would have not a lot of enemies, but maybe you would have enemies with like a shield. And the only way to break their shield is to dash on them. Otherwise, you just push them around. At least for me. Uh, but maybe the choice is through settings. Yeah. I mean, it's just a prototype, so... I feel like I want to go the opposite route. Hey! Uh, er Eric's R. I don't know you. Thank you for the raid. Welcome. We don't have uh, we don't have a an alert for that. I'm sorry. Welcome, raiders. How are you doing? I hope you're doing good. Okay, we can we can remove the collision shape because we need to see how the player works without that. Um, I am not sure. I am not sure. I want my enemies to move or not. So. I'm still going to make them character bodies. We need to move on, so we need to make enemies. But I feel like... Um, enemies... I feel like... My enemies... I, I, might, I might place them and they don't do anything. Uh, I'm going to call it enemy. And I'm going to give it a class. And I'm going to use that as a base for the rest, okay? So enemy... Um, okay... Class name, enemy. It's going to have a bunch of properties inside of it, okay? It's also going to be... Uh, it ho it's going to have a collision shape to collide and stuff. How about the dash moving a certain amount, but without increasing your velocity so it doesn't replace your attack move? I'm, I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. But this is what we're going to find. We need some enemies and we need to see how it reacts. Uh, welcome Raiders, my name is Mr. Elliptic, I'm uh, taking over the Godot channel for today, and we are working on a small prototype. The idea is that you have a sword, and you use it to move and to attack enemies. Uh, and we are creating enemies just right now, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to... Is it called enemies? What the actual F... Uh, I want, I want this bad boy to be called enemy. I know that Godot 4 doesn't necessarily react well to renaming stuff, so I hope it's going to be fine. The dash could be more of a leap, perhaps even jumping over enemies. Linux development by Rene with two T T2 Linux. Okay, cool. Sounds fancy. Um, I feel like I'm not sure because <laughs> my cat just. R ran straight over the couch and then fell on the other side. <laughs> um, the thing is, I'm thinking about... Initially, the dash was here mostly to make sure that you cannot get stuck, basically. Um, because if the corridors are bigger, it's going to be too stuck. It's going to be... Uh, you, can, you can get stuck in the middle of a scene. In the middle of a, of a, of a, a room, right? So the dash was... At first, was like that. Th this idea of... Giving you a bit more speed and 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 putting your your momentum uh, again. So yeah, you cat already played the game exactly. My cat is playing the game. Uh, so yeah, I'm not I'm not exactly sure. So let's do an enemy. Let's try. Let's try, and we'll see. We can modify that really easily, but we need to have enemies and stuff. It's it's nearly six. We need to kind of work on a, some sort of game loop. If we can call that. I would love to be able to have a, a playable version. We know you just like dashes, it's alright. I do la la like dashes. If I create a studio, 
if I if I actually create a real studio, I was thinking about calling it Choco Choco something like chocolate something, but Choco like the the small one. But now I'm thinking I should I should use dash in in, in the name. And I just have to hope that I'm always going to make games about dashing. Ellip da elliptic dash? Ellip dash? Dash elliptic. There's a studio called Dodge Roll. That's cool. Choco Dash? Choco Dash might work. Dash and Slice. You could go Dash Attack. Yeah. You see, you see, I have plenty of ideas. Choco Dash. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And. And the icon would be a chocolate bar um, doing a dash at full speed or something. <laughs> would be cool. I don't know how to call it. Uh, give a name to my enemy. It needs to be it needs to be a very simple enemy that is simply going to move towards you, I guess. If it sees you, it's going to move towards you, I think. Uh, enemy... Enemy... Enemy move? Enemy... Enemy ghost? Well, we're not going to go through it. Like a Choco Blast. If it's not Blast, it's Dash, I guess, yeah. Chaser? Ah, Chaser, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ch thank you. Thank you, Zaft. Zaft always here with the good ideas. Yesterday, you, 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 your takes were always good about the different nodes and stuff. Uh, so let's rename that to Enemy Chaser. And basically, inside of the function Physics Process, we are going to do a bunch of stuff. Um, all of my enemies are going to use an area that is using a collision shape. And I'm going to call that detection area. I don't have I don't have uh, that as a component, but it could definitely be a component. So detection area is going to be monitoring for um, mask player, I guess. Oh, I didn't change the different masks. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Mask. Maskity mask. Um, hey, my enemy. My enemy needs a sprite, no? We need to see the enemy. Who should be the enemy? Don't say Unity, please. Who should be the enemy? Ah, oh, come on. Who should be the enemy? Don't tell me it should be Godot. It should be Godot? <laughs> the, the guy is saying, is talking alone. The sun. Godot is SVG with eyebrows. If you modify that, and if you gave me Godot.SVG with eyebrows, I might do it. Unity. No, you can't say it. For Gar old time. Yeah. The sun. The sun. The sun. Godot but red. <laughs> Godot but red, but really badly made red. Like, just, just using visibility uh, self-modulate, we make it reddish. Like, reddish, but like... Um, more like that. Like, reddish. Like that. Let's sim just just that. That is great. Okay, that is our enemy. Exactly. Okay, perfect. I hate it. I hate it. Thank you. Oversaturated. Use polygon 2D for eyebrows. Ah, you're right. You really want you want you really want me to do that. You really want you guys. You want me to do that. Come on. Come on. What are we doing? Eyebrow. What are we doing? Uh, I need to remove those things, though. Like that? I don't know if it's going to be big enough. I don't know if we're going to see anything. Okay. Is that great? And then we can duplicate it. Uh, transform uh, minus one in X and it should be the opposite. Yeah. Do I keep it? Do I keep it white or do I make it different? It will have alter ego. Now it's 7 p.m. No, it's not 7 p.m. It's it's six. Art section in Twitch. <laughs> okay, uh, let me try something though, uh, because we used self modulate. What if what if we use modulate, and it's going to modulate? Ah, come on. Is it is it good like that? <laughs> 
<laughs> Stupid. Green. Green. Gdoi Kun when you call it ugly. <laughs> Look at half of the girls in the club. What <laughs> no? You can't say that. Nope, it's because I'm sure you could spend one hour on that. <laughs> it's true. Beautiful. Mike, you want me to use that icon? OMG that. We could use that too. We could use that too. Angry Goodill. Goes a little too far. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if the if the the thing should not be made bigger like that. What do you think? We don't we don't we should not spend too much time on that. But it's just... Ah, come on. Minus one. Minus one. The eyebrows are great. Okay, let's... I, I put them really big. I'm not sure it's better. <laughs> Good of four. Okay. You know what? This is the enemies. Horns. We might, but for the chasers. Because all of them are going to look like that so far. Ungrodote. <laughs> okay, so the enemy chaser... The enemy chaser, guys. What are they going to do? Um, my enemies are going to... Are going to... Detection area. We might do something. Area entered. Area entered. Area entered. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. What are we detecting? What are we detecting? Are we detecting the player body? I think we might detect the player body. It might make more sense. Um, and because of that, we can check, we can do if a body is player. Uh, and if it's not player, we don't do anything. Not body, we return. Ah! We return. I support this. You support this. So I need to make that, um, class name player. Okay, enemy chaser, enemy chaser, enemy chaser. It still have the same script, so we are going to ex extend the script um, that we are going to put in here. Enemy chaser. I don't want any template. Are you crazy? I don't want any templates. I want the node default. Maybe. Uh, I don't want to do anything special in here. We can even we can even give it its its own class name like enemy chaser. The game is about the revenge of the angry Gdo icon for the slender against its it earlier. <laughs> we can we can do that, but then we need to modify the Gdo icons and stuff. We need to make our own assets, but I don't think we're going to have time. Why are you so small? I'm not using the same layout as usual. Because on my layout, there's the chat and there's the bottom for, like, the avatars and stuff. But because I'm not on my channel, those are not here, so it doesn't make sense. Um, so I want to do some physics process stuff. Is the enemy doing anything in physics process? I am not sure. Um... We could say, we could say something on, on area body detection. Pfft, I don't know if I do something in the base enemy. Um, we might, we might. But I want to do it in here. I'm going to do it in here. Um, var target. It's going to be a character body. We can know. We can know the targets now. Yes. Yes. Incredible. Uh, target is equal to body. Uh, if not target. Uh, to do. Uh, anim for looking around. Wonder. Uh, so the, if there's no target, you do that. Else. You compute the direction towards the target, so you do target global position minus your global position. You normalized that, and then you set your velocity 
Wap. You set your velocity to directions times speed. Uh, speed, which is defined in here. Ah. Speed, which is defined in here. Export var speed. We need to we need to go a bit faster, so I need to concentrate a bit more. Uh, they should not go too fast, I think. 200. 200. We're going to make them very simple. 200. Var velocity. Okay. Move and slide. Probably going to move and slide. Um, we don't need to pass anything for move and slide, I think, right? I hope you guys are enjoying, even though we're not making huge progress. It would be cool to arrive at a point where we can add a bit of juice and stuff, because right now it looks a bit bad. So, I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess we need to do that. Okay, detection area, we want a hitbox, and we want a hurt box, right? Am I right, fellas? Am I right? I love the art in here. <laughs> it's already perfect. Ship it. Ship it. So... Uh, we could you, we could use a health. Do we have a health? We have a health script. Simple chasers might be destroyed using one one thingy. No health UI. Um, I'm gonna plug the hitbox to the health. Invincibility, no invincibility. Collision. It's it's what. It's monitorable, so it needs to be on layer, and it needs to be on the layer enemies, right? The hitbox. And the hurtbox is... How are you going to deal damage? So you want to be... Looking at... Mask? You want to be looking at the player. Okay? And the damage is one, probably. That is, that is great. Uh, we have a bunch of things because we didn't set up those shapes, but it's, it's great. I think what we can do is, uh, health can tell us when we are dying, so when we are dying, we can maybe call the die function, which is, uh, simply going to spawn an animation or something, uh, I'm going to write it, so let's say, let's say, um, to do spawn particles or something, and then we simply uh, Q redraw. I don't think so. We simply Q free. Uh, the layer and mask part confused me a little. Can you explain those? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Let's look at that. Let's look at that really quickly. All right. So any uh, layer and mask are actually... You can find them in multiple places, not just in physics object. You can also find them in like uh, visible... Uh, visibility thingy and uh, even for like audio stuff um, you can basically layer and mask you can replace those words by where my thing is and where my thing is looking at is that is that is that um, uh, is that do you understand what I mean <laughs> so the layer is where your body is on what layer it is and mask um, which layer you're looking for. So, for example, if an enemy is on layer 1 and has mask 1, it will be able to be detected by anyone that is looking at the layer 1, but this enemy is also able to detect anything that is on layer 1. What does that mean in practice? Well, if you have multiple enemies, because all of the enemies are on layer 1, but they're also looking at layer 1, they will all collide with each other. So, for example, if you want to remove collision between the enemies, you can simply say they are on layer 1, but they don't look for layer 1. And maybe they look for layer 2, because this is where the player is, or this is where the wolves are, or... whatever. You do whatever you want. So, basically, you see those as... where they are. So, who is going to be able to see them? And then the mask is what they are able to see. And if you see it that way, I think it's much more, it's much easier, right? And so usually what you do is uh, you set up those things to make sure that um, all ev everyone will see the walls, for example. Um, but the player 
but the enemy might only detect the player and the wolves and will not care about the enemies. The, the, the enemy might not care about the pickup also. If there's a health pickup on the floor, there's no reason for your enemy to, to be checking that, right? Uh, in terms of performance, I think it's also interesting. Especially if you have lots of bodies and you don't want them to collide with, with them. Angry Godot. I get it, thanks. Pleasure. I was confused by it at the beginning also. I was I was confused. Uh, and for a long time, I made game without using layers. Unless enemies can steal health pickups. True, and it would be fun. It would be a fun mechanic. How is it going? It's going well. We are prototyping and we are creating an enemy right now. We need to create a simple enemy. How did you get so many layers? Uh, we have so many layers by default. 32 by default. You can even add custom names. Exactly. And that's what I did. So, for example, if I want this enemy chaser, uh, if I want to change, personally, my technique, personally, my technique is to click on there. And that way you see only the, en the layers that are named. And that way you can set up your layers that way. Right? Don't use necessarily the numbers in here. You remove them. And then you say, okay, this hitbox, it should take damage. And it should be enemy. Boom. Much easier than to look at all of that. I only have eight. It's collapsed. Yes. When will be the results of Twitter age guessing? I feel like that too many times. Uh, at the end. At the end. And it's not the end. You can even add a custom name. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I did. I add custom names. And honestly, you should ask add custom names because otherwise you will get confused and you will forget and it will be uh, a mess. <sighs> All right. So now it is time to set up the collisions and stuff. So let's uh, let's not use a rectangle. I prefer to have a, sh a circle. I think it makes more sense. That is great. Collision uh, detection area. So this is a circle. This is how far this can detect enemies, can detect the player. So we can do something like that, I guess. Yeah. Uh, hitbox. Let's add a collision shape. So hitbox is how the enemy can take damage. This is how I called it. I don't know if you find that it makes sense, but this is used to for the enemy to take damage. So what I usually do is... Um, let's remove that. If we want to take damage, we want the hitbox to be bigger. We want to make the, the hitbox generous enough, okay? Uh, we want to make the, 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 hurtbox, the, the hitbox generous because we want the player um, to not miss because of one pixel. And for the opposite... So when the enemy is going to deal damage, we want to do the exact opposite. So for example, rectangle, we can make a pretty pretty small shape, for example. That way you have some you have some leeway, you have some margins, right? That's pretty standard. Okay. And so for the heart box, maybe we use maybe we use green. Uh maybe we use uh, sorry, uh, uh we use uh, what is called Ah red. <laughs> Okay, so we have things set up. We have some things set up. Theoretically, if I'm not entirely stupid, it should work. So let's see. Let's put in, in the playground. Um, don't look at this because this is going to be... Uh, this is going to be set up at runtime. Our play scene is here. Ah, our play scene is here. We could make it a tool script, right? But... Our placing is inside of this. So I'm going to put a container just to make my life easier, just in case. Um, node 2D. I'm going to call that enemies. And I'm going to instantiate an enemy chaser. Look at that. Look at this enemy chaser. So imagine that this is the tutorial. Your first enemy encounter could be here. Let's see how it goes. Uh, what did I do? I dashed in. I dashed towards the the weapon. Okay, we definitely need. Uh, why is it lagging so much? And why is my enemy not reacting to what is happening on screen? Everything is broken already. Is ah, I know, 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 I know. So my hitbox and hurtbox is correctly set up. But I think the detection area is not set up correctly. It is. It is looking for... It is looking for the player, but the player itself is not set up correctly. So the player itself is... 
on layer player and it's looking at the walls <laughs> and do we want to collide with enemies i don't think we necessarily do um i don't think we necessarily do yet so we can just do that and so i can see on the on the side that the enemy is pushing me that is great okay and my weapon is hurt box and it's looking for the wolves and the enemies that way we're going to be able to do some damage all right um we need some particles as soon as possible to have an idea of um where we are hitting stuff Wow, it's lagging so much. Okay, the game is, is really... Okay. Um, this is shit. This, this, this looks really bad. Because the enemy chaser... Enemy... Should not be here. It should be on layer enemies. CPU particles, of course. Of course, CPU particles. That's the only particles we should use. The only particles... Uh, that that is like, like the base particles. Um, we need to scale that down a bit. The the it is it is huge, right? Do we agree? Our enemy is incredibly huge, so let's reduce it a bit, and we can deal damage to him right there, and it can deal damage right there. Being able to bounce with the sword in the enemy would be fun mechanic. Exactly, that's going to be uh, that's going to be it. Don't worry, we're going to do that. It's part of the it's part of the plan. I'm acting as if I have a plan. So now the enemy is reacting. Oh my god, no enemy, enemy, enemy! <laughs> this is shit. Why are you enemy? Why are you moving me? Enemies mask walls. Why are you moving me? Where... Where is this? I'm looking for the walls. And I'm on layer player. What on earth is happening? Why are you pushing me? James B. Barrow. Hello, welcome guys. Welcome to the stream. B. Raid. Hello. I don't know you, I think. Giant rent the bullying into a corner. Exactly. Welcome guys. How are you doing? We're working on a Godot on a, on an angry Godot. <laughs> uh, we are working on an angry Godot uh, sprite, as you can see. Welcome guys. I'm Mr. Elliptic. I'm taking over the the stream today on the Godot channel uh, to create a prototype. This is part of the creator takeover. Angry Godot. Is the bee knees. Yeah. Hello bees. What were you doing, James? Thank you for the raid. Christy, it's it's your eyebrows. That's good. I was also doing some game dev in Godot today. Let's go. Do you want to share anything? You want to share anything in the chat? Be right. We've left the hype to come and join your stream. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I love it. I love the little message. I also love the icon. I love the emote. Welcome, guys. Nothing to share today? Okay, no problem. Um, my weapon... My weapon... Okay, okay, there's something I'm not understanding here. There's something weird. So, I'm moving. It lags a lot. This is weird. I can push myself off the enemy. This is great. But why is the enemy able to push me? I'm sorry, but this is not normal. Oh, <gasps> because the collision's here. Oh my god. Such a beginner mistake. Such a beginner mistake. How can I miss that? Okay. Important lesson here. Important lesson. 
whenever, whenever, whenever you instance a node and you make modification in the in the base node, it is possible, it is incredibly possible that you will see this appear. You see that? The collision layer. Because you made some modification in the in the remote three in the remote scene, if you want. In the in the base scene. The chaser that is instanced right there on my scene has the old layers. It has the old layers. It was a mistake stage to teach something. Good strat. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what do you think? I'm a professional, so I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> so this is a this is a, this is an error that you will have all the freaking time. So when we when someone has an error with um, detecting stuff or whatever, the first thing we say is check your layers. Honestly, um, Nat, if you're if you're if you're still here, if you're listening, and you have and you want merch ideas. Check your layers. We want we want a, sh a shirt that says "Check your layers." Of course, you should do that. It's incredibly cool because it's always a layer problem in Godot and in and probably everywhere. And so right now you can see the layers are not good. And what I want is to do that. Boop! And now it's good. Incredible! Everyone urging me to rush the merch store. I see. I'm I'm just giving you an idea. Artists can buy that too. Just saying. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's also for it's also for artists. Check your layers is is the same thing, right? So yeah. So now, hopefully, now hopefully I've made that mistake. So now it should be fixed, right? Right? I hope it is. Godot, can you come? <laughs> when you're afraid of starting Godot and Godot is angry, we can do so many memes with that. What Shrek and Godot has in common? The layers. <laughs> Come on, come at me, bro. I kill you. And it's never dying, though. But now it's not able to push me anymore. Okay, so it looks a bit weird. It's like it's taking over me. Uh, but apart from that, it looks... Okay. <laughs> this is so bad. This is, the, this is the shittiest game I've ever made. So far, so far. So far, it is really bad. On it, on it. Let's go. Friends don't let friends use CPU particles. Oh yeah, we need to do something with CPU particles. <laughs> What's your favorite particles? Uh, CPU particles, I think. Okay, so why is that hurt box? It might be the same thing. Oh, it might be the same thing. Let's remove this entire enemy chaser and let's reinstantiate it. Because it might be that everything is bad. Everything is bad. And let's also go into the player. Go into the hurt box, go into here, and whenever it's going to try to do damage, deal damage, we are going to see that. Let's see. Hello, Darke. Dar Darke? Darke. Plot twist, your character was actually angry with it all along. Exactly. That would be cool, right? And damage, boom. So what is the area that we are getting right now? Uh, if area, get parent is in group player, area, take damage. What is this area? It's on the enemy, okay. So it's taking damage, right? Take damage, one. There is health. So we are going to remove health. We are going to remove one. Health. Health is now zero. Okay. So if we have health UI, we update it, but we don't. Health is zero, so we said, hey, died is emitted. And on health died, we don't do anything. Because I forgot to use the function die, that's why. I'm stupid. Okay, this is fixed. This is fixed. Lurk, I gotta drop into lurk. I hope the prototyping goes awesome. Thank you, gems, and thank you for the, the raid. Official needs to be merged to. Uh, underscore official needs to be merged to. <laughs> is that is that the, the thing like underscore official <laughs> would it be nice if you could press the security mouse button to attack without moving the player we can discuss that underscore is the joke yeah 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 uh should it probably use a uh, health uh inferior or equal not just uh i don't need to because i'm clamping the health just before checking if it's zero i'm clamping the health between zero and max health our name here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So it's, it's fine. We don't need to do that. 
That's illegal. Well, I'm sorry, but... Up! It is killed. Incredibly easy game. Thank you, guys. Uh, bye. Enjoy. Enjoy whatever you were doing. Um, I'm leaving. This is everything that I wanted to do. I'm a professional game dev. Uh, pay me. No, no, I'm joking, of course. Of course I'm joking. Uh, we want a bit more friction, I feel like. A bit more friction. Um, so yeah, I we can discuss the idea of, of changing the, the weapons and stuff, but so far I feel like I'm good enough with that. What do you think? Okay, um, I need your opinion. Let's... Let's implement, before, before I'm getting your opinion, let me implement a restart mechanic. Do I put it inside a playground? Do I put it inside the player? Ah, uh, I am not sure. I am not sure. I am not sure I will explode. Not being sure. Ah! Playground. Let's, let's put it inside a playground and we'll, and we'll see later. Uh, funk input. And then we are going to do some juice. Can you? Both. Oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> we can restart twice if if needed. Uh, so input if input if input is action just pressed. No, that's not what I want to do. I want to do event is action pressed. If we are pressing uh, pause, I probably want to do something, but right now I don't. Uh, L if ah, I want to do. I don't know how to code. I want to do LF, uh, LF restart, and I'm going to do the, the usual get tree, get, no, we can directly call reload current scene, right, okay, I need your opinion before we can move on, and your opinion is needed, when I, when I touch an enemy, three options, when I touch an enemy, Should I be pushed at all? So option one, I am not pushed at all. I just do damage on the enemy and I'm, and I'm not pushed. Option two, I am pushed, but less than on a wall. Because on the wall, I'm pushed quite a lot. Option three, uh, option three, I am pushed normally. Only if he leaves. So option four, which is, of course, something different. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Mm -hmm. When you hit the enemy Sounds good though Pushed some when he survives the blow Okay Okay Fair enough get through the enemy like a samurai okay okay so if the enemy is dead we do that okay okay so on a hurt box dealt damage uh we know what kind of health we have removed but we don't know what is the remaining health right we don't know what is the remaining health so we don't know if the enemy is dead or not when we are killing it in here um, so we need to do a bunch of checks. We need to do a bunch of checks, and we are going to assume everywhere. We are going to assume. Um, we are going to assume that the parent is the one we want to check. Um, we are going to assume that the parent is the one we want to check. Uh, because we get... Because we get... Uh, woo parent, no, get parent. We get, every time we kill, every time we touch, we touch something, we touch the, um, the hitbox, right? So we need to get the parent, and we can check the parent. If parent is wolves, 
I'm going to do it like that, okay? Uh, there, we could we could set it up in a better in a better way, but that's that's gonna be it for now. If parent is walls, walls in the current scope, really? You can't find walls, okay? So let me create that then. Uh, class name walls. If enemy lives, you get pushed. If enemy dies, you get pulled. If enemy dies, you go you go through normally. It, it doesn't do anything so far, I think. This is what we are going for. Uh, Elif parent is uh, enemy. So what? no matter what type of enemy, either we define another push force or we simply do it the easy way and we take like 15% of the normal push force. 15% of the normal force. For now, we can do that. It's it's easy enough. Um, but this is only if the enemy is dead or not. So we need to check if the enemy is dead. So now it gets a bit more complicated. Um, to make sure that it's easy, I'm going to go into the health. I'm going to go into the health. And I'm going to inject myself. Inject myself into the metadata. Okay? So, the enemy, on Redivar, parent, I'm going to get parent. There are many ways to do that, guys. Uh, there are many ways to do that. Get parent, okay? If parent has meta uh, health, we want to get... We don't want to do anything, so it's the opposite. If... If the parent doesn't have meta health, we can do parent set meta health. Okay, we can inject ourselves into the metadata of the parent. Set meta expected at least two but received one. Why? Uh, yes, of course, because we need to pass ourselves. And so now the cool thing is that the enemy itself doesn't need to have a reference to the health. Okay, we don't need to assume there will be a reference. It's inside of the metadata. And so what we can do is, if the parent is an enemy, we know we can do if parent uh, has meta health. We can we can still check though. We can say parent uh, get meta. It's a bit complicated, right? We could pass the information through the hurt box, I guess. I don't know. We get the meta health and we grab the amount of health, right? And so if that is equal to zero. It seems a bit complicated, right? Then we push ourselves. No, then we don't. So if it's different than zero, then we push ourselves. Get meta already checks defaults to null if not found. Really? Um. Yeah, but then I need to check if it's null. You see the problem? You see the problem? I still have another check to do. I still have another check to do. You can provide a default value. To get meta? Oh, you're right. Ah, you're right. Mm, let me think. So, we get pushed if the health is superior than zero, basically, right? Do we agree? We get pushed if the health is superior than zero. So we can provide a default value of minus one. Default to minus one if no health. If no health. Uh, assume... Assume dead. <laughs> Assume dead. And so if the health is superior than zero, we get pushed. Otherwise, we don't do anything. Let's check that. Let's check if it works already, because maybe it doesn't even work. Boop. Boop. Then the player is here, and boop. And we get pushed. Uh, we get pushed because we collided with the wall, probably. We collided with the wall, probably. Print. Um, dealt damage. Two. And we can pass the parent.
I'm pretty sure we collided with the wolf. Health is undefined. No, the health doesn't exist on the default value and it will give an error. You can provide a default value. No, the health doesn't exist on the default value. And it will give an error. What? Health is undefined. You are undefined. The value needs to be an object with the health property. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You're right. I didn't I didn't see I was checking the health then. I didn't see that. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. Uh, you are right. You are right. Intimidate, don't die, this one. Mm, why? Uh, you are right. And I can't do... Ah, oh, fuck. This is, this is shit. This is shit. F, F, but... How do you know he died? It's, it's, a, it's new? Just like, just, just has as I did before. Yeah, unfortunately, I think we have to do that. So if parent, let's do it. Let's do it that way. It's, it's easier for people to understand. Um, if you have health, then you check. It's okay. It's okay. And you don't want default value. It's okay. Let's not get clever. Let's just say, if you have meta, you get the meta. And let's fuck it. Just happened today. Okay, bad. Avoid all of this. You're right. So now look at this. Boom. And we don't get pushed because we killed it. And if we put a second enemy, if we put a second enemy, uh, if we put a second enemy, let's duplicate this bad boy. If we put a second enemy and we make it editable children and we change its health to two, now it should be different. So I didn't think about that. Uh, remove health and previously freed... <laughs> what on earth? Why are you... What? Dealt damage to wolves. Why are you dead? What on, what on earth is happening? Is that because I... Duplicated and it has a reference to the other thingy. The fuck? Enemy. Playground. What on earth is happening in here? Uh, hitbox. It's this health, right? Yeah, what's the problem? What do you mean? What do you mean, my guy? What the fuck? Who is free? Why, he why health is free? And self is this object? Health is health is no. What? Why health is no? Sorry, but wait. I didn't think about this problem that when you're tapping an enemy, you're tapping the walls very often. Okay, it worked. I guess doing editable children kept the reference to the previous one. It's not as fun as I thought. <laughs> you see the importance of prototyping, guys. Do you see the importance of prototyping? I never thought about that as a problem. When you're going to hit an enemy, you're also going to hit the walls very often. And so it's going to get frustrating. And also it didn't work. It didn't push me. It didn't push me on the second one. Ha, too bad. Let's dash into here. Let's wait. Let's do that. Meta health. Uh, can you come back to here? Yes, thank you. If parent has meta health, 
uh, am I am I stupid and am I adding the health as uh, health without? No, okay. Set meta health. Uh, I'm pushing. But 15% of that. So I guess it's just that it's not enough. Right? Maybe 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 pushing myself 50% is is not enough to see something. Make it so damaging and moving are two different sword movement. Yeah, you might be right. I think we have to do that, unfortunately. Because one solution could be that the sword that the the sword could be clever to be honest like if if you're doing a move and it's touching an enemy it could be that it doesn't touch the wolves but at the same time you never know um like you don't know in advance you don't know in advance if you're going to collide first with a wool of or with an enemy right so that might be a problem what if it touches the wool first? Exactly, yeah, yeah, Zaft, exactly. That's my problem. The dash might be slightly too strong, also. Wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't the enemy be in the hitbox already? Uh, I'm not sure. Yes, but you don't know which collision gets triggered first because it's an because it's an event. You don't know, so if you want to do that, you could, you could instead of using an event, get all of the collisions by using like get uh, colliding bodies or something like that. Like, you get the overlapping bodies or areas. Um, but, I don't know. There is, there is, but it... Usually you want to use signals because it makes more sense. Um... Okay, sometimes when we have a problem like that, this is this is a game design problem. The swords stabs for movement and swings for damaging. Ah, interesting. Interesting. So, uh, whenever we have a design problem like that, there are many ways to react. One way is to add stuff, like you could say, oh, uh, add more code to to check if it's a wool or not or whatever, uh, or to add another mechanic in a way so for example what you're suggesting is uh having two different attacks one is for movement and the other one is for um is for attacking which it would work i think it defeats a bit the purpose of having uh one thing that is doing two things at once and sometimes it might be Sometimes it might just be because something else is wrong, like maybe we need to accept to do more bigger movement and so have bigger corridors and that way it's, it's less of a problem, I guess. You see what I mean? The other option is to remove being pushed by the enemies. Um, I'm not sure it's really an option. Because the most frustrating thing is, the most frustrating thing is this. Let's restart. You are here, you move, you have an enemy, and you and you push. Not because you killed the enemy, but because you, you touched that. By doing your push, you touched that thing. And so this is frustrating. That's horrible, exactly. Because this is not what you intended.
Or are you making the streamer base frustration game? You could, but it's just it's just frustrating. It, it doesn't feel great to play. And then you get stuck easily when you when you move like that. I feel like there's potential. I feel like there's potential, but we need to find a way to make that better. So if there's an enemy in the hitbox, just uh, stop looking for walls, I don't know. Uh, yes, Mike, it's it's a solution, but we, this is not how we do stuff right now, so... It's a solution where we have to modify a bunch of stuff. Can't you just check for enemy's damage first, and if it hits, stop the collision check? Uh, you don't... you don't... You don't... Um... You have no control over which event is going to fire first, I think, in Godot. Unless maybe you can use priority. Is it possible to use priority? Like on enemies, we would we would put their hitbox and we would put a higher priority. Would that work? And we would know that it's always going to be the first. The priority used to solve colliding when occurring penetration. The higher the priority is, the lower the penetration into the object will be. This can, for example, used to be prevent the player from breaking through the boundaries of a level. <sighs> okay, so it doesn't seem to be that. Maybe it's the priority here. The, the area's priority. Higher priorities are processed first. The world 2D's physics is always processed last. Okay, so maybe we put some priorities in here. That's a different problem. Priority in here. It would make a lot of sense to have priorities. It could work. So we could say... Uh, the moment we touch an enemy... Okay, yeah, but no. Uh, the problem is that... I didn't know the above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's useful for stuff. So what we could do is... Okay, we need to have a variable, which is a bit frustrating, but... Uh, var... Should... 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 Should push... Wolves. Uh... Or var okay okay An another another thing uh, detect detect wolves by default it's true and so whenever you are doing the moment you find an enemy the moment you find an enemy you you don't want to detect wolves anymore but you still need to detect the other ones. Why not have the attack very narrow like a stab? It's a solution, David. It's a solution. We can have two different attacks, for example. Um, but I wanted to avoid that at first. I want to check if we can have one attack, which makes the game way easier at first. You don't have to think about two different attacks. Um, and even if we have a narrow attack, I think... In the end, it's not going to solve the problem, because let's say we have a narrow and a wider attack. People are going to use the wider attack sometimes, and they're going to get frustrated that it's hitting the wall. And you might say, oh, get good. Sure, but your player is getting frustrated nonetheless, so it doesn't solve the problem. I personally think it doesn't solve the problem, unless, of course, the attack is narrow. And then it might make sense, but maybe we can, maybe we can s do a narrow attack. Personally, I wanted to have a big, a big, a big swing because I thought the uh, animation for the big swing would be really cool. Like we could make the, we could make the, the, um, the sword comically large and stuff like that. What if you create a circular area around the player, and if there is an enemy inside it, you don't hit wolves with the sword. Yes, but I feel like it's adding complexity. I don't know. There are many ways to solve that. And I want to... Let's try with that. Let's try saying, okay, if there is an enemy... If there is an enemy... Um, we are basically waiting... It should also mean you can't escape from a monster when it's near. That could also mean you can't escape from a monster. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. There are cases where an enemy is nearby you, but you want to use... To collide with the wall. Ha, that is, a, that is, that is great. So that's why, that's why you should be pushed. You should be pushed from an enemy. First of all, you should be pushed from an enemy. No matter what. So let's, let's push, let's use the normal push so far. You should be pushed from an enemy if the enemy is not dying. Okay, that is important. That is the first thing. Then, if, um... 
So what, what do I... Detect walls. So if parent is wall and detect walls. And so now we need to reset that. And so when do we reset that? Whenever, um, whenever the attack is finished. So I think I'm going to have uh, uh, finish attack or something. It's just I need I need a quick fix. So um, I j I'm just going to do that. Where I'm going to do walls, detect walls. I'm going to put that back to true. It's just for testing, and we'll see if it works or not. And so whenever we swing, the moment we are disabled in here, we can call the method on here. We are going to call the method uh, finish attack. And that is it. Should the sword strike really push you from a wall like an actual collision of the player does? What do you mean? How do you move if, if you don't have that... Uh, if you don't have that. Because that's the that's the goal of the game, right? So we can still push, which is good. And now if there's an enemy, it looks like we're not detecting the walls anymore. I, f I feel like it, it kind of works. Let's see. So I've been pushed because the enemy has been killed. It seems to be working. Okay, it seems to be working. When you when you push, it seems to be working. Uh, that would also mean you can't escape from on through. That's sort of the key aspect of the game. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't there from the start. It didn't. It's used to propel the player. Never mind. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, it seems to be working. It seems to be working. We we probably need some tweaking, and we might we might implement multiple things at some point. If the attack check would be a shape cast, it would also hit the enemy first. If you have proper aim. Mm, I see what you mean, but at the same time, I am not sure because look at that. If your enemy, if your player is, is like this, if your player is like this, it's swinging, right? The The attack is not throwing an attack. It's like, it's, it's the collision itself that is pushing you. So because it's swinging, it will, it would collide no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't overcomplicate it. Okay. Um, you know what we need? We have an enemy. I know the game looks incredibly bad and it's there's like nothing. But we have a concept. We can't die. So I think we can we can kind of do a game loop. And then we can add some some visuals and stuff. Because the problem also is that we don't really see what's happening. We don't really see what's happening. We need to see better what's happening. It looks it looks incredibly bad right now. So, first of all, we need to be able to take damage. How much health do we have? First of all, we had uh, we add some health. Okay, we have health. We want three health at least. I think three health seems reasonable enough. We want. A hitbox. Reasonable to have a hitbox. Do you think it's reasonable to have a hitbox? I think it's reasonable to have a hitbox. And we are going to assign the health, which is here. Invincibility. We are going to have invincibility. How much do we want? 0 0.2 seconds. In a game like that, I think it's fine to have some invincibility for a while. Like 0 0.4, maybe. So let's create a shape for that. So when you take damage, you don't take damage right away. Maybe even more than that. And for taking damage, I think it's fine if we take damage only only here, right? We are being we are being very very kind to the player. Okay, look at that. Is the the Godot is happy? Um, honestly, the game could be about Godot fighting fake Godots. I feel like. I want the game to be very... Oh, I didn't talk about that. But I want the game to be very... Um, arcade With like an... Um, a... Um, how do you call it? A cartoony art style. So... I feel like... I feel like... We can definitely do something cool. Um, let me think what is needed. We need a hit effect. Do I have a hit effect? I don't. 
So we could create one, we could create a component for that because I have a hit shader, right? Yes, I have a hit shader. So first of all, let's put into the material in here. Let's do shader material. And let's put a hit uh, dot GD shader. So what it's going to do is simply you set up the color, color of the player, might, might even make it red, why not? And then boom, take damage, okay? Hey Johnson! Oh, we don't have any we don't have any um we don't have any audio or anything telling us that we ha we have been raided. Hello Johnson, how are you doing? It's a pleasure to see you here. Welcome. You know you know who I am already, so I don't need to I need I don't need to present myself. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the raid. I hope your stream was good. What did you do? What did you do? Are you still working on that tank game? Because the other day I, I catched your stream and you were working again on like the um, the ship container drone game, like truck game. I don't know how you define it. Um, did you put did you put the tank game in pose uh, or or what? I didn't follow closely. I'm sorry. We learned a new word today. A uh, Volsefaktor. It's it's German. And it means satisfaction of watching AI people go about their lives. I love, I love German for that because they create words for very specific things. <laughs> and this is really satisfying. It's like the first time you implement the game of life. Uh, if you guys have never implemented the game of life, do it, please. It's like two rules. Theoretically, it's, it's three rules, but you can simplify it to two rules. So it's two ifs. Implement the game of life in your favorite engine and enjoy the artificial life do its thing. It's crazy. I've decided to move forward with Ridiculous Shipping as my next game. Interesting. I don't know if you have time to talk about that. I would love to know um, what was the decision process, but maybe you talked about it on stream. And maybe I should watch your stream more. I'm really interested because I always find it difficult to decide uh, what to work on. Like, it has been really difficult for me to, uh, to say to decide to work on Hyperslice. It's in the VOD. It's in the VOD for today or or yesterday. If it's today, I can watch it later, yeah. But that's pretty cool, okay, cool. Exciting, exciting stuff. Today, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Then I, I will watch it, definitely. I will definitely watch it. Um, I think I think we should create it. Let's create a, let's create our uh, hit. Let's create our hit effect. It's going to be a component, hit effect. It's going to assume you have the right shader. So you need to have the right shader. And if you don't, uh, who are you? Hit effect. It could be, it doesn't have to be a node, right? It doesn't have to be a node. It could be just that. It could be just the script. Because we are going to give it a class name and stuff. Class name hit effect. And that way we can call it without being a node. Okay. Uh, cool thing about Godot is we can do export var. Um, hurt box. Hit box. Hit box. Hit box. Which is a hit box. And we are looking for that uh hitbox is not declared really hitbox is not declared why is that because class name hitbox haha <laughs> i got you so hitbox boom health whenever you get hit hitbox so if hitbox you want to connect hitbox uh what is the signal what is the signal Took damage, you want to connect to self. What? You want to pass the callable. Okay, on took damage. Beautiful. Beautiful. Come on, on took damage. We don't even need to know how much damage we are taking. We don't care. And what we can do is um, create a tween. Var tween, it's a tween. Then we can do if tween to create uh, all of the lines that we need. Haha, <laughs> isn't it good? Then we can do tween. Tween property. We want to tween the property of the target 
of the target that we don't have. So export, export, export var. Ah, export var target. Uh, the target has to be a node 2D at least, I think, to have a material. But apart from that, because I don't think we can target materials directly. That would be amazing. It would be amazing to target directly uh, some properties, you know. Uh, we would do target material. We don't we don't check if there's a material or not. We assume there is. And if 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 there's no material, it's too bad. Shader parameter. And then the shader parameter is called is called where is it? Where is it? Sprite. Amount. Amount. Shader parameter, you can even do that. You can even do copy property path. Incredible. Copy property path. Boom. Shader parameter amount. We want to go to one in a very short amount of time. So probably 0 0.05. And I want to change the transition. I want to trans... I want to trans... Mm, I want to trans... Expo. Probably. Uh, and I want to set the ease to ease out if I'm correct. So I don't need... I don't need th that... But I will keep it. Okay. Do I hold? Maybe not. And so I go back to my original value in like 0 0.15 seconds. Uh, but I don't want to override the transition. On took damage, it's going to do that. Right? So now, if we add our... We can add it like that. So hit effect. Hit effect. Yes, let's go. If we add our hit effect, we can assign the hitbox. We can assign the target, which is the sprite 2D. And theoretically, theoretically it works. So we can do the same thing on the enemy to, f to, f to see if it works. Hit effect. On the sprite 2D, we need to add a material, shader material. We need to make it local to scene. Be careful, local to scene. Otherwise, all of the enemies are going to blink at once. We don't want that. Hit. Shader parameter, they're going to hit to be white, and boop, boop, boop. We can say eyebrows. If you want the eyebrows to also use that, you can use use parent material. And so now when you do it, boop, 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 everything is white. Okay, not too bad. Um, so the enemy is doing what? Hit effect. Hitbox is the hitbox. The fact, the fact that. This is something that I love about God of War. The fact that you can export a node directly and you don't have to export a node path and then get the node. That is amazing, especially when you do a lot of components like that that needs to be they need to be uh, configured and stuff. It is just amazing. It is just amazing. Could we say could we say give me a second. Could we say that the sprite 2D I'm not sure. Could we say that the Sprite 2D is a canvas um, canvas item, right? In the end, the canvas um, the Sprite is a canvas item, and this is why it can have it can you can put a material on it, right? This applies to can to this canvas item. So could we say that this hit effect is looking for a canvas item? Does it work? I feel like a mechanic of moving with your attack would be more fun if it worked like a platformer with gravity and you bounce off enemies and not fall at the bottom of the screen. The purpose would be to stay on the screen as long as possible and collect points. Possibly move a specific point at the top of the level. Um, yes, but if, this would be a very different game. But I, I have done games like that, especially with shooting. Uh, I think it can work. Uh, and it can easily be turned into that, to be honest, because you just need to enable gravity. So it's like one line of code. But I'm just, I just want to, I just want to try it like that because I feel like it can be, it can be fun like this, to be honest. How are you? Had enough water? I think I'm fine. Good old engine. Thank you. Draven. This was the music from Draven. Draven. If you guys like the music, uh, it is the Riot Games creator safe playlist on Spotify. I can probably share it. Yes, I can share it. Whoops, I added something. Sorry. 
It was a mistake. Uh, okay, I think it should work now. 2000 April, uh, April Fools or Draven Day. Oh. Let's go. So you can put a canvas item now. Okay, let's see if it works. Let's see if we can take damage. Uh, parent, enemy, player to a viable type enemy. Um, what is that? Oh, am I stupid? I am. I am because the parent. I am because I'm assuming it's an enemy, but it can be it can be anything. Anything can have health. So let's say it's a node two D at least. I think it might be a node two D. So this one had one health, so... Um, it doesn't work. Because I'm stupid. Took damage to callable node hit effect. Oh, because it's passing the damage. It's passing the damage and hit effect is not reacting to that. We need to know how much damage it is, right? Otherwise, it's not going to work. Alright. I can't wait to do a... A juice pass on that because it looks kind of ugly right now. Okay, set trends on a null value. Ah, target material. Shader parameter amount. What the actual frick? Uh, we had that a bunch of time. Oh, fucking hell. It's the same problem, guys. If you guys are on my stream... This is a problem that we've had multiple times now, and I, I didn't learn my lesson. I didn't learn my lesson. Can you guess why this particular tween is telling me that the p-target is null? Okay, so the p-target is the parameter target. So this is this, the shader parameter amount. Can you tell me why? Yeah, Mike, you remember? Okay, Mike, you remember. And... <laughs> It is stupid, and honestly, I don't understand why Godot is doing it that way. This is really something that I don't like about Godot. Um, so, just to remind you, my parameter is on sprites. I have, a sh I have a shader, and as you can see, there's an amount in here, right? There's an amount. It looks like my amount is set to zero, right? So how can it be null? Well, 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 if you look at my hit shader, I am stupid. I, I do agree, but if you look at my shader, the amount is not set to anything by default. Which means, if you didn't move the amount once in the editor, by default, it's not going to be set to anything, it's going to be set to zero. So, when the tween is trying to set the parameter, it's telling you that it's null. And you look at your shader and you say, oh my god, it's the same name, it's, it has a value, I can see the value, it's zero, so what the fuck? Because you forgot the value in here. And now it works. This is a very, very... This is a bad, this is a bad bug, to be honest. It's a bad bug, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be like that. And so... Uh, we still have the problem, interesting. Interesting. Shader parameter amount. So this was not the only problem. Wait, no. What? Wait, no, what? It shouldn't be... Isn't it because of the instanced hit effect? Why? Why? Hit effect, on took damage. Parameter P target is null. So you can see that there is a target and there is a material. You change sprite to canvas item. And... and what? Is it not connected anymore? Hit effect, sprite 2D. Are you sure the export is correct? I mean, the export is pointing to the right stuff. Um, timer, hit effect. The export is pointing to the right stuff. So this should be fine. Um, we can see that there's a material, I think. It's fine, there is a material. Uh, where is it? Hit effect. There is a material. Can we can we see the stack? Oh no, because we are not. We have crashed. Uh, but there is a material, and it's just that shader parameter amount. 
Can you scroll where, right? Right to where? To my set twin, set trends, trends expo, set ease, twin, ease out. This is not the problem. This is not the problem. The problem is going to be in here. The target is not happy. Um... Let's let's see. Let's see again. So this one we kill it. Twin property on a null value. So let me see. Uh target. Target has a material. No. Root playground. Enemy chaser 2. Oh. I hate myself. I hate everything in life, especially Godot. You know what it is? You know what it is? It's this freaking, it's this freaking enemy. Because this freaking enemy, ah, I made it edi editable. And so the Sprite 2D has no freaking material. The, the This freaking, ah, it has no material. The enemy chaser has no material. But why is that? Okay, uh, I, I I want to understand how it is possible that this bad boy has a material. Oh, because it's made local to scene. No. If I don't do that, what happens? Like, come on, why the enemy chaser has no material? Because it was made local to scene. Is that true? Or, what? No, it's just that it, it wasn't updated because I... What? What? It... 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 It, it appeared. <laughs> it appeared. It appeared. And so do you have a... Do you have a material now, my guy? Yes, you do. Holy shit. What the fuck? Okay. Anyway. That is... That is weird behavior to me. So now it will work. Let's go! Incredible! <laughs> editable children strikes again. This time is what it was not. It, it was not just the editable children. It was also the fact that my enemy chaser is inheriting from enemy, right? It's inheriting from enemy, and for some reason, the slot on the shader material didn't update. It doesn't make any sense, but why not? Okay. Now I get why they say inheritance is bad. I hate inheritance. Most of the time, I hate it because it, it creates more problems than you want. Uh, okay, is the player able to die or not? Is the player able to die? I guess we can connect the death. And if we are dead, we are going to print... Uh, died like player died we are going to print player died I'm going to yield uh, I'm going to await get tree uh, get current scene no pfft, what, 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 what what I'm going to await um, get tree create timer like I'm going to wait for a, a small amount of time I'm going to time out, and then I'm going to call get tree reload current scene. Okay, and let's see if we can take. Let's see if we die, and maybe we do. Maybe we do the ga the um, a, a small game loop. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like we do damage. What is wrong again? What is wrong? What is wrong? Everything is wrong. Nothing is working. Hurtbox. You're going to do damage to what? You're going to do damage to the player. Oh, you know what might be happening? You know what might be happening? Um... The player has no hurt box. 
But the player has a hitbox, so that's great. Okay. Uh, what the fuck is wrong with that, though? The it's, it's It was not on the right layer. And it's also looking for something. What? What the fuck is this? It was not set up correctly. Okay, okay, okay. Now I get why the say inheritance is bad. Yeah. Hmm. Damage. Player died. Okay. Cool. Invincible for a, a bunch of time and then we die. Invincible and then we die. Okay. Not too bad. A bit, a bit shit, but not too bad. Not too bad. Um, the hit effect should reset itself at the very beginning. So we should do target.material. Uh, of course, if there is a target. If target, we do target material. So same thing in here, in fact, right? Um, if we don't have a target, so if not target, we can return because we don't want to do anything. If target, we do set shader para meter amount and we make sure to put it to zero a mount a a mount okay <laughs> um i'm wondering if i if i create an actual game loop with like a level and stuff i don't know if i don't think we have time for that to be honest so maybe we just have one level <laughs> this is bad maybe we just have one level Okay, having enemies with more health is cool, though. But... I don't know. What do you think? We do a bit of visuals and a bit of juice, or we work on, on a game loop? We kind of have a game loop, in a way. No? <laughs> I don't know if we can call that the game loop, but... Juice! Of course. Of course you want some juice. Um, then it could be that you have a small corridor in here. It could be fun to have a small corridor and you need to use your dash. This is a way to teach you to use your dash. Otherwise, it's super painful to go through that. Do you think it works? Maybe not. Juice. I wanted to have shooting enemies also, but we can create that relatively easily, to be honest. Maybe we should go crazy with the layout and make make a layout which is a bit more interesting. What do you think? Having having a very straight layout is not super cool. I think it's more fun to have like a bunch of weird thingies. Editing the layout like like that is kind of okay though, especially if you can if you allow yourself to make it weird. You need to have rooms, I guess, from time to time. Otherwise, otherwise the game is 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 lacking. This is a big room, and what we might do is, what we might do is give you um, give you obstacles inside. That way, you can react to stuff. Um, and our background is not, <laughs> our background is not great. We might, we might put a parallax background. I don't have the new parallax background though, because I'm not using good old whatever. <laughs> oh, I took some damage here. Okay. Traversal is kind of fun. I guess it would be more fun if we don't necessarily need a lot of enemies. We might just have... Oh, fuck. Um, we might just have also, like, things on the walls and, and stuff like that. It could also work. You see what I mean? Just do a shader parallax. Yeah. But I mean setting up the, the parallax background is not that complex. I could even I could even do that. I could even do a parallax 
uh, background. I could even do just that and I think it would already work. Like parallax layer. I put my background in here and I simply put motion scale uh, 0. Point, I don't know, 8 to have some kind of parallax. Spikes on the wall could be a thing. Yeah, I think spikes on the wall could be a thing. Boost around that can speed you up could be interesting if the walls have something like spikes. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, having bouncers on walls, right? Yeah, it's kind of cool to have... Whoa, 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 whoa. The game is really difficult, though. The game is too difficult. I was thinking of being able to charge the attack. Because charging the attack could make you go faster. That way you could charge your attack while you are waiting because you see sometimes you will you will find yourself in a situation where you 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 move like that and you could be charging your attack i think it could make sense because you have only one one thing to do in the game it could be fun i'm also really wondering if having the dash having the dash opposed to the direction makes sense having the dash it feels a bit weird to be honest I'm wondering what I prefer. It forces you to move. Because the dash is kind of an attack, I think having the mouse in the direction where you want to go for the dash makes more sense. Slightly bouncing off enemies could make it safer. A charge attack sounds cool. Uh, we bounce off enemies. We bounce off enemies though. Look at that. So because we kill it, we don't bounce. But when we, but when we uh, don't kill it, we bounce off enemies. Um, we could, though, make it so we bounce less, because right now we bounce a lot, okay? So let's fix that. Um, push direction, we said direction, time push, and we want, like, 60% six, of that? That's, I see, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this one is easy. We bounce, we bounce. Okay, easy. I mean, those are like the teaching, fuck. Those are like the, the teachers. So they're like kind of easy. Uh, we need to cool down the, the dash also. Let's cool down the dash right now. Um, uh, timer dash. Timer. Another timer. And I call it uh, cool down. I call it, I could call it cool down. Dash cool down, but yeah. Um, we are going to have a, a, a can dash function and we are going to put it to true. Okay. So whenever we start the dash, we are dashing is equal to true. We put that to uh, false. And as soon as we are done, can dash is equal to false. As soon as we're done with that, we do um, timer cooldown uh, start. And we started with the uh, dash cooldown okay so we need to define those things so first of all uh var can dash bool is equal to true by default why not uh export var dash cooldown it should be 1.5 seconds maybe even more okay uh what else do we need uh the access to the timer timer cooldown ah timer cooldown Let's see that. We don't have any UI to see it, but... Uh, so I can dash, I can dash, I can dash, I can dash, I can dash for as much as I want. So it's not working. Because whenever we are in here, if dashing or not can dash, you return. <laughs> and in here, you put can dash to true. Okay. I think that should be, that should be good. So can dash, can dash, can dash. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool. We can use the dash less often. This is great. Boom. Then boom and boom. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad, not too shabby. Um, not too bad, not too shabby. Don't you think the background should be scrolling? Do I have a scrolling texture in here? Ah, I don't have it. Why do I have... Why? Why? Walls. 
Shared. Tell, are you telling me that in my shaders, there's no scrolling texture? There's no scrolling texture. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, we can do it later. Um, 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 maybe we do a s very small break. I want to continue a bit. I hope it's fine for you. Uh, because I, it's, it's, it's not in a satisfying state at the moment. Um, I do a quick break. I give some food to the cats. And, and we continue. Right? Okay, quick break. See you in just a second. If you get the reward, Ben and a blink. Let's freaking go. Let's freaking go. We did it. We did it. And you should also try the, the Bill Book one. <laughs> it's actually horrible. La 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 la. La la la. 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 La 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 la. Okay, so there's no music, so I will do the music myself. Two, 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 two. Are you ready? Two, 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 two. Let's go. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Why is it only visual stuff? It's not working. <laughs> we have a problem. Okay, okay, okay. Let's stop everything. It looks like this. <laughs> so the the bill book, I actually didn't make the bill book. I got it, uh, the Kindama. I got it on... Uh, on on Sketchfab, I animated it, and I f fucking created rope physics for that. I, I mean, I created it's it's in Blender, of course, but I actually used rope physics. <laughs> Can I rant about people uh, saying hi without the actual question? or saying, hey, I have a problem without the actual question or problem in the message. I hate that. And you know, we talked about that earlier. Like, I'm not super good at replying to messages. Uh, all right, so take a, take a good look. Take a good look. Uh, take a good look of how the game is. Take a good look at the game, right? Take a good look at the game because we're going to modify the visuals. Remember how it looks? I know it looks pretty bad. Uh, we are going to modify that. It looks very static. It looks very... It looks very bad. It's time for... Um, it's time for some cool things. First of all... First of all... Um, first of all, first of all, first of all, where's my camera? My camera is here. My camera, we can attach a script. I already have a script uh, that I put in uh, where I think I have a scene for my camera. Camera, scripts, camera. All right. And this camera is able to do what? Is able to register itself to globals. Let's create a global script. It's going to be, it's going to be a scene because we never know globals.tscn okay auto load globals you're going to see why in just a second boom globals and we will have a reference to our camera which is a camera 2d it could even be a its own class and stuff and whatever this is just an easy way to do it so auto load globals add Boobity boop, that is great. So now, 
no matter where you are, you can uh, call the, the global camera function to do what? Most importantly, to you can do a bunch of stuff with this with this camera, probably. Um, you can do a bunch of stuff, or is it the normal camera? Export dynamic enabled. Why am I not seeing that? Why am I not seeing that? Godot is, is having problem here. Ooh, Godot is having problem because it crashed. Congrats. This is the first crash. Congrats. I'm going into that just for a second. Uh, slash bounce. <sighs> first crash of the day. Nice, Mr. Riptic Takeover. Your hyper slice game looks awesome. Is this the start of a new game? It's just a prototype for fun. It's just a prototype for fun. I I'm not planning on doing anything special with it right now. So dynamic enabled, no. I just want to be able to uh, shake that camera. So in this case, deep layer. Whenever you're taking damage, for example, that's that, or whenever you're dealing damage, we can call globals camera shake. Not show behind parent shake we want to shake for a duration so we deal damage let's say 0.15 um 20 frequency and 15 amplitude that might be way too much uh let's react to taking damage so when we whenever we took damage let's do that let's do camera global dot shake 0.15 it's the same amount, why not? I'm going to put it just below that. So normally, right now, whenever I do damage, it's going to shake a bit, first of all. Slight shake, but it's not too bad. We might make it smaller uh, or longer. And when we take damage, we have some shake. Okay, it looks a bit bad, but it's okay. I think what could be interesting is that whenever we take damage, it pushes us. The enemy could push us while taking damage. That way it would give us a chance to react. Because you see, otherwise it's not really fun. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, maybe bigger for damage and enemies, but smaller for bouncing. Definitely, definitely. So if we are, if we are uh, touching a wall, we make it barely noticeable, I guess. So 0.1, probably not too much of a frequency. I don't remember if it's if it's amplitude and frequency. I think it's frequency and then amplitude. Where is it? Frequency and then amplitude. Will they push you into a wall like a bully at school? Maybe in a way, maybe. And when we deal damage to enemies, we want that to be longer. And maybe the frequency shouldn't be too high. I think like that, it's okay. And then when we take damage, we take damage, we take damage, it's like high amplitude, high frequency, not too long. Mm hmm. Oh, I'm lagging a bit because the computer is going into dark mode. Give me a second. Okay, struggling, 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 and going into dark mode, okay. Uh, Godot is always in dark mode because there's no easy way to uh, to switch depending on what is happening. There's no built-in way to do that. Like, Godot is not able to look at the system uh, dark mode or white mode, I think, but yeah. Um, that is okay. I think the enemies uh, needs to be able to push us, but we can do that later. We have our camera. I'm wondering if the camera should not move. I, I'm wondering if the camera should not be closer to us by default. We are a bit small, to be honest. No, everything is a bit small. It doesn't look... It's not really noticeable. It's not really noticeable. Um, but I think it might be because we don't realize 
how big the screen is, and this is in this is in pixels, I think. I think this is the amplitude in pixels. And I'm wondering if by default our camera should not be zoomed in. So zoom in is what? Zoom in is a smaller value, it's a bigger value. So it could be like 1.2 by default, and then it could it could move, right? Let's do dynamic enabled. Let's do dynamic enabled and let's modify what the dynamic is. Um, let's modify what the dynamic is because I don't remember what I coded. Start tracking. I agree that making everything bigger would improve. Also hiding some of the level. Ah, we can put some of, uh, we can put a fog of war or something. Okay, so we are, we are slightly, uh, closer. We are a bit closer. We are a bit closer. I don't know if I make everything bigger or I just zoom in again. Ha! Huh. Maybe I should just make everything a bit bigger. Fuck. I don't want to modify everything. I don't want to modify everything. Unfortunately. Okay, not too bad. Maybe we keep it that not bigger and on the playground. What if I don't change the look of the playground so far? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it works. I know what, it's not too bad. I don't like the way it shakes when I do that, uh, but okay. Um, okay, uh, we are only going to do mouse input, I think, for now, because simply I want to make my life easier. Uh, I want to make my life easier, so unfortunately I think I'm going to do only mouse input. Um, I want dynamic to be enabled, and so I need to set the player, but player, check if offset, this is not what I want to do. Uh, twin dynamic, if player is inside, uh, offset based on ball position from the center. This is this is reminiscent of dash ball, in fact. Um, so I will be moving. I will be moving the thing. So that might work, in fact. Let's try to see if it works by default. And if it doesn't, I don't have player is controller, so it's going to break. Uh, let's add that to the player. Um, var is controller bull is equal to false camera camera when you want a juicy game is super important um but it's also difficult to make uh good so as you can see there's definitely something weird going on it doesn't work it's it's not what we want this dynamic doesn't work uh for now because it's going to move when you do that it's going to move towards the the camp the point and so it doesn't look good also it takes a huge amount of time because i don't know what it's doing what is it moving global mouse position player aim tween it's moving what it's moving the drag horizontal yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think it works. I don't think it works, unfortunately. Uh, distance from center, because this is the distance from the center of the screen, which doesn't... Mm, get global mouse position. No, it's it's compared to, the, compared to the player, but still, it doesn't work. It doesn't really work. It doesn't really work. So I think what we can do, though, is... Uh, as you need to bounce behind you, I'm not sure, but maybe the camera moving to the opposite of the mouse could work. It's true, but at the same time, the moment you're going to want to attack a player, uh, an, an enemy, you're going to move in the different direction. So I think moving the camera towards the mouse doesn't really work. 
I think it's it's not a good idea because of that because you 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 put it behind you to to bounce but you put it in front of you to attack. Yeah, so I think I think we can simply not do that. Um and we can and we can definitely zoom in and out. We can definitely zoom in and out on the player's position. No. No. Let's zoom in and out depending on the player's speed. So we can get um, on player speed. We can, we can look at the player current speed uh, compared to... Um, we can take it's it's to its real speed so velocity dot length we can divide it by the player's speed right which should give us something between zero and one uh, var speed ratio something like that should give us something between zero and one right um, zero being being that yes. So then we can zoom. Uh, let's keep it there. We can zoom directly between two values, depending on the on the speed ratio. Uh, and I think we want to inverse because when we are going the f as fast as possible, it's going to be zero. So we want to inverse it, and we are going to modify those things using. Uh, normal zoom is the zoom that we have, and we want to define a export var um, max zoom or something like that, which is a vector 2. And so max zoom is probably going to be to be 1. Uh, sorry, I, I'm, I made a mistake. This is what I want to do. Yeah, max zoom. So I want to go from normal zoom, normal zoom to... Max zoom. Incredible. Ah, what am I doing? Max zoom. Right? Does that work? Uh, player aim. We don't care about that. We don't do anything with player aim so far. I think it's going to be better. Okay, so right now we are like that. And as soon as we move, it does the opposite of what I want because I'm stupid. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Normal zoom. We are going to lerp. Uh, we are going to uh, tween that to make sure that it's even smoother because lerping it will be uh, too fast. We want to go from normal zoom, which is the, the one we defined, to max zoom. Okay. So what does it do? It does. It does that. Normal zoom is the the one at the beginning, so it's like 1.2, and then it should zoom out. By going to zero, by going to one. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And this is what I've defined, right? I've defined max zoom to be one. It's yes. And speed ratio, it's my player velocity. When my player velocity is as big as it can be. Oh, I'm stupid. It's just that. It's just that I'm stupid. Okay, so the problem we, ha we have with that is that it's going to zoom out quickly. Exactly. It's going to zoom out quickly because the our speed is instantly big. Which is not good. Okay? Our speed is instantly big. Uh, so, let's say we are going from 1.3 to 1.1. 1.1 seems good enough. And we are going to tween it. We are going to tween it. So let's create a tween specifically for that. Tween zoom. Let's do tween. That way we're going to smooth it up even more. Smooth it up even more. We could do some rotational rotational zoom and stuff also. That could be cool. Rotational thingy is, is not used enough. So in here, um, we are going to do if tween. And I'm going to replace that with tween zoom. Okay, we can create a tween. And we are going to tween the property tween zoom. We are going to tween tween zoom, tween the property 
uh, of self, the property zoom from uh, from our current thingy to the new zoom. Let's call it new new zoom var new zoom. Okay, and we are. Hey, Tomero, how are you doing? And we're doing that in like 0.1 second. Is that enough? Will it be too much? Let's see how it looks. Boom, we zoom out and we slowly come back. We zoom out and we slowly come back. Boom. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not incredible. It's not, it's not incredible, but it, it does the job. It gives a bit, like when you're going fast, it gives you more... You can see more of the stuff. I think it's it's fair enough. And we might play around with the values, of course, to have something. Uh, one thing that I didn't take into account is... Uh, one thing that I didn't take into account... No, I think it's fine. Yeah, what do, what do you think? And then it comes back. You can, of course... The speed ratio is this. I think it might be a problem, though, because it's not... It's just a ratio. It depends on your speed. Yeah, okay. We could, smooth, we could make it less smooth, I guess, by making it slightly faster. I think it's not too bad. I don't I don't like the shake. I don't like the way it looks though. I really don't like the way it looks though so far. I really don't. Okay, so far, we have a camera that is slightly better. We have a camera that is slightly better. Um, we will, of course, need more enemies and, and stuff, right? We will need more enemies and stuff. Whoopsie doopsie, that's not what I wanted to do. And you changed it. What the actual fuck? Why, why am I not able to... What did I do? Okay, I'm removing this one. And... Oh my god, I changed the shape. This shape, I changed it. <sighs> this is so bad. Okay, enemy chaser 2. We would need an easy way to access them uh, without having to do editable children go into the health and change the health like that. It's a bit painful. Uh, also, I think we should probably, inside of the enemy chaser, make sure that all of that is not selectable. That way it's good. And so we can duplicate. Duplicate, I've said. Put that in, in here, maybe, at the end. Okay, the chasers are not necessarily the, the easiest to play with. Oh! Remove health in previously freed instance. Ah! Uh, anytime I'm going to do that, the hurt box is going to be... The hitbox is not going to have the right health. Is it? Is it? Is it really the case? How is it possible? Health. How is it possible? Can you tell me? And it's so frustrating. I'm not... I'm not going to do that every time. Right? I definitely need a better way. Enemy chaser... I don't even know which one we are. We are on the fourth one, I think. It's a bit too hard. Um, can you explain to me why I didn't see the hitbox, the hit effect? 
Can you explain to me why exactly the hit effect didn't do anything? Oh, are you telling me that every time- every time- this is a bug, right? This is a bug. This must be a bug. It feels like it's losing. It feels like it's losing the reference to the node. The moment you do you do editable children, it feels like the the things are missing their hitbox. Uh, are missing their hitbox. Sorry, this is not what I wanted to say. Are missing their uh are missing their Okay, let's put this one right there. Ah, come on. I feel like there's something weird. Hmm. I'm going to go into the chasers and I'm going to change directly the health in here to health two. You know what? It's also very stupid that at the beginning of the game, well, even though this is just a playground, but at the beginning of the game, I should be close enough that we can hit the back wall. That way, people understand. Like, they will do that and they will be like, oh, okay. Okay. You see, this one works, right? Okay, cool. Now you understand how it works and you're like, okay, I'm going to fight. And I can use my dash. Okay. The dash should deal damage. So I guess should have a way to deal damage with the dash. It feels a bit clunky though. Everything feels a bit clunky. <laughs> Everything feels a bit clunky. Uh, we need a few particles. So we need a few things. So let's open up our trusty uh, designer. It is nearly eight. You guys are still here. Let me should refresh your dash. You think so? But I'm afraid that then you will just const constantly be dashing. Yep, we are. Okay. You guys are crazy. You guys are crazy. Always. Hello, Don. Always. Okay, let's create a new one. Let's create a new folder. Give me a second. I will uh, save that. I want to have something that looks kind of nice. I don't want to end the stream with something like that. It looks too bad. I know it's supposed to be a prototype, but come on, guys. We can we can have... It's not because it's a prototype that it has to look like shit, right? So prototypes, I'm going to call it... What is the name again? Uh, Ramiro, hello. What is the name again that we said? It's a sword, and we dash, and right now it's called bounce slash bounce. Do we? Do you have a better name? I'm creating the folder, so you have until like you have three seconds to tell me a better name. Come on, I can't duplicate. I can't rename that folder. Okay, dash sword. Dash sword. It's not necessarily just about the dash. The most of it is not dashing, right? Was it hyper bounce? Hyper bounce? You know what? Just for the lols, just just because it's fun, hyper bounce. Allez, c'est parti. Dash pong two now with swords. <laughs> hyper bounce assets. Alrighty, let's go into here. Uh, we need a few things. We will need a player that will be probably like 256. This will be Godot. We are going to do it in a, in a bunch of, uh, like very soon. We need uh, an enemy. New folder 2. <laughs> New folder 2 is good. 
Hyper Bounce sounds too cool to not choose it. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, player, I need a bunch of... I need a bunch of assets that are going to be pretty useful. So, like a circle. You always need a circle. Um, remember... Remember that we are going for an art style, which is very cartoony. I never showed you, in fact. I'm a bad streamer. I never showed you my inspiration and stuff. So, this is... This is... Uh, where I wrote down the idea. Slash and bounce. And the visuals, I want them to be a bit cartoony. Um, vector, vector art. So this is um, some inspiration from Ross. This is uh, a game from Salman. If you don't know Salman, you should definitely uh, check what they're doing. Like you see this cartoony, bouncy outlines with outlines, uh, simple shapes. Cool things moving and stuff. This is cool, right? Bloop, 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 bloop. Uh, this is Blumgy. Other reference with like uh, cartoony, simple shapes, outlines and stuff. I want to go for that. Uh, Nat, am I supposed to reply through text or can I just reply here? Okay. Uh, honestly, honestly, so far I'm fine, but I don't want I don't want you to feel obligated to stay though. Uh, if it's just to launch a raid, am I not able to do it as a moderator? I don't think I'm going to go until like 11 p.m. or something. So let it's it's 8 p.m. for me. So I think maximum two hours. I think maximum two hours. Maybe even less. I want. I would like to go further. I would like to do more. But the thing is, it's not reasonable. <laughs> Actually, making your character gravitate towards the closest wall could be interesting. Mm. Death animation would add a lot to. Yeah, definitely. We're going to do that. Need to be the editor to do a raid, I believe. Just go straight until the next takeover <laughs> needs to start. Yeah, exactly. It's for responsibility reasons. We're in the same time zone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. I don't. I don't want it to be too late for you though. So. But like, I'm taking a break now and uh, and working more later. Okay. Uh, okay. How long is, is your break? I think I'm going to be at least... I'm going to be there at least for, an, for the next hour. At least. Minimum. Because we need to do some juice and, and juice takes time. <laughs> Just go straight. The, the next takeover, we don't even know where when it will be. Like, probably... Next week, or I'll check it in one hour then. Okay, cool, thank you. Uh, circle. We need a death animation. Um, death animation would be... Would be... Would be will be uh, gory, right? It will be gory. But it we will use a circle, I think. Okay, let's try to go... Let's try to be a bit more efficient. I I've been saying that since the beginning of the stream. I mean, I mean, I'm incredibly unsatisfied with my ability to go fast. I need to go faster. Faster, faster. Okay, let's make that uh, 230. Okay, let's make sure that this is like that. This is white. This is a circle. Um, what do you mean, new, new little cat? Why support you, X11? <laughs> I don't understand. What is this image editing program? It's called Affinity Designer. Uh, I'm not sure I can recommend recommend it to you nowadays. Don't worry, worst case, you just call this part one and return for the next takeover week. Ah, that would be cool. That would be cool. That would be cool. We are probably going to need a line. We often need lines. You might not realize how important lines are. Um, lines are like the pinnacle of things i believe in godot if you want to align things to velocity you have to align them to the y-axis uh on particles but not but not sorry i'm in the wrong screen but not um only for particles this is what i mean don't you think it's crazy don't you think it's crazy it is only the case for uh, for particles. Particles are 
like zero degrees is aligned to Y, but inside of Godot, zero degrees is like that, if you want to be pointing towards zero degrees. And I guess this is because uh, particles are probably directly doing stuff with the GPU, and GPU is probably like zero degrees is up. I don't know, something like that. We need circles, we need that. Um, circles in that might already be enough to do a bunch of things. We need a slash. We need a oh, we need a sword and stuff. But do I need? Do I start doing the 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 visuals right now? We can do a bit of visuals, I guess. Okay, we can do a bit of visuals. So let's move this enemy right there. I'm gonna move to 1024. Let's do like ah, come on. Let's do a sword in here. Let's do a sword. 315. Uh, my sword is probably going to be, I don't know, bigger. 300 and 128. We need a sword. Then we need a, we need a, some sort of, um, how can I call it? Um, we need the, the, the sword trail. <laughs> so maybe I can call it sword trail. Right, we are going to make the sword trail just after. Don't look at the don't look at the size of my images. Those are huge because I don't care. It's a prototype and stuff. If you have a very complex 2D game, you might have to be careful about your texture size because at some point it's going to take a lot of space in VRAM. For most games, you don't really really care. Um, I need to take inspiration from our trusty friend, the Godot engine icon. And I always have the Godot engine icon somewhere on my computer. Resources, I think it is called icons or logo. It's called logo. Why is it so slow? And I have the Godot, Godot icon SVG. I have it here. Boom. Boom. Okay, we can take that as a as a base um though i need it entirely so please give it to me like that yes thank you and i will remove you i don't want you to be embedded um so the player is going to be somewhat something like that i guess uh you need to tell me what the enemies should be um let's stay let's say enemy chaser let's say Another enemy will be 1310. Uh, enemy shooter. We will have at least those two enemies. I think it's a good start. And the sword. I want a sword. Sword 2D. Either I start by doing a sword from, from scratch. Like I think about it and I find something cool. Or I take a reference. Uh, I think I don't want something too complex. I think as a reference, this is good. As a reference, whoops, either as a reference, this is good. I want something like that in a way, right? I think this is good. Okay, perfect. Um, and I think I want to go with an art style where everything is not perfect. What I mean by that is I don't have perfect, whoops, I don't have perfect shapes. So a perfect shape would be, first of all, let's remove the stroke. If we do strokes, we're do going to do do them in engine i think um so a perfect sword would be something like that like everything is aligned this is in the middle this is at the same spot as the other thing you see what i mean and i think i want to go a bit more weirdish but but there's a fine line between weirdish and like weirdish on purpose and it just doesn't look good you see what i mean you can easily fall into the trap of it doesn't look like it's made on purpose and it and it looks stupid and that's <laughs> and that's not what we want that's not what we want uh let's start with simple shapes so first you see you you get you get what i mean um Report the engine. Animate SVG. Uh, Godot doesn't really use SVG. Um, Godot will convert that. 
right away to... Um, Godot will convert your SVGs to PNGs, I think. It doesn't... It doesn't use SVGs. We can make it comically large in a way, right? Is that aligned? SVG to bitmap. Yeah, it will go it will go and turn it into a, a PNG or something. Or even uh what am I trying to do? Like I, I want that to be aligned and I want that to be some some somehow like this. <sighs> I like the idea of having a dent. It's it's pretty cool having a dent on the uh on the thingy like that maybe more dense to make it cooler this is details we we might not do details right now but yeah yeah it's not too bad in 4.2 you can uh re-raster at runtime though really okay so the idea with comically large is that it by default it's normal i think it's relatively normal and we are going to make it scale enormously uh, when we attack, I, I think that could be cool, right? Um, I'm going to I'm going to convert that to curve. I am going to make it into you see something like that. Like I don't want things to be perfect, and so I feel like if I kind of make things not completely straight, it will be more interesting. Um. We need to see something. So let's say that this is relatively like that. Let's let's do a grayscale idea of what we want things to look like. Um, something like that. Something like that. We probably want a bit more contrast to that. So this would be more like this, right? This would be this would be with this would be our our sword. Um, do we shade it a bit like that? Do we shade it a bit? And we could, we could even, oh, you know what we could do? Do we, do we have the right to do that? Or Godot is going to kill me. Do we have the right to group that and do this? I think we can, right? I think we can. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to know, right? You're going to know. Uh, center, center. And I, I want that to be slightly less uh, visible. So I could use an imprint, maybe maybe with a different... Uh, it, looks, it looks incredibly stupid. It looks incredibly stupid. Maybe we just change the color. Maybe we just change the color. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, let's go into here and let's make that... Oh yeah, but if we make that white, it doesn't really work anymore. Let's make it. Let me. Let's make it like that, right? Affinity Master Race, exactly. Affinity. Nobody except Godot Engine of Vision is going to know. Yes. Nobody except Godot. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they won't say anything. Okay. So far, so good. The player, the player. I think we can use somehow the Godot Engine icon. I think it's cool, right? But I think we can, we can simplify it, maybe. Or do we use it like that? Affinity is great for adding beautiful shading effects easily. Yeah. I'm wondering if I if I take this and I shade it very simply by doing that. Putting that in the middle. Do I shade it like... Um, as if... As if shade is on the right like this. Do I do that? Do I make do I make it like them? Do I put that at the top? It kind of looks cool, right? We could duplicate that and remove all of those. It kind of looks cool. We could make that on top of everything. But then okay, 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 okay. I know what I need to do. They are doing it. And they have some sort of sh shape right it goes a bit like this it, it gives a bit more depth what do you think what do you think what do you guys think you guys you guys what do you think of that whoops sorry i don't want to do more shading than that i think 
they say that in practicals NPC. You can use the Godot logo. Oh yeah, yeah. You just have to. Yeah, yeah. You just have to say that it's the Godot logo. Yeah. Um, if we do use the Godot logo and nothing else, I think we should at least either we modify it a bit to fit our style, or we simply detach the eyes and stuff. That way, we can reconstruct the Godot logo. And we can, like, make it move a bit. I don't know. Uh, it's Affinity Designer. It's a vector editing software. I think my sword is not too bad right now. I'm going to put it inside a group. I'm going to put that in here. Um, PNGs are big. Yes, huge PNGs. And I, and I don't really care. And I'm going to create a trail. To create a trail, I'm going to put two points in here. Then a, th then a point in here. Then a point... In here, then a point in here, then a point in here. Boom, everything in white. And now I create a trail. Okay, let me think. Oh, how should it look like? You're moving your stuff like that. So it probably look like this. And then you convert that to curves. Is that too... Is that good enough? Like, th like that. I think it can be, I think it can be good like that. Uh, the one that can be bought. Exactly. That's the problem. That's the main problem with, um, with that so far. That's my, that's my concern. And that's why I'm, I don't know how to feel about, I don't know, I don't know what, how to feel about recommending it to you because the software is really cool. And it's, I think, um, like you don't need to buy an Adobe subscription and stuff to have like um, um, the other software to use Illustrator and it's better on some aspects like Inkscape is free and open source but is is it's lacking a bunch of stuff that I need personally and so I feel like I would like to recommend it also the price is relatively cheap cheap but I don't know the future uh, how the future is going to hold for that software because they've been bought by Canva so I'm I'm afraid. I'm afraid of the future to be honest. Afraid is is maybe a big word. But yeah. We can try that in engine and see if it looks good enough. Uh we have a sword that is good. So right now we are going to use the player just like that. That way it's going to be easier for us. Um we are going to keep some some space around the player. That way we can do uh, outlines easier in the um, in the thing. Document setup. Can I can I change the background color? I never changed the background color, but like, can I change this color in here? Bleed scale color, transparent background, actual zoom size. Well, I don't know. T too late. Okay, enemies. Oh, the cats are fighting. Um, how, what should be an enemy? How should it look like? Should it be, should it be a circle? A circle, a modified circle? Sh what should it be? Uh, this is not a circle, though. What the fuck did I do? How did I, how did I do that? It was not even a circle. Put it inside center, center. Okay. Uh, it was not even a circle. 215? 215. Eh, it was not circle-ish. Enemies, 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 enemies. The enemies shoot shooting should shoot directly from themselves. Um What is an enemy character? How does it look like? How do you convey uh how do you convey the idea that it's an enemy, you know? How do you convey the idea that it's an enemy? You make it... You make it more, like, shapey. Or... You use big bad eyes. I don't know what kind of style we want. I also think we don't have a lot of time, so maybe we don't care too much. Make it red and pointy. <laughs> make it red and pointy, that's true. Good work. It could work. It 
it could work. Honestly, I would like to take the time and do something cool, but uh, but I don't know. It looks awful. Red and pointy is kind of the classic danger thing. You're right, you're right. Um, you are totally right. And so... Let me think. Could I use... Could I use the star to do what I'm thinking? Star tool, double star tool. Could I use the star tool to do something? Even pointy teeth as well. So what I could do is make it pointy like that. I could use that. Yeah, that could work. I could use that. And I could fit. Uh, but I want more. Okay, I want some roundness. I want some roundness. So I think if I combine the two, it adds some roundness. It's just that it's not centered. But apart from that, it could be it could be fine. Can you align yourself? What on earth? What on earth is happening? Can you align yourself? You guys. You guys. The fuck? What is the what is the problem? Can you align? I'm 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 confused. What is what is this shape like? Why why is the center of this shape not the center? You see what I mean? Maybe it shouldn't be perfectly centered. You're right, you're right. You might be right. Uh so we make it more bumpy. We make it more reddish at the bottom then. Okay, let's make it let's make it a bit weirder. A, a bit weirder. You're right, you're right. Something like that. Would it be good enough? Let's see. <laughs> it looks incredibly stupid. It's, it's it's incredibly stupid. Give it pointy teeth as well. It's like a virus style. It looks very cool. You want pointy teeth? Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Scary and dumb. I love it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. If you love it, then we should go for that because we don't have uh, that much time. So pointy teeth. Um, and to make sure that they're not going to go on top, we are simply going to take them. Put it inside of a group, align them with this bad boy, and then put the group inside of the curve, and that way they are masked. All right. What kind of that? Do you think we should keep them uh, empty, empty inside, or we put some some white like that in the center? What do you think? What do you prefer? What do you think looks looks like an angry little sea mine? Ah, it could it could be an explosion, uh, a one that is exploding, right? <laughs> and later on, it will have an outline, but I think we are going to do it inside of the engine, right? Uh, we could have an a line stroke to the outside, and the color would probably be whoop, probably be white, uh, probably be like that. If the eyes are straightened on top, it might look more aggressive. Like that. <laughs> it looks like if it it's it's seeing things that are not great. It's been through many wars and and many bad things. It's like a flat top so it's squinting. A flat top so more like a, more like a square. You want to start with a square. You want to start with a square, maybe. And then... Ah, come on. We remove the stroke. Okay. And then we give it some roundness. Like that. The enemy has PTSD. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh, we put it like this. So what do you prefer? What kind of... What eye do you prefer? What eye do you prefer? Just cut the top of the rounded eye. Okay, so let me create another eye then. Uh, just for you guys. You guys are enjoying... Making things more complex than they should be. 
I'm joking, of course. I'm joking. This is all fun and good. Um, or, 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 I have, a, I have another solution. I have another idea. Okay, okay, okay. Before we do anything stupid, before we mess everything, let's put that further and let's use big. <laughs> What do you think about that? What do you think about that? It's even stupider. What do you think about that? It's even stupider. Big old brushy boy, <laughs> brushy brows. Is he questioning your entire existence? Yes. Mario, making enemies is always the coolest part. It's quite fun, right? Looks like the bugs in Dr. Mario. Yeah? Have you used before? Uh, before the Godot, nothing. Godot was the first engine I used. Those are some brows. You, may, maybe I can make them. It's mad at you for creating it. Exactly. Maybe maybe I can make it slightly. Okay. First of all, it needs to be lower. Oh, <gasps> it's even funnier. It's even funnier that those are not like completely. Look at that. Look at that. They are not even. They are not even placed the same. I think I like it when they're not the same. But I think the eyes... So what, what eye do you prefer? A one square, one round is pretty cool as a combo as well. With different eyes too. So I keep it like that? I mean, we can. We can. We can even, we can even make it look like uh, he took some damage by making it... What would be the color of damage? It would be kind of purplish like that. <laughs> <laughs> that is stupid, but if you mirror it, <laughs> dark purple, yeah, is, is it, is it, is, it needs to be visible enough from afar, makes them like sleep deprived, oh, you want to add, um, okay, let me think how I can do that, I think we can go, I think we can go with a stroke, I think we can go with a stroke, and we can turn, we don't have time for that though, um, how do they look? How do they look? How do you, how do you, what is the look of? Maybe we can like make that smaller also? I don't know. Is it, is it what it should look like? Swipe the black and white in one eye. Um, uh, swipe the black and white in one eye? Why? Why do you think it's it's a good idea? You want that? War paint. It it looks it looks more like war paint, yeah. It's a bit too much. Looks is going to war. <laughs> we can remove that. We can remove that. We can put the big mouth again. Uh eyes eyes white are better. I do agree. Whoops. And that should be black also, maybe. Put the eyes merch further apart. <laughs> you guys, you guys are not making my life easier. He looks stupid now. It looks like a fish. If I put the eyes further apart, it looks like a fish. Do you want that to look like a fish? It looks like a fucking fish. <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> this is stupid. I think it was better before. So... Here? You know what we can do? We can do that. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to change that. Okay. I don't know what to think of that uh, brown eye that he's having. I think it might be better if it's an outline and the interior is white. And he has a big stroke that is aligned to the center. What do you think? 
the brown the 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 blue eye the brown eye i don't know how you say it it could be like that what if you what if you gave him an eye patch it's a nice enemy an eye patch the shooter could have an eye patch which would be even funnier looks perfect okay it looks perfect let's go with that let's go with that perfect um let's go with that because we need to we need to make some progress what should be the general shape of the shooter the shooter is going to shoot you so i, I do agree that having an, an eye patch is fun i don't know why but it, it sounds fun so how do you make an eye patch you can you can start with something like this and you can make it rounded but only at the bottom right and you can make it uh dark and you can put it on top of things or maybe you put it slightly different color that way you can actually see it the eyebrow should be on top this is an eye patch and not an ipad and of course we need a, a way to attach it uh make the top looks like a cannon or the spikes shooter with eye patch sounds legit and then it needs a band exactly okay 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 i think this is going great so where should the band go uh how do you attach an at an eye patch it's attached like that right so i guess there's a band going from here to like somewhere here this is stupid this is stupid but also it's so much fun no it's so much fun designing stupid enemies it's always very fun uh don't worry we are going to fix the fact that it's going behind the thing um under one ear over the other i should make it here no but just before the shoot he removed the eye patch uh i don't think we're going to have time for that I don't think we're going to have time for that. Uh, I like the idea of the... I like the idea of making him shoot from here. Very simple, but he could be shooting from here, basically. That's... It would be, it would be the same enemy in a way, but he would be shooting from here. That would be the top of the cannon. Uh, maybe... Maybe it's funnier if it has a uni... A unibrow, this one. <laughs> he looks crazy without. <laughs> Shooting brain. It looks incredibly. It looks incredibly stupid. <laughs> this one looks kind of. It looks kind of angry and stuff. This one. <laughs> this one is just afraid. He's, he's surprised. I think he's afraid. He's afraid of us. Uh, why is the eye patch not exactly the same? I don't know. I think it's nice that it has no, it has no thingy. I like literally blowing his stop when he shoots you. Yeah, that's that's kind of fun, right? That's kind of fun. Uh, and that way it's easy. I just don't know the eye patch how I should attach it, and I think I need to go instead of going here. I need to go here, right? Um, I need to go here, maybe. And, and then, I'm not sure. And then we would go, and then we would go, like, to the other side. What may, it, it maybe it doesn't make sense. It's temporary, right? Where I, something like that. What if you go from bottom right to top left? Yeah, okay, that's that's kind of what I wanted. Okay, but bottom right, so maybe more more here, right? More here. I like the idea that even the eye patch is like kind of going a bit on top of the eye. It looks it looks a bit silly. I like that. It theoretically doesn't really doesn't really work right like right now. So, it could be that this is here, in a way. Could be that this is here. All right? Could be some sort of a bandana, and so you would remove that. The eye patch would be like that. Attach it to the spike and make it perfectly diagonal. In here? This one or this one? 
Looks double. Double looks cooler. <laughs> double looks cooler. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, anyone. This is stupid, and so I'm going to do that because obviously double double is cooler. You're you're definitely right. Uh, I need to put that as a child of the curve, though, to be in uh, below the thing. So child of the curve to be below the thing. And so the problem now is that... Holy shit. The problem now is that the eye is on top. And I don't want the eyes to be like that. Ah, this is shit. This is shit. The bottom... Agree. Agree. Ah, this is shit. How we do, do we do that? In Godot, I think in, it's fine. In Godot, we can reconstruct it to be... I think in Godot, we can reconstruct it to be fine without having to do that. Um, because in Godot, we can use... Yeah, yeah, it should be fine. Okay, we just need to export those things separately. And no, no browse for this one. Uh, do we change the mouth? Do we change the mouth? Like... Oh, you know what? I think I think there's a better way. This one has to be really stupid. And I feel like it's not stupid enough right now. Yeah. Has to be more stupid. The mouth looks too looks too perfect. Let's let's move it slightly. Yeah, better. Not too bad. Invert the mouth and let the teeth above the lip. It has to make you feel bad for hurting it. Tooth from bottom, maybe. This one looks like a children. Uh, invert the mouth and let teeth above lip. I don't see what you mean. Do you prefer it at the bottom? At the bottom, I feel like it, it's weird. It, lo <laughs> it looks weird at the bottom. <laughs> I don't... I don't... It is. It is weird. But maybe weird is good. I don't know. Top one looks better. But a smaller one, no? Maybe not. Maybe we make it a bit wider because it's like... Yeah. We could we could turn that into a child, but I don't think it's it's a good idea necessarily. But we could turn it into a child by doing that, rounding the corners, rounding the corners, and do this. We <laughs> could turn it into something that is not that is not even doing damage to you. Like it's 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 a bad one. What if you put it either left or right instead of the center, so it looks like it lost a tooth? Ah, yeah. Maybe. Maybe you're right. Uh, I'm hiding it for now. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you prefer the... What what tooth do you prefer? What teeth? Tooth? What, what do you prefer? I mean, we could. If we wanted to make it look like it's stupid, we could have another one in here and, and be like, this one is really stupid. Just the top one. Maybe slightly more on the left. Like that. Scary and funny. And you know what? Even better. Uh, not straight, of course. <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> it's really stupid. It's really stupid and that's why I love it. Okay. Perfect. Um, crooked tooth. Alright. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We need to make some tests. So let's do... Um, let's do a test, and for testing, I don't want to have, I don't want to have the outlines on them. I want to do that in engine, I think. Um, that way, that way it's going to look better, even if we scale it. Because the problem, if, if we don't have it, that is that it's not going to look, uh, alright. So, perfect. Perfect. What time is it? It's 
8.30. I'm probably going to have pizza tonight. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the sword. The sword trail is here. We have a circle, we have a line. Um, oh, we need a bullet. Uh, we need a bullet for that, for that bad boy in here. So let's do a bullet, uh, Mario style, I think. What do you think? Uh, a bullet Mario style should be good. So we can grab that as a reference. Um, what I mean by bullet Mario style is you have something like that. Okay, this is the bullet. Broop. And maybe we turn the bullet into an actual character. What do you think? The bullet itself... The bullet itself will be... The bullet itself will be dark. And the eye should be white. Just the way we did it in here, right? Is that a copy of Mario or is it fine? <laughs> the bullet needs to be scared though. Okay, uh, what is a mouth that is representing scariness? Sc uh, scariness. What, how do you represent that you're scared? What is the... How should we do it? Will you be working on this game later or on your on your streams? <sighs> to be honest, uh, KV, I don't know. We discussed it really, really briefly, and I might do another takeover if it's possible. But I don't know. Big eyes, open mouth, kinda. Okay, so what if we put the mouth right there and we do I think this has to be sharp. So I might I might work on it a bit more. I'm not sure. doesn't look scared <laughs> it is shit make it tear up a little bit and frown and frown uh do it jiggle though probably like a w big eye open mouth happy bullet this one is happy so it's not good this one is happy um if we want it to be sad we can do the opposite i guess but i need i need okay let's take another point in here and let's do that <laughs> this is so bad. This is so bad. What the fuck is this? Give it also an eyebrow that goes from left to top in a curvature. From left to top in a curvature. Left to top. So I'm going to put it like that. Left. It's it's angry now. Left to top. So sad is like this, right? Left to top would be like this. Even some sweat. I mean, like a quarter circle. So it looks scared. Um, a quarter circle. Like that. Something like that. A bit. This looks like shit. This looks so bad. This looks so bad. This looks okay. I need I need emotion. Uh emotion emotion drawing. L let me let me see some emotions. <laughs> I don't know what are what emotions are. Even some sweat. The sweat could be made, but we are using particles if we do that. Okay, so something like that you meant, right? Ah, I see. How is the bullet in uh, Mario? Bullet Mario. Ah, the bullet is like this. Okay. The bullet is is we don't use the we don't need the mouth, I think. We don't necessarily need a mouth. But the bullet is angry, it's the opposite of what we want. Okay. Yeah, cool. It's hard to put into words. No no no, don't worry, it's it's not it's not you. Uh, it's not you, it's me. It's me. I'm doing stupid. I'm being I'm being bad at my job. Um, fuck. I will I will start over. Remove you. I will start with you again. I think the mouth should not be the mouth should be drawn on top. Like We need to do some wiggles, so bloop. And then we need to have the curvature of that, but we can do it later. 
It's it's not a problem. We can cheat by doing that. And by putting it as a child of the curve. Yes. Perfect. And then we can simply take that and turn this into... Ooh, whoop. Okay. Uh, what do you think? I want something like that. Looking nice. Might be a bit big. But we can easily make it more here. Okay. Uh, and so the eye. The eye. When you're scared. When you're scared. The eye could be could be cut, in fact. The eye can be cut. That, that could be a first step into making you into making that scared. That could be a first step. Like making it like this. And then we can draw on top. Definitely no longer happy, good job. Yeah. That might be enough. Right? Without poor bullet. I think the sweat, we are going to add it uh, later as particles. Otherwise, it's not going to be animated. It's going to be weird. So... Tier, tier tool. We could, we could start with something like that. Actually, it looks kind of tired. And we are, and we, and we are able to do like... Or maybe even it, it goes from here like... I think it can go, I think it go, It can be well, can be cool. Okay, let's go with that. Let's go with that, guys. We need to make, we need to make progress. I'm removing you. I'm putting you in here. You are a good boy. You need a bit more space, no, don't you? 136. I don't care about the, the different uh, sizes and stuff, to be honest. And you should not. You should not care too much. 196, let's go. Sometimes I use things that are a bit nicer. But otherwise, it doesn't really matter. Over the top to show speed. Yes, definitely. And this one is called Bullet. Um, the Bullet... The bullet inside of uh, it has it has a bit of a it has a bit of a um, lowering in here. Should I do that too? Let me show you what I mean. The bullet in Mario looks like this. It has some sort of a drop in here. So maybe we do the same. Maybe we copy Mario entirely. It's funny because Nat at the beginning of the stream was a bit afraid that uh, I was I was using um, a playlist that was remixing a bunch of Mario sounds, and uh, so she was a bit afraid that it would be a it would be a problem with the DMCA stuff. And now I'm I'm straight up I'm straight up uh, using the things from Mario. I'm stealing, but I'm stealing like an artist, right? Top and bottom. I, f I think interpolation is the key term here. For what? You mean I, I'm interpolating? Should we make it slightly, slightly weird in shape? Should we make it slightly weird in shape or is that stupid? It looks a bit weird. You know what? Maybe a bit weird is good. You're not stealing. Yeah. Inspiration is the sincerest form of flattery or something. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think I think that's that's what I'm going for. <laughs> uh, maybe this is too again, this is too straight and we need we need it to be a bit more weird. And it looks Mario but very different. Yeah, it looks different. 
it looks different. Um, it definitely looks different. It definitely doesn't look like Mario. It's it's Mario but badly scaled. <laughs> Mario but badly scaled. Perfect. And the thing should be scared of that. Pew! Take damage. Pew! And this does whoop. Whoops. This does a flip like that. Mario. <laughs> it's -a me, Mario. Wee. <laughs> okay. Uh, incredible, we need a droplet, so let's put it in here, and let's turn that into this. Boop. Boop biddy boop. 340. I'm going to do... I'm going to go with 64 by uh, 96, and I'm going to scale that a bit to be in the center, please. And I'm going to call that droplet. Droplet. Such a long stream today. It is, right? It is. It's like a game jam. It's fun. It's me. <laughs> it's me, Mario. It's Mario. <laughs> it's Mario, but scaled the opposite way. That is such a fun meme. That's it. That is such a fun meme. It is incredible. How do you how do you translate that into an image, though? People don't know that you are that you are scaling Mario in the wrong, like it's flipped. Oh, so maybe you put two of them. You put you put another one like that, and you put it's me Mario, and then it then you put it flipped. This is super fun, though. What you what you just did, it's super fun. Um, okay, so one cool thing that we could do is that we could export all of them at once. Mario's Australian cousin. I think Australian cousin would be more like this. <laughs> Mario from Australia. <laughs> I have to leave. Looking forward to see the progress later. Have a great stream there at GM. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so it's... It's Mario. O-E-R-M. Like, like that. Uh, artistics tool I wanted. Oops. This is, this is, like, this is Mario. This is Mario, Mario. And finally, Mario. <laughs> it's, it's stupid. Anyway, <laughs> let's stop. What are you creating? Uh, cool things, cool things. Look at that, cool things. Let's export the enemy chaser first. That way we have uh, that, okay? So... I'm going to go inside document. Give me a second. I'm making a game where you move using your sword, basically. You you use your sword for everything. And the game is called... I actually need to find what it's called because I need to go there. Uh, but I've called it slash stuff in here. Slash bounce. Okay. So scene. I need to go in enemies. And in enemies, I need to create a visuals folder so I'm not showing you simply because I don't want to dox myself with stuff so enemy chaser it's it's the wrong scene it's the wrong scene it's just that I don't want to dox myself so you're you're enjoying my presence for a moment enjoy my presence uh, the bullets are going to be in their own scene, I guess. Wonder when Nintendo shows up. Copyright infringements. That's what we're doing. We're doing copyright infringements. Hiding info from Nintendo. Exactly. I don't want Nintendo to see what I'm doing. Nintendo, if you're seeing this stream, uh, well, first, hello. Um, second, uh, hello again. I don't know. Uh, please make the Switch 2 not underpowered. That would be great. Because the Switch one was really underpowered, um, it was a, it was at release, and it's even more now. So I don't think it's a good thing. 
You're listening through the switch dev kit. Ah, that might be, that might be it, you're right. I need to be careful about that. I definitely need to be careful about that. But the dev kit has no battery at the moment, so I think I'm fine. But maybe they have a special system with a different battery. It takes, it takes at least a second or two to show me the new folder I've created. This is incredible. Um, I'm sorry, guys. This is not super interesting, but I, I'm, I'm just exporting the things at the moment. I'm just exporting the things. Uh, this is the player script, which is good though, because pff, why not? I'm exporting the sword trail as a sword trail. Uh, and we need the circle. Okay, circle and droplets and stuff. I can export them in batch. I can show you how I export in batch. Uh, if Nintendo sees it, you're just creating cool stuff. Exactly, that you know of. Uh, so what we can do is we can select line, circle, that no, that no, that no. We can export those slices. And we can export them into slash bounces, shared, visuals, right? Prototype texture, we don't need to. And let's go into the engine. Let's go into the engine and enjoy. Let's enjoy the moment. Just to, just to remind you guys, this is what the game looks like so far. This is what the game looks like. Boom, we bounce ourselves on stuff. Those are the enemies. We deal damage, we kill them. We can dash in one direction too if we want. Um, and we need to move through the level by bouncing off of the walls like that. It's not it's not super easy. And and then you kill the enemy like that. It's not it's, it's not incredible. <laughs> the the gameplay so far is not incredible. But this is this is how it looks like. And so now we can load in the player, which is a good good old good old engine. Uh excuse me, good old engine, you looks you look incredibly big. The sword <laughs> The sword. Sword. The sword. <laughs> the sword is scaled like crazy. Uh, this is awful. This is awful. Let's scale it down. Let's make it big. But not too big at the beginning. Because it's, it's going to get big when we uh, move it. Okay. Let's, rem let's change the, the point. The offset point to... 105 let's remove position around here probably i think the problem is that yes the problem is that okay um let's remove all of the resets okay let's let's do it again let's do it again i, I i've been stupid here I don't want it to be too big at the beginning. It's going to get comically large after. So probably somewhere around here. Maybe even smaller than that. Maybe it needs to be smaller by default because it is. It, it looks like it's going to be stupidly, stupidly small and you're going to be like, what? It's not good. Well, I like how you use the good logo as a placeholder, but instead of just using the plain logo as it, you just tweaked it a little bit. Love it. Well, this is the this is the the sprite, like this is the actual Godot engine logo, yeah. But we might modify it a bit. I don't know. We'll see. What do you think of the prime gen? Uh, the the guy is cool. He's doing cool stuff. So I guess there's that. I need to remove. I need to create. I need to create, I need to create, I need to create. Um, the offset is probably not going to change. And so now our swing. Uh, let's use reset again. And our swing looks like that. Okay. Uh, let's remove the position also. What? Okay, let's remove the scale. Let's remove the position. Reset. No! What the fuck? Okay, let's do that. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm a bit confused. Reset is here. And this is here. Okay, so right now we have the position only. 
This is this is bad. So what we want is as we are drawing it, it it goes, it's normal. As we are doing that, it's normal, okay? So uh scale and position also, we never know. Then we make so until here. Here it's it needs to be as big as it's as it can get. But not scale like that. It needs to be like that. Let me think. And then from here, it's dropping through to what it was. We need to make those things easing in and out. It's not incredible, though. It's not incredible. It's not incredible. It looked better in my in my in my head. It looked better in my head. The the initial thingy is not powerful. I mean, offset it. The pivot point is outside of the sprite. Shouldn't be the offset be outside of the source sprite. It looks like it's swinging and not rotating. Um. Um, it would be swinging from here. It would be swinging from here if if you were holding it. But what I should do is probably I should move it a bit. I should also play around with the with the position a bit. I should play around with the position a bit to make it like actually move a bit, not just rotate, right? Now that it's called a sword, yeah. But I want I want something simple, so just give me a second. I will I will do something. I will call that uh the trail. And I will put the trail in here. We'll see if it's good enough because the thing is we need we have so many things to do. Um we have so many things to do, guys. So many things to do. Okay, we want that to be behind the parent. So unfortunately we can't spend like we could spend an entire Oh my god, you can <laughs> you can do a square. We could spend the entire stream just doing that. Just doing it a uh, just doing um just doing that, right? Spend an entire stream just working on one animation. So so yeah. Um my trail is not placed correctly. It needs to be we can uh, flip H Place it around here. Ah! Place it around here. We need the trail. Let me think. The trail. It could be animated better, but I think what we what we could just do is self-modulate it, maybe. And so at the beginning, you don't see it. As soon as you're starting to swing, so from from here, let's let's have more uh, things like that. From here, it will start to to do it, boom, 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 and here it will need to stop. Okay. Um, so let me think. We do that. We put that to full white. So, okay, incredibly bad. Whoop. So maybe here we start like as soon as it's fast enough. No, bad, 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 bad. Uh, we could make it scale to make it more to make it more interesting, and then it's going to from here. It's going to reduce. I think we need to scale it, also. Otherwise, it's not good enough. But maybe it's so slow that we don't see it. Okay, right now it's so slow we don't see it, so it doesn't really matter. Make another point in the middle before the swing to add that effect. I just want to... Hey, what am I doing? I just want a trail to have, like... Honestly, not too bad. We could, we could maybe make it even, like, stay longer. You know what? Not too bad. And then we're going to add more stuff. 
Um, I think our problem is... By default, the scale might need to be smaller. Even smaller than that. Can you believe it? Um, zero point. Copy the value. Go in here and do the same for the scale. Paste the value. Swing. And so when you're making it big, it's actually big. Otherwise, it's not big enough. Bzzzp. The problem is if our visuals are incredibly more big, bigger, I don't know. I'm not happy. I'm not happy about the sword, but it's okay. It's okay. We need to move on. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, guys. We need to move on. We need to do other things. So we need to. It looks, it looks not incredible. <laughs> it looks not incredible. It's better than nothing, but it looks really, really not like I want. But it looks less it lo it looks less horrible yeah uh, already. So let's do let's continue a bit. Um, let's continue a bit. The enemy chaser is going to use the sprites. So quick load. Uh, enemy, we have Chaser right there. Perfect. Uh, we don't need those eyebrows anymore. We can hide them. We can make that slightly smaller. Something like that. So that it fits with the collision. Okay, this is the enemy Chaser. Let's see how it looks. Of course, it's not animated. The trail is visible at the beginning, though. Yeah, yeah, it is. I need to remove it. Um, the trail is visible at the beginning. Visibility, modulate, full white. What time is it? It's nine. Oh my god. Okay. Um, we are going to make a few things that should make them slightly better. We are going to use some GPU particles, of course, uh, move particles. We are going to animate them uh, using an animation player because it's going to be easier. Um, we are going to animate the player too. Don't worry. We are going to animate the player too because right now it's too static. And we are going to... Can you send me... A PNG of the Red Godot enemy. Uh, this one? Is it big enough? This guy, yes. Okay. Uh, why do I have... Okay, give me a second. Why do I have... This is because I have particles. Emote sized. Can you can you resize it yourself? <laughs> I just send you this size and you and you resize it yourself. Where where can I send it? Oh, of course I can send it here. Let me know if this is okay. Let me know if this is okay like that. What is path lib? Uh, I don't know. What is what is it? <laughs> you tell me. I don't know what you're talking about. I was just giving you a hint for what... Oh, yeah, yeah, I understand, I understand. No, but that's great, that's great, that's great. That's a great idea. I didn't even think about it. We can even we can even make it, like, shake like the other uh, Godot Angry that I have. That would make so much sense. Um, 
Okay, okay, guys. Uh, let me let me think. We have an enemy chaser. We need to do the animations and stuff. What I want right now is particles. I want GPU particles. Um, let me know if I am back. I can see myself being live again, I think. I am back. I think, yeah, my internet just died. My internet just died. Just like that. I thought I thought it would die more often to be honest. So honestly, after seven hours of stream, it's it's a good it's a good one. For once, it's good. <sighs> Holy shit. Maybe maybe it's a hint from like the universe telling me to stop. Just when I stopped lurking, the stream died. Maybe that's that's your fault. I don't want to I don't want to say anything, but maybe that's your fault. Uh okay, so we are going to position velocity we are going to emit to the right okay and we are going to put some velocity to the right i want my particles to do something like that okay i want them to be quite punchy so i want them to do like boop 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 i want a bunch of them like 31 um i want some damping i want some damping i need my damping to go probably above yeah, okay, so from 150 to that. Perfect. I want to scale, so I'm going to scale them like this. I'm going to make them big very fast and then uh, become smaller over time. Uh, this would be nice for movement, for example. This would be nice for movement. Uh, let's keep that as a reference for movement. So let's, du let's duplicate it. Let's use Make Unique Recursive for all of them, and that would be nice. Two times and it's golden. No, please. I say it was your girlfriend playing with the cables. Uh, my girlfriend is not here, so that's that's good. Someone accidentally used CPU particles. Ah, maybe. Probably Arimus. Arimus is live, no? Arimus is live. Arimus probably uh, probably used CPU particles and it and it killed everything. Um. So my display is still not great because I want them to. Uh, appear more fast faster i want time to be less long and i want most importantly explosiveness to be more like that so it needs to look like what what on earth explosiveness what is good is good broken is good broken Oh, I'm no, I'm seeing the other particles. I'm stupid. Don't, don't, don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Okay, so let's go back to that. Uh, randomness, a bit of randomness, explosiveness. Okay, now we're talking. Okay, it needs to be like a splash, right? It needs to be like a splash. I think it drops down too fast, maybe, so it needs to hold on that a bit longer. Poop, 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 poop. A bit more. Uh, they are too, too, too similar. Um, so we need a bit of, li of lifetime randomness that could help. And we can play around with the spawn velocity to have more difference between them. Uh, but not that much, in fact. Not that much. I don't want them to go super far. Yeah? Can we get an I'm stupid counter? No! Always blaming the poor engine. It's always Godot's fault. Maybe Nintendo's in copyright enforcement. <laughs> Um, so that would be, that would be for hit, that would be for hit, but that would be for collision with the walls, I think. Just collisions with the walls. And a hit, we need another thing, we need another, we need more like a circle going outward, I think. Like, uh, not a circle, but a, a ring going outward where we, where we do a hit. You got a second spot, nice. A second spot? Yes, second spot. Second spot, hit those particles. Um, and this could be this could be movement dust particles, right? 
it could be movement like if you want to if you want to have movement from your from your your thingy maybe again we need particle randomness that is for sure and we need way less lifetime i think it's going to look too similar though it's probably it's possible that it's going to look too similar but we could put the movement dust particles right there But maybe, maybe because we are moving, we would we don't need to make them um, have velocity. It could be like that, and it would work. And then the hit dust particles, we would uh, rename them first of all, then turn them into a scene, save branch as a scene. Scene. Um, I'm going to put it in shared because we might need that for others. So uh, let's create effects. And I'm going to call um, hit dust particles. All right, let's go into that scene. I'm going to attach my scripty script, which is handling uh, the self freeing particles. So we need to turn those into uh, emitting no auto duration. Yes, time one shot, one opportunity. Don't let it slip. Uh, that is good. That it, that is really really good. And so hit those particles. I can put that inside of my player. I don't know if I want to have that in here. Maybe I will use a special node to do it for me. Export var. Um, export var. Uh, hit dust particles. It's a packed scene. All right, it's a packed scene. Hit dust particles, and I can do uh, funk spawn particles. I can pass a position vector two. I can pass an angle float, and I can pass maybe at the beginning. I need to pass the actual uh, scene, which is a packed scene, right? And so I do um, var instance, in this case, I know it's GPU particles. I do scene.instantiate. I do get tree. I do get tree. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be on top of me. It doesn't work. Uh, get current scene, add child instance. Then I can do instance call deferred or set deferred uh, global position. I want to set the position and then I want to do instance dot rotation is equal to angle. And I think that's it. Basically, basically, that's it. And so spawn particle. So whenever I'm hitting a wall in here, somewhere here, velocity collision. OK. I can do I can do that. I can do spawn particles. I want to uh, do the dust thingy, hit dust particles. What is the position? It's the position of collision. So collision dot get position. It will be in global space, so that should be our right. And then we can do collision dot get normal. So this is going to show us where is the normal. And we can get the angle from that. Why on tree? Uh, because where do you want me to put it? On the player, I could put it on the player to be honest, because those, uh, because those particles are, um, because those particles are, um, how do we call it? Uh, they are global. They are working on global space, right? So we could we could put it, we could put it um, on there. You are definitely right. I think I want to self-modulate that way. We could we don't need to put it on the tree. We could put it on the player. Okay, so okay. Um what do we learn? What do we learn today, guys? We have too many particles looking exactly the same. I I have a stupid idea. I have a stupid idea that doesn't make any sense, and so I feel like I might need to try it.
it, it is it is stupid and, and it looks bad <laughs> but it could have been cool <laughs> it could have been cool i wanted to spawn some some godot engine be, uh, behind me it would need to look like a child or something maybe okay so when we hit something yeah okay not too bad we have those we have the the particles um we have the particles what is the problem i feel like yeah i don't know if i like them i'm 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 not entirely sure with alpha 0.5 it looks fine darker lower alpha well particles could be darker like dirty dust okay guys okay guys you d you guys asked for it uh let let's remove the one shot Let's put emitting to true, that way I can see what is up. You guys asked for it, visible... Uh, dustier. Uh, maybe we need more colors also, that's why it looks a bit weird. So for that, particle material, display, color curve, color ramp. And in here, we could modulate the color by having something between uh, that and that. Um... If we want, if we want random colors, we could also have random colors, but I don't know. We could have random colors also using hue variations, um, but that might be enough to make it a bit less prominent. Um, you know what? Instead, instead of that, Godot could be dropping some nodes. Godot could be dropping some nodes. I have an idea that will take time, which is a bit stupid, so... Do you think I should do it? Like, Godot could be dropping some nodes below it, behind it. The problem is that I don't have access to the, the images really easily. Um, or, 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 I can... Fucking hell, it's so it's so light and it's so stupid. Why am I doing that? Okay, give me a second. I might have an idea. I'm not saying that it's a good idea, but it is an idea. Okay. Aramus shared his uh link to the Godot thingy. Do we have access to the images? Do I have access to the image? I'm not seeing that as an image. The dash could be cool if it leaves a good old sprite where you start. You draw a trail, but you're where you stop dashing. Um, I'm not entirely sure. So it's not seen as an image, unfortunately. <sighs> I don't have the time to get so this is something that i don't like with godot you don't have an easy access to the um to the icons that are built in i don't think you have an easy access to those icons um i would love to be able to use them like they are inside of the engine as svgs let me use them unless i'm wrong and i can use them um Okay, I have some Godot icons right there. I have some Godot icons right there. That would be on, in the GitHub. I know, I know, but it should be inside of the engine. So I'm not sure what you mean by uh, the Godot, a Godot sprite where you start, then you draw a trail up until where you stop dashing. Oh, for the dash. Okay, sorry. Yeah, 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 for the dash. Yeah, it, it could look cool. It could look cool. Uh, definitely. I can show you. I can show you a cool trick. I don't know if you know about that. Um, I can show you how to how to spawn random textures on a particle. Do you know how to do that? You might know already, right? Maybe I'm not going to 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 teach you anything. Um, I'm not going to teach you anything. So those are PNGs already. Um, why is it so washed out? Why is it so washed out? 
are the are are they like that the godot engine icons by default are they incredibly washed out what the fuck is it doing it's creating a bunch of copy on my on my thingy i don't understand what's happening path 2d i just don't want pngs area and use area also i guess it's creating a bunch of copies what the fuck uh what's the name of this program affinity designer yeah so my thingies are uh 16 by 16 by default so in terms of width i want to go with 96 uh one two three four five multiplied by five 96 multiplied by five 96 multiplied by five okay thank you uh, i'm not going to do that i need to do this make that a bit bigger put this outside for now Put this outside, put this outside. Okay, so 96, my guy. You need to be 96. Uh, and of course, in terms of the height, it's going to be 96. So, first of all, first step, you need to uh, have a sprite sheet, okay? You need to draw a sprite sheet with the different textures that you want to spawn. Um, I would love Godot to have... You know how now with the you know how now with the um, audio node you are able to to use random sh uh, random audio audio things. I think is that is that right? I think it's now built in. What the fuck? Can you can you align yourself to the other one and tell me that you're aligned? Okay, but this one is not aligned correctly. Okay, can you align yourself too? I think you are aligned. Um, so you know, you know how you can do that in Godot, in, in Godot, right? You can, uh, use a, a, an audio player and you can put a bunch of random, a bunch of random sounds and it's going to pick sounds for you. Very useful. Why are we not able to do the same thing for textures? I want, please, a texture which, which is like random texture. You provide multiple textures and it's deciding for you which one you use. That way you don't have to do what I'm doing at the moment. So icon sprite sheets. Now that I have that, I can export this. Okay, I can export this to my game scene. I can go into uh, shared uh, visuals. I'm going to say icon sprite sheet. Uh, there's an add-on called editor icon previewers for Go to 4 that shows you the built-in icons. Okay, it shows them to me. Uh, can I use them? Is there a way to use them? I want my sprites to be on top of everything, so visibility, ordering. I want this sprite to be a bit a bit higher in terms of ordering, right? So let's do four. I don't care. Okay, cool. That would be nice. That would be nice to use it. So now look at what I can do. Um, let's put some velocity so I can see my particles. Let's put some velocity so I can see my particles. And so now, instead of using this, instead of using Godot Texture, I can use my Sprite Sheet, okay? So now what you see is that I spawn a bunch of... I spawn the whole Sprite Sheet, so this is not what I want. I go into Material, I go into Material on the, on the particles themselves, and I do Canvas Item Material. On Canvas Item Material, uh, I, I check Particles Animation. It seems a bit random, and it is but it's the way it is. Then I tell it how many frames I have in my sprite sheet. Uh, so in my sprite sheet, sprite sheet, I have one, two, three, five. One, two, three, four, five, sorry. I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and now you see only one. You see only the first one. Um, that is really good, okay? You can make it an animation, but I don't want to. So now you can go back to your process, particle process material. You go into animation. And then, what can you do? You can animate them. Oh, sorry, my head. Okay, I can move myself. I can move myself in here if you want. <laughs> um, so now what you can do is... Um, so I, I'm just showing you back. Canvas item, you create 
a canvas item material. Okay, canvas item material. And then you go under, you check particle animation, you set the number of frames that you have. And then you can go back to animation on your particle process material. Here, you can tell Godot to animate it. Let's say you are doing an explosion. You might have dust particles that are like growing in size and then and then growing uh, and then becoming smaller or whatever. OK, um, in my case, this is not what I want. I don't want to animate because if I animate, if I animate, this is what it's going to do. As you can see, it's going through the different particles, which honestly looks really cool. But this is not what I want. What I want is to tell it to change the offset inside of the sprite sheet so I can tell it the minimum of set is zero, the maximum of set is one, and then boom, it's selecting random things. That is it. Very useful, right? So with that, you can select random textures, but you can also animate your textures. So for example, you can imagine going into Blender, you can create an, in an interesting animated texture um, using physics, using an explosion, using um, water simulation, whatever. You create your different frames, you can even create like a hundred gazillion frames, you do whatever. Then you put it in here and you animate. That's how you can create incredible explosions without having to do those explosions, right? You can pre-compute them and turn them into, uh, into textures. That's pretty neat. That's pretty cool. And I feel like it's not known enough, like not enough people are aware of that. So let's see how it looks in game because now my, I think my size might be too small. So let's go with 0. Point... Okay, it's, it, it might be a bit big. From 0. 0.1 to 0. 0.2 was maybe was enough. Let's see in game how it looks. Okay, we are now we are now dropping uh Godot particles, which is stupid, but I like it. Um we need to hold the size a bit more, I think. All right, we can have maybe a bit more scaling. Um, we can definitely play around with the angle. Okay. And maybe we can even have some um, angular velocity. So be careful about angular velocity. I'm going to hide the sprite just for now. Be careful about angular velocity because in my... In my... Yeah, it goes pretty fast as you can see. No, it's not angular velocity I'm thinking about. Uh, it's orbit velocity. Orbit velocity, it's crazy how fast it goes. So be careful about that. Um, and then one thing that we can do is the spawn position. Instead of being a point, we can maybe use a box, for example. Um, that way we don't spawn things from the exact same point, but to a bigger a bigger uh, area on the on the player. That might look better. Right? Uh, maybe I can put myself back to around here. All right, look at that. Would you look at that? It's spawning good old things. That is, that is, that's kind of cool. It's a nice little touch. Uh, our dust particles are okay-ish. I feel like they are... You know what? Maybe the dust particles, they are too big. We have too many of them, maybe. We can reduce the amount. And maybe they are too big. They're too they, they are too much in our face. So they can be a bit smaller. From like 0... 16, yeah. And they can have... Either we make them have a bit, uh, smaller lifetime. Either we make... Ha we make them have a smaller lifetime, and I never remember where's the lifetime now. Yeah. Uh, 0 0.4. Yeah, okay, why not? How fast? 0 0.3 on dust? It depends on the style you want to go with, to be honest. To go for. Um, alpha can look weird. Alpha can look weird, to be honest. I'm personally not a huge fan. 
Uh, I think they are too... They, they might be a bit too dark now. Okay, cool. Um, okay, we need, we need some stuff happening on the enemies. Um, so enemies, they need some particles. They need some particles, um, like blood particles, when they get hit and when they explode. Here's how the gameplay will be if you add gravity. I think it could work, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, particle process material. Let's use uh, let's use our trusty circle again. Oh my god, it's big. Let's use thirty one. So we could do we could do two two different particles for uh, we could do two different particles. Um, it takes so much time to do everything. This is crazy. We can have a bit of gravity, why not? Uh, this play, I definitely need to scale that down. Okay, we, we might even need to scale it lower, way smaller than that, because we want to have just a lot of them. So, what we can do is spawn them um, towards the right. Again, we are going to put the velocity towards the right, like that. We are going to put the velocity towards the right like that. Okay, perfect. Uh, maybe a bit less spread. Angle, we don't care. Display over time, we are definitely going to do the same thing as we did before. Make it spawn in and spawn out like that. Perfect. They don't live enough. They don't live long enough. And so gravity, gravity has no use. So I don't know if I keep it like that or not. We'll see. Uh, I want some explosiveness. I want to be a burst of things, um, and I want, I want the velocity to be way different between them. I want to really have like, yeah, something like that. And we can reduce. Uh, no, no, not that. We can reduce the lifetime randomness in here, which is going to help to have like. Really, some of them go really fast. Some of them don't go f don't go far. This is great. Love the angry good old sprite. <laughs> uh, but we are not keeping that. We are not keeping that. We made another. We made another one. I do agree. It looks cool, but we made another one. Uh, curve texture. I'm going to color ramp it like this. I'm going to color ramp to be whitish and then drop to a much darker color. And that's it. And then what I need to, what I love to do is instead of doing, I, I keep it like that. And then what we can do is we can reuse those depending on if we want blood or if we want something that is not blood. We can simply uh, self-modulate, and we can use red if we want to, if we want, if we want to have blood. But we go, we can go with something more like not blood if we want to, if we want to be more. Uh, I don't know. If you want to be, if you want to be different, okay, not too bad, not too bad for a, for a, a splash. We have to remind us that we are going to see it from afar, so I don't know if it's easy to see right there. We need to wait and see. Makes me want to invest into building something of my own in my free time instead of college. Yeah, you should definitely do that. He will be mad of not being used exactly, but he will be used in in other ways. Don't worry. Um. We could have something to, we could have something to create. We could have a a spawner that reacts to that. The hit effect, the hit effect could also do that, right? The hit effect could also do that. Onto damage, but we don't know from where it's taking damage. We don't know what is de de dealing us damage. But I need to do those blood particles like that. Okay. Um, let's do explode. Explode particles too. I don't know when I will stream. I will stop. I will never stop. I feel like I will never stop. Let's make all of that unique. Recursive. Make unique recursive in God of 4 is incredibly cool. It's incredibly cool. 
Um, okay, so now what I want, instead of the instead of the spawning going to the right, I want my velocity to be spread completely out like that. Exactly, perfect. I can keep it. I can keep it pretty much the same. But instead of being so small, the blood particles could be bigger. They could start from that and be as big as that. That way it's going to hide everything. You see the idea? It's an easy way to hide that we're uh, hiding the sprite behind it. So I think it works. I think it works. So let's turn that into save branch as a scene, explode particles. I'm going to put it in shared, I think, uh, because we need to make it, we need to make our life easier. I'm going to definitely uh, use that for the player also when you're dying. Probably shader, no, script, self-freeing particles. Um, you know what I could do? I could make sure that I'm one shot is equal to true. I could, I could force the, the things to be one shot. And I could do C, one shot uh, is equal to true. And now that we are in go to four, I can also say that the children, I can cast it as a no. Are you using any Godo skins uh, for the visuals? I think I'm using the, the one from um, Passive Star. I think I'm using the one from Passive Star. Uh, time, one shot, one opportunity, don't let it slip. Okay, globals, we can remove that enemy. And so the enemy is going to spawn that, right? I think I do have a spawner node. I do have a spawner node, effect spawner. To spawn, I think it can help me to spawn stuff. Explode particles. Uh, and I just need to call spawn. Spawn as a child or spawn. I will call it spawn, right? And the position will be our position. Uh, okay, so enemy, by default, you're going to have a, a reference to that, effect spawner, I'm going to call it, um, I'm going to call it explode particles spawner, though, let's make that in here, found it, exactly, this is the one, and so when we die, to do, do something, well, we can spawn, what? It's not called Spawn? How is it called? Spawn! I should give it a class name. Class name, effect. Class name, effect. Spawner. That way you're a cool guy. Um, and so we can cast that as an effect spawner, which is incredibly cool. And I can do Spawn, and I can pass a position, so I will pass my global position to override stuff, and then I queue free myself. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, we are here. Damage, damage, and it explodes. Okay, it's a bit big. It's a bit big. It might be a bit too much. It might be a bit too much. But it's... But it's so far... Uh, it's okay. I would say it's okay. It's not incredible, but it's okay. Accent... <laughs> I'm always confused of where things are in here. Uh, maximum scale should probably be like 0.22. Um, okay, and so now... What Godot theme are you using? The one that is linked above. Godot minimal theme. I think you can see it, right? Can you see it? Um, on the... On the chat. In the chat. Can you see it in the chat? So the hitbox is... Um, the hurt box is no the hitbox is telling us that we took damage but it's not telling us who is de dealing the damage isn't that stupid take damage because we don't know who's calling can you get who is calling the function in Godot Godot get who's calling a function can you do that I, I mean I could pass myself how to get the node that called a function um, you can't get the caller of a function. There's no point doing that. If you really need, just pass it as an argument. Okay. Call is from 
cold is coming from inside the house. Yeah, so we don't know where it's coming from, right? So I could just pass myself. I could just pass myself. So take damage from... Um, and we can make it null by default. And so if we have from... Can we emit signals? I mean, I can emit took damage uh, from... Take damage, took damage from. And so now, eventually... Um, this hitbox... This hitbox took damage. What are we doing in the enemy chaser with it? We are not doing anything, right? That is great. So in here, when we took damage, we can look if from or we can do if not from we return early return otherwise we can um have another another scene which would be um blood particle spawner the <clears throat> the scene i need to put that into a, its own scene then so save branch as a scene explode particles i'm going to call that blood particles it's always a bit frustrating to do all of that. I would I would I would love to have a better way of doing things like this, but I don't know. I need a shader. No, I need script self-freeing particles. Yes. You could also make a damage class with a dealer, receiver, and amount could be expended to damage types. Yes, that's true, that's true, that's true. You might be right. You might be right. You might be right, but yeah, blood particles. Blood particles, okay? We have those blood particles now, so the enemy, we can remove it from them. We can put the blood particles in here. Quick load, blood particles, incredible. And so now what we can do, look at that, look at that, it's crazy. Whenever we are uh, getting damage, we can do spawn. The position is going to be our global position and the angle is going to be angle. So we define that angle, it's a float, and what is it, this, this angle? It's our global position, angle 2, no, it's the other one, so it's, it's from global position, angle 2, global position. I hope, I hope we still have that in Godot 4, right, angle? Am I, am I, am I right? Am I right, fellas? So, we push ourselves. Come. Boom. Boom. It didn't work. Why is that? Uh, took damage to callable, expected one. But, okay, 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 okay. I forgot. Uh, where is it? Took damage. Emit. Took damage. Emit from. Hitbox 24. On took damage, method is basically one argument, but called with two. Two callable, hit effect. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hit effect. On took damage, damage, and from. And from. Okay, cool. So hit effect could be, could be that. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. It didn't, it didn't work. It simply didn't work. It simply didn't work. Uh, because we didn't pass, because we didn't pass, that's that's it, that's why, that's why, that's simply why. Because the hitbox, uh, because the hurt box is not passing um, who's dealing the damage. So, take damage. Um, and we can pass self, why not? We can pass self, we can pass the, the hurt box. Tell me that it works now, let's go! And we kill it. Okay, not too bad. Of course, they need to react a bit more. Maybe they need to have... Our dash looks kind of stupid. It's really easy to die, though, in this freaking game.
The problem with that idea is that it's stupidly hard. Uh, because you will push yourself into into the player and then you will kill yourself. How much is still missing from this to be fully fledged prototype in your opinion? Like, how do you define that term? Well, to be honest, uh, Godot Engine, uh, <laughs> I'm calling you Godot Engine. Uh, the problem is I've been doing juice that of course is important to get a feeling for how the game plays. But honestly, it, it's missing some features, I think. To, to assess the idea of the prototype. And so I should have worked on that, I guess. For example, I should have worked on um, trying another type of enemy. Uh, maybe a shooter enemy to see how it works when you have something that shoots at you. How it's like making you move and, 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 and force you to play, uh, to play around that. Um, having the charge attack. That way you can, you can decide how much you want to deal damage first how 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 much damage you want to deal but also how much you want to push yourself from the walls and i didn't do that right um because I, i've started doing juice stuff for for it to be interesting in in during this live stream and also because i like it I was gone for a while with juicing now exactly uh, if the tip is uh, if the sword is on the left side you should flip it vertically it's true uh, tomorrow it's true uh i will do that at some point um, you should have knocked back to the attack, giving you some space for the mob after attacks. Um, yeah, you see Gudo engine underscore official. Yeah, you're right, but I have knocked back in the sense that I have knocked back on myself. So do I also need knock back on the enemy itself? Maybe for uh, maybe that will that would feel a bit better. Um, I'm, I'm, it, it drives me, it drives me crazy to see this, uh, to see this player not doing anything, so we still need to juice a bit. If you're against the wall, the enemy keeps coming towards you. Ah, you're, you're right, you're right. Knockback would be important then. Okay, you're, you're right. You're definitely, you're definitely right. Um, you're definitely right, but before that, I just need to do something. Uh, I just need to do some, some idle animation. A slight knockback, it also... Uh, adds for abilities to increase it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, guys. You guys, you guys are always right. I don't know. I don't know. You know, you guys are always right. Um, that's the problem. So. We want to get crazy, right? With the... <laughs> it might be a bit too much. Let me know if it's too much, okay? Uh, let me know if it's too much. If it's, if you think it's too much, you, you let me know. I, I'm totally aware that some of you might find that a bit disturbing. <laughs> okay, it is incredibly... <laughs> it is incredibly shit. Okay, 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 okay. Let's... First of all, let's... Let's uh, make it as if we were um, under the influence... <laughs> yes under the influence of some things okay okay let's go a bit less crazy a slightly less crazy <laughs> it looks stupid was it for moving animation or bouncing um it's for idle so it's for like I don't want I don't want the character to be doing nothing. It needs to be doing something, but maybe it's too much. It is too much. It looks stupid. Uh, for bouncing, we need we need the bounce to be reacting to exactly what is happening. So that's kind of a kind of a bummer. It's gonna be a problem. Uh, we need a hit indicator. We need a hit indicator for when we are hitting something. We need some kind of particles to show us that we are hitting something. Another emote idea, squishy. Yeah, maybe some sort of blinking for idle eye blinking. Yeah, but I didn't separate the thing right now. Expanding fading circle. Easy. Yeah, definitely, but I, I would need to uh, separate Okay, you know what? I just need to not make it that crazy. 
and it can work honestly it can it can be good enough if it's not crazy um for uh take damage so what is the problem in here take damage uh character body oh the character body is also reacting to to take damage um but not in the in the right way take damage uh we also need the front prototype um let me think when you want to when you want to react to a bounce when you want to react to a bounce you want to scale you want to scale um we want to scale should we do that should we do that we can do it really quickly if you want i mean it's not necessarily going to be quick but uh we can do bounce effect we pass the angle at which we are bouncing i guess and then we can do if tween we are going to do it with a tween because it needs to be dynamic so we need a tween for that so var tween bounce tween uh, that can be interesting to do it um i'm gonna use transcubic for now it doesn't matter i'm gonna tween bounce uh, what are those nodes behind the char? The character. Oh, uh, those are good nodes. Those are, those are, um, don't you see? It's not, it's not visible enough when you play, I guess. But those are like, um, icons from the, the editor. Icons that I had laying around. What a music though. The music is pretty cool. It's from a creator playlist. That effect needs to be more visible because it's cool. Okay, 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 okay. So then, movement dust particle. Uh, we can simply uh, make the lifetime slightly longer. And we can make the curve a bit crazier. And we can make them um, a bit bigger. No problem here. No problem here. We're just going to take a bit more time to spawn. Otherwise, it's going to be weird. Uh, this game needs more green. This game needs more green. Missing some green UI icon, though. The problem is that I don't have access to the UI very easily. And it's only the UI that I had laying around. And grabbing the UI, like going onto the Godot engine um, GitHub, grabbing the UI in SVG. And then importing them and creating my sprite sheet with them, it's it's slightly frustrating. But I do agree it would be cool. Okay, so the bounce. How am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? I think my cats are hungry again. Uh, how are we going to do that? I've done it in the past. I'm pretty sure I've done it. I basically... I basically need to define... Uh, what is the music doing? I basically need to define... A vector. Is it working? It is working. I don't want to do twin callback, though. I want to do twin uh, property. We got music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do on on the sprite. Do I have access to the sprite? I do need an access to the sprite. Sprite. I'm spending too much time on juice, guys. Too much time on juice. It is not good. Sprite. I want to scale. And so my idea is I need to define... Basically, my scale is going to be something like that. Um, I can define it outside of the tween. I, I first want to squeeze... I want to squeeze... It needs to be oriented to the right. So at first, I want X to be much smaller. Like 
2 and I want y to be much bigger like 1.4 okay you you squeeze it like that then you want to squeeze out like 1.15 and you want to squeeze in that thing so like 0 0.6 so it's going like zboop and then zboop and then it comes back to normal like vector vector one we can try that the problem is that you need this oh i think i know i think i know okay i think i know um let's do it let's do it i think i know i just need the original scale of the sprite i just need the original scale of the sprite uh which is not even scaled correctly what the f fuck is that thank you um we can do at already var sprite scale it's going to be a vector 2 and it's going to be sprite no sprite dot scale we need that so we take the sprite scale we take the sprite scale, we multiply it by the vector that we want, and we need to rotate it. We need to rotate that, or we can rotate this, it doesn't really matter. We need to rotate this by the angle that we want. Right? And I think this should work. Am I, am I crazy? Or it's going to work? We can make it relatively uh, big, that way we have time to see what's happening. I think it should work, and if not, uh, we do something else. Why not both? Sorry if it's too indiscreet to ask, but where's that accent from? Do I have an accent? I do. I'm from France. Why not both? What do you mean, why not both? What do you mean? Uh, is this 0 0.5? It looks like it's, it's not 0. Yeah, okay. Bounce effect. So as soon as we bounce... As soon as we bounce in here, we bounce effect and we collision blah 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 blue and we pass the angle, okay? Let's see. What was the response to, am I crazy or oh, will this work? <laughs> That's true. Uh, what the actual fuck? Okay, there's a few things. There's a few things that are not correct in here. Uh, let's remove that. And let's see what the fuck is going on. Because I, I don't understand. What? Am I crazy? There's a collision. The fuck is this? Boom, boom. What? Um, okay, okay, um, we are going to do something, uh, if in event is action, uh, pressed, UI accept, we are going to, uh, bounce, and we are going to bounce, um, using, uh, pi, no, not pi, uh, or, or, or pi divided by two. That should be up, right? Oh, I forgot that UI accept is also dashing. Um, okay. It kind of works. But is it doing it... It's not doing it where I'm expecting. It is doing it where I'm expecting, in fact. You see? It's doing it where I'm expecting. Uh, I'm expecting the collision to be coming from the top. So then it's squishing and boom. Squishing and boom. Of course the timing is, is awful, but it, it it's supposed it's supposed to work. Uh what kind of stupid thing is that? 
bounce effect. So now it could be, I'm using the normal and I'm using the angle of the normal, but this angle can be, can be negative. You see what I mean? Um, and so that's why I'm going in negatives. Um, I need to keep that angle. I'm really interested in, in knowing if it's between 0 and 90, basically. I'm only interested in 0 and 90. So I should modulo it, I guess. I don't want I don't want the I don't want the negative as I don't want the negative of the angle. Uh print angle and I'm going to do radians to degrees with that. I don't want the negative of the angle, I think. That's the problem. Uh we can't see anything. Angle minus 90. So that's why. In fact, it is working. In fact, it is working. Oh, the angle is always 90, so it's not going to be that interesting. Interesting. Um, so yeah, we don't want that. We don't want that to be able to be negative. So I guess, first of all, I could get the absolute of that. And that might be enough. Am I crazy? I, I really need to go and feed the cat. And we might have to call it a day uh, pretty soon, right? I don't know. It seems to be... It's it's starting to be a quite long stream. Not that it's bothering me, but... Okay. Oh, it is doing weird stuff. <laughs> and I think I'm somewhat back. No. I'm back, but with very, very low speed this time. Like, incredibly low speed. I'm back, but I'm dropping frames as, like, crazy. I'm only at, at 2,000 uh, kilobits per second. Oh, no. Somewhat back sounds right. This is so bad. Come on. I pay for that freaking internet It's driving me crazy It's really driving me crazy that freaking internet it's so bad uh, Okay, uh, so I'm connected to the I'm connected through my phone. It, it will probably not be stable, right? I think we're back Same with the broadcast says ended um, the connection through the phone will definitely be uh, not good enough, so I think we have to stop. I think we have to stop there, unfortunately, because I can't, I can't like stream from the phone, and uh, and the, the connection seems to be very, very unstable. So I think we have to call it a day. Um, honestly, honestly, the prototype looks cool enough. Uh, yeah, one minute. Yeah, yeah, for for sure, for sure. Don't worry. Uh, I'm just, I'm just pr pr like announcing. That we are going to have to end. Yeah, I'm dropping a lot of frames. It's pretty bad. Um, it has been a pleasure, though. I don't. I. It's. It's sad that we have to end on a on a bad note like that. Uh, I would have loved to to be able to just finish the stream like uh, with 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 good forms. But anyway. It has been really great. It was super cool. Thank you so much, Nat, for organizing this. Thank you, everyone, for being here. It was really, really cool. Uh, I might I might put the prototype as well. I might put, put the prototype on itch somewhere. So if you want to follow me, uh, don't hesitate. Mr. Elliptic everywhere. I might put the prototype somewhere. That way you can, you can test it. And uh, we never know. We might work on it again in the future, right? Uh, maybe on another Godot takeover stream or whatever. Uh, who do I want to raid? I have no idea. Who's live? Aramis is live? No? K 
Canny Dev is live. Is that okay? Uh, Canny Dev. Canny Dev. I feel like I know Canny Dev, but I'm not sure. My internet is quite slow because I'm streaming at the same time. <laughs> uh, just didn't help as well. Uh, yeah, this side, uh, Justin, Justin is, is, is cool, I think. How old were you? Oh, yeah, KV, I'm sorry. Uh, reveal your age really quick. I was 20. I was 20. I'm going to do the announcement correctly on, uh, I'm going to do a tweet on my end to announce the winners, but I was 20, uh, on the photo that you saw. So it was eight years ago. Uh... So some of you guessed right, I think, uh, and some of you were really far from the truth. I hope you you were able to end to hear the answer because it's the internet is really really bad. I'm dropping 37% of frames. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, Nat, if you want to go with Justin, I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, anytime I do something, the the internet drops even more. So I I, I prefer to not do anything before we raid, and uh, and yeah. I won. You won KV, you said 20. Let's go. Guys, uh, the raid is is, uh, is ready. Thank you so much for the stream. We had a very cool stream. Uh, I know that we've reached a lot of people at some point. We had lots of viewers. It was really cool. And I think we dropped. Bye.